Hello? Hello, Roger. Hello, hello. Let me uh, add. So I decided to add Dratnos. Let me know if you think it's a good idea. The thought is when we've done this before. Oh my God, yeah, dude. I can't get away from guy. this guy. Oh. <laughs> Bro, Dratnos is uh, always there somehow. He yeah, he is always there. <laughs> okay, well, okay. he did not sneak his way into this. I asked him because he was like, I feel like I would be extra, but I feel like he would have an interesting perspective, which is a lot of the times when we think about doing this, and we've done this before, we talk about all the things that are interesting to us, which are sometimes there are things that the viewer perspective wants to hear about and know about and that question isn't being asked or brought up and i think dratnos would be perfect for that so if we have like a graph at the end of this that shows how much each of us had talked during the time i imagine dratnos's part of the graph will be very very small but i think it will add a lot of value for the times he is speaking so i i think it'll be smart so i'm gonna add him yeah i'm done I Cool. Good, like said, he was in the venue the whole time. By the way, couldn't couldn't escape him. So, dude, one, a, one more day. <laughs> there's a super funny clip of your all's last race where. Yo. -ho. Hey man. Um. There's a super funny clip after Abris where he's the only person left wherever you guys were. <laughs> oh yeah, in the venue. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. oh my god. And there's like a shopping. <laughs> there's like a shopping cart of like energy drinks and shit. And then he has access to all the CCTV footage. <laughs> That has yeah, to... uh, it, it was to be clear, <laughs> we didn't <laughs> abandon him <laughs> like uh, on purpose. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, just uh, just the, the flights, like changing the flight to do one fl one day earlier would have been scuffed. And he said, yeah, he I think with his rating schedule, it fit anyways. So he's like, yeah, I don't mind. He, he's always down. I mean, or right, Ratnus? <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah, and then production came to me with the idea. They were like, yeah, we can we can set you up a little stream if you want while you're, uh, and we can give you the CCTV like footage or whatever. Yeah, it's good. All right. Um. So I don't know exactly how this is gonna. Just some quick uh, notes. We're probably going to slam this as like a two or three part podcast thing. Uh. But this isn't gonna be like uh the podcast. It's just we're just gonna put it up on that with without like video or anything. Uh. But yeah, I don't really know where to start. I didn't like over prepare for this because I've done that in the past. And then what ends up happening is like I'll start saying something or Roger will start saying something and then like six hours will go by and then it's over and everything gets everything gets gone through. So I don't have anything I specifically want to start with. Do you guys have something? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I agree. It's like one topic gets brought up and it's just talked about forever. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just chilling, bro. Okay, I have a great place to start. So, did you all see... So, there was a clip this race that I think was the best clip of any race to world first or any raid by far. And I'm, I'm just unsure if you guys... So, did you all see the 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 video of BD, that BDG guy killing Smolderon? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sadly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, what, what do you mean sadly, Scrap? That was one of the one of the prime moments. Or I, I, I fucking can't believe that happened. I like if, if my entire life I would have gone by and I would have never guessed that somebody killed a boss and they were just bricked up as hell and they just stood straight up. I can't believe it. I mean, I think the worst, but like he also ripped his shirt, right? It wasn't only just like it was the whole the whole thing it was. Some, yeah, I think that actually clip. got him banned. Yeah, I was. I felt. Oh kinda, really? Uh huh. Yeah, I actually it was oh. during a dinner break, and I ended up showing that on stream. That was probably a bad idea, but it was definitely worth it. <laughs> um. Oh, well, I don't. I, I think I also showed it on stream. It's fine. Yeah. We believe. All right. Cool. So. Oh my god. How do you all feel now? We're in the second tier of. Is it the second tier? Yeah, the second or I guess the third total tier of the no simultaneous mythic and heroic situation oh that's where we start let's talk about exploiting seeds actually i think that is an <laughs> excellent place to begin uh, okay okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, got, we gotta go back to blizzcon i think first max yeah mm -hmm. yeah one. Oh, so yeah. i don't remember i think it was at the marriott we were there and then we were talking about it and then you you, you told me yeah so 
did you like did you see like they they nerfed it um and i i tell you yeah they nerfed it because we reported it yeah so the way that worked was that we had calculated that it's gonna be pretty doable because of how you could use the dream surge thing to like the dream surge reputation buff worked on uh this new reputation so we had an internal discussion within the team and we're like yeah dude i don't know should we report this i mean we can do it uh, we don't know if the other guilds know about it but then in the end the team was like you know what just report it no one wants to do this shit just just report it and get it fixed and then we don't have to worry about it so we did and they didn't change it and we're like okay i guess we don't have to do anything about it however <laughs> This is the tricky part. When we reported it, we already had um, the Halloween. Planted. But yeah, you had you had already. The, the did, yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. You told yeah, me. Not, not, you told so, just so, to so give some context to chat. So yeah. he there was a yeah. few things you could do, but one of them was they were like going to report it, and then as soon as it got reported and before it got changed, you're like, well, we have to prepare to do it. So you guys all transferred like one character human, and you got the Halloween buff on both factions and logged out with the experience buff, right? That yeah. was the first thing you did. Yeah. And then All they right. nerfed they nerfed the thing like a day after you guys did that or something. But like obviously the Exactly. Yeah. So we reported it. When was it, Merez? Uh, no, no, we reported it. That... There's yeah. an important piece of information missing. The main reason is I reported it and then like six days went past or five days went past and Blizzard never answered or didn't do anything. So we're like, I guess they're not fixing it. And that's where we went the Alliance. And then like a the, a day later after the alliance thing was gone like over the halloween then they posted about it without even us telling like telling us or confirming so we're like i guess we prepared for it now so we need to check now if it's still doable even after the nerf right mm -hmm. yeah initially um, we were kind of pissed because we we're like yeah. okay we just spend a bunch of money to transfer over and uh, and change the, the the faction and stuff and now we're gonna just pointless yeah but uh yeah then uh yeah continue Maris, i guess yeah yeah, I mean, and then after that, we were like, okay, I mean, I guess we're committed. So let's see now if we can still do it, I guess. And then we did the, the whole calculations and we had Stint, the, our analyst, the, the chat, farm all the rep tokens and test everything out. And he was like, guys, it's all good. Yeah, we can still do it. We just need to like turn in the tokens and it will work out. And then we do some, some quests and everything will be good. I mean, it was but easily yeah. doable. It was it, like you yeah. could have not had the Halloween buffs if they just kept it live and it would have been done in like a day and a half instead of a day, right? Like, it, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. And then and then we're like, okay, th that's all good. So we do that. But then we're like, oh shit, they nerfed it again. Like, then they, they changed it uh, basically to not be that easy anymore, basically not doable. Um, but then. We found out about these seeds and we're like, holy moly, yeah. I guess yeah, we, we can do this. We didn't know about the seeds before, right? Like, we didn't yeah, know about exactly. the seeds yeah. thing until we it had went like, live, basically. You guys are yapping so much. I have no idea what this topic was. Uh, yeah, Skype was I in have... split rate prison. I yeah, pulled he's, out uh... from this topic completely. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I mean, because I. If they did anything bad, it has nothing to do with me. I do the, <laughs> I do the opposite of that because Bubba does all of our gearing stuff. So during splits, I just like am like locked in a closet. I because if it was up to me, we would just immediately stop doing. We would do way less splits, and we would just go raid because I fucking hate splits. They're just so not fun. Uh, hey, so, man. So so sure. I I just make Bubba. Bubba's really good at it, and he has it all figured out. And I don't want to know a single fucking thing about crests. I just tell him that <laughs> I don't care how long it takes, as long as we have every shred of eye level going into the raid. Then that is uh that is what I want. But the uh, that that's getting a little bit ahead of it. So you guys, the the thing comes out. You guys play all day. I think like it was like 14, 15 hours. I think of of grinding with the experience buff, and you guys got it, or was it a little less than that? Uh yeah, I think so. Because we also had to do the all prepare the level ten on the all, then do the quest on the main, and then farm the seeds. I think we were done. I think we we're done at midnight probably, and we woke up at five a.m. as a guild together um so it was basically the whole day yeah okay i do um, need to report my my guild mates though okay i okay. need to report oh. them because <laughs> I, I i knew i wasn't gonna play uh, but i was told yeah this is gonna take us like a couple of hours like four hours maybe so i'm like you know what <laughs> do it. let's just do it i mean why not let's get the rep it's gonna I, i'm gonna feel good about it later on so i joined them and i did not know what i joined for but <laughs> oh you did God. the whole day 
yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was the, it was the whole thing. Yeah, Roger did uh, with us. As Dude, well. that's funny. If you wouldn't have told me you were going outside the raid for BlizzCon, that would have been pretty reminiscent of me fully grinding artifact power in Nihilotha for the sole reason of you guys not knowing what I was that I was going to go out of the raid. That would be like kind of what you did. You did like a twenty hour seed rep farm to to like throw off the yeah. competition kind of if you but, hadn't but, already given it away. But also secretly, Roger, you must admit you were doing it because it was for the toys and stuff. And you're like, like I mean, shit. a, li I, a I little bit it. on that and a little <laughs> bit I, I must admit, I was in the back of my mind, I was like, man, you you never know, yeah. Like I'm on the outside, but well, wait, you did you never know. know because BM <laughs> If BM didn't get those nerves after they like random buffed it from the AUG log yeah. hooks thing, like you would have run more BM hunters, that's for sure. So uh, you would have probably played. Would you have played if they didn't nerf BM? You had to have, right? Uh, I mean, bro, it I was know, so actually. insane. It yeah. was like way better than the next thing. Like it was better than Rogue. Yeah, I need was. I was telling him, like, Roger, this is looking really bad right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really <laughs> want your type, but, bro, look at the DPS. Uh, yeah, dude, we, we thought... Something must be wrong. We thought yeah. all of our prep was bad because we were, like, preparing for the raid and we were looking at these heroic runs and we're like, guys, THD's, like, fucking rat hunter in these runs <laughs> is doing, like, 20% more boss damage than, like, James's main. Like, something is fucking wrong. And then it turned out, I, obviously, something was wrong. Yeah, I, I legit thought, like, I told Scribe, I was like, because he he showed me, literally, he we went on worker vlogs, and he was showing me the, the top DPSers for every boss, and it was literally a full screen of BM Hunters. And I'm like, wait, am I dumb? Like, I, I didn't really research Hunter that much going into the raid, because I'm like, I'm going to be on the outside. But I, you know, I, I watched the patch notes, right? Like, oh, they're buffing this, they're changing this, I checked the new talent like okay i'm like when like this makes no sense like th there was no change big enough to to justify the dps different so i told him like man the scarabies is something wrong yeah there's uh, there's some bug and i mean turns out that there was no bug it's just blizzard uh, messed up and <laughs> and they uh they tried to fix uh, the augmentation Dude. synergy but in the process, they just buff Hunter by like 20% or something, 15%. Yeah, the whole and, uh, aug augmentation log hook thing is still an absolute fucking disaster. You have no idea how to tell not only how good augmentation is, but you the yeah. classes that are frequently good aug targets also seem better than they are. So like, I, I can't remember a time where it's been so not obvious what is good and why. And like when you're making changes in progression... You don't even know how strong like let's say you wanted to look at root damage on tendril or something like you'd be choosing to sit or bring in classes based on those numbers but those numbers are inaccurate <laughs> like the the classes are doing more damage <laughs> than they're supposed to like the classes at least that are getting augs it was just like absolutely fucking insane yeah. i uh, think you share the hatred uh yeah. with scribe on this one yeah i scribe literally was like <laughs> I don't know what your feelings on augmentation scribe. <laughs> oh, we can. I mean, I I like the class, but uh, yeah, this was super scuffed. Yeah, oh, I, uh, I I think you still had a better grasp of it as liquid uh, than us because we. Were, I was like, bro, let's just bench this. Like, I don't know what's going on. They don't they don't seem that good, but you guys were running it all the time, and uh, we benched it uh, briefly for um, Smolderon because they also had to go farm trinket anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't I don't know. If, I still don't know how good they are. So I can well, I don't think anyone truly knows because you there's nothing in the game that tells you. you. We had to do like a well, we can get into this later, I think, because I think we need yeah. to get through the seed stuff. But yeah, I have a lot to say about oh, yeah. augmentation and the how many of them we were gonna run before the nerf, and then also what we did to kind of figure out how strong they were. But uh yeah, so you guys do this farm. Takes you from five AM to midnight, which is like like almost 20 hours i think something like that just an insane grind to get it done we yeah, i do want to say i, I want to say by the way on that I, after we figured out like it was so painful uh, <laughs> to at the beginning we all finished our quest we got our first character to 10 and they were like okay that was whatever right like it was uh, not too bad and then we start doing the 20 uh character and oh my god the 
uh like initially we were just in a group and we just scattered around the seeds yeah we were just going mayhem like all over I'm the wrong. place yeah that I, was, I, I, then, I can say we, no no we, wait, wait. We, wait 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 we calculated <laughs> how much we made reputation in an hour and it was like 300 or something <laughs> the full despair was across the whole team was spreading fast um but then we got all in one group and then I think we went to like a dead server as well. Um, and we yeah. kind of just flew all together in like a pattern. We figured out like all these, uh, like some seeds were super bugged. Like you couldn't loot them at all. It was kind of horrendous. So in the end, we figured out there was like, I don't know, 10 seeds that were good. And we just did the circle all the time. And we all flew in, in a group. And it kind of reminded me of the mod days, which a lot of people hated. And yes, it was boring. This as well was boring, but it kind of felt fun to go with the whole squad, you know, like uh, as a as a unit. Oh so, yeah. Um, yeah. Even in our case, you know, when people were running around going and doing seeds, there was everyone was just in one Discord channel, and you were having fun, right? So like, I mean, those are there's always this weird through artifact power farming and island spamming and all of those eras of like the grind before the race. There's always been a lot of camaraderie and like. It's like, it's not fun. Like these things are all pretty annoying to farm, but like you do find fun and all being in the channel at the same time and being excited for new content and stuff. Okay. And last thing I say, cause sorry, I need to mention this. I need to throw Jinji under the bus. He was a oh. betrayer. He, so what happened was some people were done earlier than others. Okay. And yeah, but, uh, then yeah. people started leaving the group, but then once you have less people, you can't even bloom the seeds, right? <laughs> Uh, so it was really struggle. We're like down to 10 people and then we're running out of the little whatever berries um, yeah, the, the, the dew drops I think they were called And, and, like, and, yeah. and then we, um, we We make a call of like yo guys everyone come back to the group to help the last remaining people because for example evokers couldn't go alliance so Frago, I think was a bit behind Oh human and they couldn't, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, sorry not alliance human um so he didn't have the 10% and a couple of people were still remaining. And then Jinji says the classic, yeah, guys, I'm coming in five minutes. <laughs> I, I think, I think it took him probably 45 minutes or how long was it to join us eventually? Bro, bro, I don't know. He didn't, no, no, he didn't join us. Yeah. He said, guys, he, I'm fin <laughs> I, I need to finish this. Give me, I will test something. Yeah? Then he finished it. We also he finished. Never he okay. never joined us. And then on the next day, we're like, yo, Mike, what did you find out? Nothing really. <laughs> and then other people found out about what he could have found out. Yeah? Like whether you need to relog after you redeem your tokens and stuff. And I don't know. It was crazy. But I, yeah. I think and one thing we, that I need... Uh, no? go ahead. Yeah. yeah, one thing I need to add to the seats was also that because it was so shambles, Stint made a Vigara and I was basically raid leading the seats where we're going. And I was clicking for like eight hours straight. I was clicking a waypoint Vigara per the next seed we're going to. So everyone had an arrow on their screen Cheers. what seed we're flying to next, yeah? And at one point I stopped using the Vigara and then Roger was like, hey Marius, why did you stop? I'm like, bro, it's too, too much, yeah? So I was clicking for eight hours uh, a, True, a yeah. Vigara to put an arrow on everyone's screen where we're flying next with the seed. It was, um, it was crazy. So the way that this information got, let me, let, me, uh, let me explain to you how the beginning of our patch went. So. Our realms came up at 8 p.m. after a full day of maintenance, and our bedtime to prepare for the race start is 11 p.m. So we're up for like three or four hours at the end of our day. We know about this infinite grind. We talked about all those things at BlizzCon. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this. That infinite seed grind was on literally public guides. Like public guides were telling people to do this seed farming thing. We were obviously aware of it. We go to bed, we wake up, we do about four, five, six hours, somewhere about seed farming. You guys are 20, and then it's nerfed. So if you can put this in your all's perspective, this is actually pretty close to how this would work time-wise if you can look by the fact that it would have been kind of insane for us to assume they were going to nerf it, in which if we knew they were going to nerf it when they did, we would have stayed up all night, I guess, but then like inting your sleep like that before a race is kind of bad. So... Imagine the seed farm is up for 20 hours on NA servers. We stay up and finish the seed farm in a 20-hour raid, just like you all do. And then EU comes out, 
and you guys have four or five hours to do it, and then they nerf it insane, and it is now a five-day grind, or in some of our players' cases, literally impossible to do in the amount of time leading up to the race. So you're either losing a ton of prep time, or it's not doable at all before the week goes around. This is this is the situation we were in, and we were unbelievably fucking mad at them. We were we were like, as you could probably imagine, like it. I, I've I've just transported myself to the alternate reality where this happens to you all, and I think you're gonna go fucking crazy at them for nerfing yeah. it after one guild is able to do it and another isn't. So we got real fucking yeah. mad. Go ahead. I, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was... I, I I don't know personally. First of all, why they nerfed it. initially even had this in? No, like, but why have this in at all? Like, infinite rep grinds is a thing of the past, kind of. Um, unless it's a rep that doesn't matter. I think, like, the four bulks thing they did on this expansion. Like, that doesn't matter. But I, I can't think of any reputation that you can just infinitely grind anymore. So I don't know what the logic was behind making the seeds just give you reputation forever. Um, I think what they should have done to begin with was just do what they have now without the five rep at the end. Like just have it like, I don't know, the first four or five seeds, whatever it is, gives you a good chunk of uh, rep and then it's it's over. Like, see you next week. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's like a design flaw. I do think I would be super tilted, like you said, if they changed it after. It makes, makes it super unfair. Um, at the same time, I will say that it is a bit of a sticky situation, I'm guessing, from their side, because essentially, if they do not nerf it, it makes this very bad for the general population, because I guess everyone then is going to just do it, uh, or a lot of people, and it kind of loses its value. So I think the the reason was for the general population. I don't know. It's uh, uh, I, I do kinda. think it's messed up. It's messed up that they did it. Maybe they should have given like an extra day or something, you know, for the other teams to do uh, it as well. Yeah. And then be like, uh, yeah. I think it was more of a <clears throat> yeah. I think it was more of a BlizzCon diff. Like if they didn't spend so much time preparing for BlizzCon with a patch right after, I would highly suspect that something like this would have been seen. Because it's not like it was some hidden weird thing. Like I said before. It was on public guides. So, like, this is not some very hard to understand thing from Blizzard's end. So, yeah, you leave it in there. The thing is, though, is they nerfed it, and then the infinite grind was still possible. So, a lot of people just ended up doing it. It just took infinitely longer. So, like, that was kind of a weird thing. Uh, but I guess a lot of people probably were detracted from doing the grind because of it. But I just want to get around to the seed thing. So, we started doing this, and we're like, all right. So, like, what is there possible to do? The way the thing that like our players got reverted for, I don't know if you guys are familiar with how it worked, but you weren't spawning experience out of nowhere. You had to still pay the dew drops or whatever for every shred of rep you got from those seeds every time you multi looted it or whatever. Uh, and we were just like, this is just the only thing that makes it even reasonable to do. We thought there would be no way that they would ban for something as insignificant as renown. Like you talked about, the community would feel like they needed to do it. Most of our raid did not have. Renowned 20 in this raid. We could not craft a second embellished piece on the second reset. Uh, we did not have a few extra crafted pieces to help with splits. That didn't matter at all. Our eye level was identical, I'm pretty sure, on uh, yeah. on the last boss, yeah, right? Was, yeah. So, like, so like this, this uh, you know, overall was not... And you could definitely say, like, was it a bad decision to do something that's even remotely possible to be banned, uh, like, for something so insignificant? The answer to that is definitely yes, but also we were, like astro tilted like i i mean like we didn't say anything publicly about this but we were absolutely letting them have it in that in that race to world first discord <laughs> because it was just like i we just felt so bad about it and you could tell that like they knew the effect that it had um because like we didn't want to do the method route right we're like i think method well also method had more time in their week at that point like we had half of our players that literally could not have gotten 20 if they played for 20 hours a day but I think Method looked at it and we're like, okay, we have like this extra day uh, in this reset, so like we can get this done. And in our scenario, we like why lose the days leading up to a race are insanely valuable to prepare, and you just lose all of that uh, or a lot of it by having to do this. And we just weren't willing to do that. So really upset with the way they did it. 
Um, obviously glad we didn't get banned. I think it would have been insane if they banned for something as insignificant as the seeds, but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was some of the most tilted I've ever been. I, I know we didn't say anything publicly, but on the inside, uh, we're fucking boiling for sure. Yeah, I can I mean, imagine. I, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I saw a logo tweet every day about him being tilted, yeah? It was, uh, I think it was shared with Method that you guys were tilted. <laughs> Oh yeah. It was uh it's one of those cases where you just feel the pain. I mean obviously we were glad that we were done. Um but uh yeah, it's I don't know. I don't I don't know why they decided to do it so quickly. I think leaving it for another day or two would have been completely fine. Like what's the what's the harm? And then it's uh it's over. Uh yeah. yeah. But it was for sure an oversight from Blizzard because I think before that there was like an unlimited rep grant on the Super Bloom that he could do every hour and you could have gotten Renown 20 as well. And they changed it and then the seats were left over and then they just didn't see it or didn't oh, know yeah, about super, it or whatever. The Super Bloom would have been the shit. That yeah. that was the, the insane value and yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to say for the record by the way because we had two of our players also reverted. I mean... Oh, I didn't day, know that. We... Yeah, we had Ken and Saltad, right? But we do not know why that happened because they were just like, like I said, right? Like we we're all flying in one pack doing the exact same thing. So I don't know. Like if the, if they did something that they don't want to say, but I doubt it because it makes no sense. They finished at the same time as the rest. You know, if they had done something different, they would have, uh, uh, been done faster so oh yeah that was another thing that made me upset is like we even doing the exploit it took us at least twice as long as you all doing it natty so like if you take a step back and look at it it's like you know we still had to spend more time doing something because of their mistake so it's like how the fuck are you gonna you know like i mean i understand it's like unintended revert it whatever the rever the reversions happened and they they it was punitive too like they, I think most of our players were 16 or 15 when they started doing it and they reverted them all the way back to eight, which made it literally impossible to get 20 by the second Ooh. reset. Uh, but I mean, we were fine with it, you know, it's like whatever. Uh, but yeah, that was, a. Uh, there was definitely a lot of tilt and then we turned it around and thought about it when they reverted us back to eight and we're like, okay, we're, uh, this actually just doesn't <laughs> matter. This is fine. Except they initially took away, there was a couple funny things that happened, um, so they took away our... What's the one under Worm's Crest? Is it Drake's? Something like that? Yeah, Dra Drake's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they removed... And you got more of them, right? Because you got reverted or something? No, we got less of them. So they oh, removed nice. everything you could have gotten from Seeds initially when they did the reversion. So you lost all of your Drake's Crest, but you still had counted for your weekly like thing for it. So you would have zero Drake's Crest, not having spent any, and it would say you have earned 90. So, like, they had to revert that back. And then the other thing they did was they removed the permanent augment runes that people bought. <laughs> and Driny, Driny bought 13 augment runes on his account. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, without, without refunding the gold. Dude. Yes, without refunding the gold. What? So, so he spent That's just that. he, Holy moly. He spent 1.3 mil on augment runes and it got reverted. And then they gave us our accounts back after they locked our characters. And... And Driny realized it and got super tilted. And he went and bought them again. No. <laughs> and then they did a second one where they reverted. No, they, they, no. did a, they, they, they did it. 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 He did. Oh, for sure. They, Blizzard, a Blizzard guy was waiting for them for him to buy a second pair for yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he bought 13 again. I think he bought a few. But, like, I think what they did, they forgot to remove a few things the first time, so they went back in, in, in their words, to make it more final or something like that. And I think they just ran the script again that removed all the things. So if you, in that two hours you had your account back, you went and bought the Augment Rune because it was still available even after the revert, You just they just took it away again. I've just, I've never, dude, Riney was absolutely losing his mind. Oh my god. I mean, that's a quick way to delete some gold for I mean, sure. I I mean, they should just give him back the gold at least, or? I don't think he cares. I mean, Driny, Driny, Shack, and Fired Up have like well over a hundred mil each. They they're all swimming in gold. I don't know why either. They just I think they just did like crazy. It's 
I'm sure your players do this too, but like the mythic plus boosts you can do most seasons right after the race ends are like absolutely insane. There's so much gold. It's actually, I spoke to, to Shakib about it and it is way different for EU than NA because apparently the NA market is almost no one boosting and he's like, ah, oh, we just get everything for insane prices. Oh, yeah. And in EU, everyone is boosting and the whole community, the prices every day is just going trend downwards more and more and you're just... Uh, at one point, it's just not worth it anymore. It's oh, no, they were making, crazy. I think they were making like a mil an hour or something. Like they were making an yeah. insane amount of, because yeah, you're right. There's way less boosters on NA. There's like the boosting communities in EU are so much bigger. And then on top yeah, of yeah. that, you can just say Liquid is doing the carry and just charge a lot more and just people will pay for it. And yeah, it's insane. Yeah, okay. actually key boosting on EU is crazy. Like it's way too many people play that it's a, uh... Oh, it's no. still a good market, I think, but uh, yeah. Oh no, Lorgak has a really good point. It's it's because the uh, there are countries literally making a living off of boosting, where like the 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 like average wage in the country is low enough in some European or Middle East countries where you actually make more money or reasonable money doing that than you would by doing something else. So they're way more likely to do that. I think that's true in yeah. uh, South America too for NA servers, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I think I hear I, I hear in the US <laughs> you guys are like yeah fifteen dollars an hour I'm like what the like that's some crazy salaries you got going over Bro, there. Bro, that's that's <laughs> at like McDonald's so too. To I'm Greece, pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, come to Greece and uh, <laughs> you'll see the prices. It's fine. Yeah. So yeah. so past the seed stuff. So the whole seed thing happened, and then we go straight into heroic and mythic. So I just want to ask you guys. It's now been an expansion. What uh, doing heroic and mythic at the same time? What is your opinion? What's your take? I mean, I, I personally don't mind it, but my energy is uh, omega depleted after 10 splits on one day. It's uh, crazy. Yeah, but like you would I still know. do it in the... Hero it would just be Heroic Week. I guess like what happened yes, in Heroic yeah. Week was you did the splits for like three or four days and then you do some Mythic Plus, but you get some time to recharge over the weekend before going into strategy stuff. And then once Mythic comes out, there's less things keeping you from Mythic. Will you still do some splits to top off your gear? Yes, but like it's way less, right? It's probably a day maybe instead of three if you had a heroic week, something like that. So I don't know. I think uh, I I personally, yeah, sure. my perfect world, I want to know what you guys think about this, is they go back to doing the heroic week before Mythic week, but do the thing they did with Mythic Plus this time, which is you could there's no reason to cap mythic plus at a certain gear level while having a heroic week that's just like a super ancient line of thinking that they had for a long time and i think a lot of people think oh well i i like the simultaneous release because you know mythic plus is just like unlocked from the very beginning but i don't i just don't see why that can't exist at the same time as a heroic release yeah i, I like that idea i think one thing now that you spoke about it that actually would be really nice to have a heroic week back is as, as weird as it sounds is, but everyone gets to see the raid before we do the splits again in Mythic Week. Because it was crazy to do the raids and uh, some of these bosses, like the, the raid leading required and like Vigoros we gave to help us and Rodron was making guide videos that the helpers were watching and stuff. It was some some crazy effort to kill heroic bosses with the heroic splits. It was, um, it was not the case in the past. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm... Can you guys hear me, by the way? Yeah, we can. What's up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Okay, okay. My internet is gone. Only Discord works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, on Heroic and Mythic, um, I think if that's the only thing we can change about the game, then yeah, I would prefer having the Heroic uh, week back. I mean, M Plus can be back as well, I guess. I, I don't really care too much about that part, because we would be spending most of that week in Heroic week anyways, and I don't really any control over M plus so people just do it but uh i would prefer a system where heroic like is basically irrelevant yeah for the race maybe you do one clear to unlock mythic or something mm -hmm. i don't know give uh, the casual players some fun but uh catch up gear I, I don't think heroic difficulty should be a thing uh but yeah if you couldn't change that then i would still prefer heroic Week being there because yeah it's very exhausting and if he's very bad uh, when mythic is available going into heroic like you said before max uh, i mean nobody wants to do heroic splits but we all have to i don't know that feels a bit weird yeah if you're the guild that does mythic 
even if you do half the amount of splits and then go into mythic, I mean, you just in immediately lose. You're it's instantly over. So like that, that yeah. kind of feels bad for sure. It all. Um, I mean, to me, I'm a, I'm a little bit more torn on this because I do think there's a little bit of like. We've kind of forgotten how boring heroic weeks are as well. Yeah. At this point, I remember, especially like some tiers where you had to do M plus on a bunch of characters because you didn't know maybe the vault could, or, or you would, it would be hard to choose your main character, let's say, right? Because you would have all the, the mirror uh, characters. And sometimes you people would uh, wait until the vault of the next week to decide, okay, this is my main after all, because I got this amazing uh, loot. So you would essentially have to do M plus on all of those characters during Heroic Week. And then there was PvP some seasons, so you had to essentially get boosted in PvP, or if you were really good at it, you could grind it out. But I mean, there were some... Some bad things, let's say, like Heroic Week kind of messed up with your brain as well. So I don't know if I want to definitely say, oh, bring it back, please. Um, however, yeah, if, if they don't change anything else to improve um, the experience of having both of the difficulties uh, released at the same time, I do agree I would take Heroic Week back, but I wouldn't be happy about it, if that makes sense. It's <laughs> like trading... Uh, uh, I don't know. Trading something well, bad for something slightly less bad. I don't know. I think yeah. I think that throughout this entire expansion, there's a lot of examples of not having a heroic week causing some casualties in Mythic. And the casualties usually are bosses. So everyone saw... I mean, so they, I think they said this in a public interview, but I think also they mentioned this when speaking to us, is in Vault, they... They said that Razageth, the reason Razageth was so poorly tuned is that they felt like it was properly tuned for Razageth's health for full single target talents. And then the first phase was properly tuned. First intermission was first was properly tuned for full AOE talents. This is also wrong uh, initially. I, it, it was yeah, still, oh, yeah. still well over tuned <laughs> for those numbers. But like, you know, they just like it was they were new to the talent systems and that hurt them tuning. But you know what have really helped a week of heroic week data. Abris, yeah, we, we got a brand new uh, upgrade system that was even more, well well more OP than the one we currently have, right? And then you go and do this upgrade system, and oh, they released the Mythic Raid, but they don't realize how strong this is, and we just have like infinite eye level. And like clearly this raid that we just did shows you that they're willing to tune bosses to exactly the gear we have, right? They literally buffed Firak on the reset when we got it, and Tindril was absolutely tuned for only us, right? <laughs> so like they're yeah. willing to do this, and if there was a heroic week and people saw the upgrade system, maybe they approach the tuning numbers on maybe like Skarn or Magmarax a little bit differently or, or Neltharian last phase if they have that heroic week info. This raid, right? Smolderon might be a direct casualty of not having a heroic week. Like Smolderon is not like Sludge Fist where it has really easy to understand damage timings for them to tune it. It has very awkward, like unless you're using Autumn or like Evoker Motes, or like very very unique class cooldown timings like it's not easy to tell how much damage someone is going to do to smolderon unless they're like a bm hunter so like how do you tune that boss well i don't know exactly how you all killed it but we had two people dead for our entire last burn and we still killed it like that's that's mm. that's just not good enough for for that kind yeah. of a fight so like i don't know i i i feel i still feel like there's been enough examples now where I think you can almost directly tie failure in a boss's design or tuning being very closely tied to the fact that they don't have that week of information, especially with something like Aug too. I don't know. I just, I, I wish, I, I wish it would just for the future health of rating. I just think the overall quality and integrity of mythic will go up if that week exists again. That's true. They've also made it yeah. so hard on themselves to tune properly. I feel like, like you said, with augmentation in the mix, like, and so so many changes every patch. <clears throat> how, how like they, they would need to be basically a top tier guild and like practice like tested outside, right? Like their QA team would have to be almost as dedicated as we are to min max DPS, and they have a lot of other stuff to test. So I don't know. Oh. Uh, I think they've made it too hard for themselves. Too many classes, specs, uh, DPS timings, and that meshing with 
boss um the bosses because uh, i always in my mind i'm i'm thinking okay how how does final fantasy do such a better job but there it's so much easier and they only oh, have single target basically uh, yeah they they and have removed the classes... an infinite amount of variables for exactly yeah yeah and so that's uh that's why i was very sad when i when i heard that they're putting augmentation I've 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 had the unpopular opinion that they should start removing specs from the game because it's just way too many and it's impossible to tune all of these properly. Like compare classic, for example, to what we have now. I, I, if how many more specs they have to do every patch? It's it's insane. I don't know. Well, actually, I think Dratnos has a good question for that coming up. I want to make sure Dratnos stays involved because uh, I he, it's easy for him to just sit back here, but I think he will have some really good questions to add. Uh, but you mentioned yeah. Tindril. You one okay. sec. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna sit, fucking sit down, buddy. I'll let you know when you're coming in. Uh, the <laughs> the uh, uh, tendril you mentioned, like oh, like they're QA testers or whatever. How a lot of viewers would probably ask the question: How long do you think Blizzard's QA team lasted on Mythic Tendril? And the answer is, they. I don't think they do that boss. Like, 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 I think some people's idea is, oh, like, Blizzard's testing team kills these, and then they release them. Like, no, they get a general idea of what is possible, and they test that, and they may mostly test for making thing sure things are working, and then they pick a couple bosses in the raid, as you can probably tell in this raid, uh, easily as Tendril and Fireac, and they do things that they don't know if it's possible, and then they just see if we can do it. That They have said this much, uh... Tendril is exactly that. Do you think Blizzard's QA teams are is just like acing three second seeds? Like, ain't no fucking in the last phase with the fire beams. Ain't no fucking way. Well, right? I, oh, <laughs> like, not true. But we have some good games. Yeah. Actually, yeah. oh my god, last phase three seconds. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, exactly. Kind of yeah, actually, Wait, uh, I, 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 I'm gonna throw one in. Maybe they also experienced the Volcross uh, soak that did two million damage, not spread on everyone. Yeah, they probably tested that one as well. Wait, what happened? And, well, and uh, on the Volcross where we had the one PTR test and the, the soak oh. just didn't work. And, and I yeah. guess no one ever looked at it from Blizzard. They just sent the test for two hours and we we're just sitting there with chain wiping to the first mechanic. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot yeah. the first test. Dude, speaking oh of God. Volcaros, dude, the second testing... Sorry, Drat, I was right after this. The second testing was actually really fun. The one right before Tendril. Like, the, the boss... Yeah, that one was good. Yeah, yeah, either the boss's health or our gear was at the point where you actually had to, like, optimize to kill it. And that was, like, super, super fun. So I was, like, really high on Volacross, and then it just ended up having just <laughs> literally... I'm pretty sure you would have killed that boss before the last circles without doing any splits. Just pulling it, it's like so insanely low. Uh, Dratnos, come in here, buddy. Yo. All, you. <laughs> All right, yeah, just, I think it's probably worth saying for anybody watching or listening as well, like, the point of me here is to pretty much sit on the sidelines and let you guys talk as much as possible. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's good, that's intended. Um, but speaking about augmentation, during the, like, lead up to this race, they landed, like, another nerf on it. I know some of you guys have talked about like talking with them at BlizzCon about augmentation. I just want to know like what the what the plan was going to be if this nerf didn't land. If you guys had any knowledge about how the nerf process happened on augmentation and uh, like how you land on still playing two of them after that nerf as well. Well, I think I have to go first here because I think you guys yeah. were not as high on augmentation as we were in general, right? I, I don't think so. I think you guys, like, we we knew about the fragmentation, but, like, only on paper. We never tried it. And you guys were trying. We're like, holy fuck. That's crazy. Armies, but, uh... Yeah, but after after they tried it, right? Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah. so there's, a, there's a couple things to this. So before they, so for AUG, there was maybe, there was a time when AUG was released where you would have run an infinite amount of these classes when you could infinitely stack Ebon Might. Uh, and then, like, it went down to four, and then they nerfed it to two. But, yeah, they, uh... So there's a couple things with this. They... We did testing, and doing testing, like, just as AUG hooks are broken now, ever since the 10.1.5, I think, PTR, AUG hooks have been... They were perfectly fine at some point. I don't know what the fuck happened, uh, but they stopped working entirely. So the only way to test this properly was to do, like, two exact raid comps against each other. 
So what you would do is you would do like, a, let's say whatever you think your best comp is with no augmentation of ogres, just pretty close to what it is now with just a few more of the good classes added in. And then you would play two aug perfectly optimizing it. And that would be, you know, every Ebon Might window. And we had someone our raid do this, this raid, we called him the Augficer, which was maybe and his entire job. The whole raid was just to make sure that aug was buffing the perfect target at any point in time based on what was happening. And doing that, I'll just give you some rough numbers. Um, I think the av the top DPS no AUG was right around 240k with Assassination Rogue and doing testing. Um, and then AUG's value, the average AUG value of two of them uh, buffing the best target every single time Ebon Might was applied was, I think, 290 or 300k. So they were like 60k DPS single target ahead of the literal top DPS by swapping their buffs around. So obviously that's insanely op um but then when you're talking about four you no longer swap around to people it there's two there's a lot of benefits from going to two to four one is the augmentation job is easier they're no longer following this intricate week or and buffing people based on timings they're actually now just buffing the top eight dps basically with the top two augs buffing the top two people or top four people and the bottom two augs buffing uh five through eight so their job becomes easier you're adding two classes in the raid that have cheat death and a shitload of utility. Zephyr is also unbelievably OP. Um, and then uh, we looked at the damage value for that. So the average, before they nerfed it, the average damage value for an AUG, again, top DPS without AUG at all is 240k-ish, and then it goes down from there, was around 250k, the average between all four augmentation evokers, when they are just buffing the top eight people. So no swapping, nothing like that. So you're talking either equal or slightly above the best DPS you could possibly bring. Um, except they also had a cheat death. We're very easy to play infinite movement and everything else that goes along with that, right? So that's what we were- Can I, can I, can yeah. I ask, like these, these numbers that you're saying, are these from dummies or is it, do you, do you test this on bosses? Uh, so you, we did a lot of four AUG testing for bosses and saw similar numbers, but we, treated most of our boss testing most of this was done on dummies with a lot of sample size and usually like what was the comp this raid right it was like double aug double rogue double dh double hunter and then we ran that with two aug and then we just sat whatever you would sit and brought in the four augs and you know had an optimal scenario for evan yeah. might and then we literally just tested the raid dps between the two things with a lot of sample size because log hooks were so broken uh yeah and it was always for before they nerfed it four aug just straight up beat two aug or it was very close and two aug was like monumentally better than than zero i mean it was they were like by far the most valuable things in the raid so four aug was like a minor optimization but like the classes were just so unkillable and great that it ended up being the case but then it ended up being a i think four aug is still good now it's kind of cringe but you know if you're running four augs the average aug is now lower than whatever the best class you could bring in. Like a rogue, if you were to bring in a rogue instead of a third aug, that rogue is going to do more damage than the aug. But, you know, the aug has cheat, maybe rogue's a bad example, but the aug has cheat death, the aug has other utility. If you wanted to be super, super safe, you could take, you could make an argument that a small damage loss for aug utility is worth it. So, yeah, I, th I yeah. think that was the big, th the big thing for me was, I mean, we, we had the mindset. Judging, like, I did not, I mean, I guess we'll get into this later, but we did not expect the tuning to be this tight. Um, so we were in the mindset that, okay, DPS, that's one thing. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not after the nerf. Um, the biggest thing, though, for me at least personally, was the defensive part of uh, the evokers. Like, being able to just make your whole raid uh, more durable and then they are also unkillable. That's just so, let's say, overpowered. So I, I was expecting that they were actually going to nerf also the defensive parts, let's say, like the utility defensives of uh, of augmentation, but they only touched the damage. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit still worried that uh, we're going to still have to play four. Um, and yeah, what you said is true. <laughs> I remember our augmentations were like, oh, Oh my god, let's just play four. It's so much easier. <laughs> like they really wanted to go four because yeah, it's two uh, two is yeah. like the brain capacity to do two is like very yeah. involved, but as soon as you play four, they're doing something very easy. So that that has a lot of value too. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, on the nerf. So you, were you guys? So after the nerf, were you guys planning on running? Were you guys considering sitting them? Well, all of them or the four? Um, uh, no, all of them. Like, what was your like? Okay, so like, I can tell you what our comp was before that nerf. It was like. I think it was we were still gonna run two demon hunters, but you sat the BM hunter, uh, and then you sat second enhance on most fights, and you still ran two DHs and two rogues. Um, and then you, the enhance was like we only ever ran enhance really for like P2 of Firak, obviously. Um, and then that is what you would sit for the two augs. But that was immediately like not a thought. Like when they made that nerf, it was like you would never play four, in my opinion. Uh, unless like the raid was super easy, obviously it was not. So, uh, I don't know. Like, what was your all's thought when you guys saw that nerf, or did that not change that for you? Uh, I mean, I I can say that we saw the nerf and we're like, hmm, it is it, still fine or not? I guess. And then our augmentations of the calculations, and they were like, I mean, technically it's not looking too bad. That was like what we got. We're like. It's not the best anymore, but it's still like middle of the pack and we got all the utility and we're like, I mean, considering we get full raid wide like Rally and Seth here and all these great things, we might want to play them. And then I, we ended up uh, like playing the raid and then the augmentation was also like, mm, maybe these bosses are not too hot for uh, augmentation in general as well. So uh, the four dream kind of died there, I think. Um, but the calculations were like that it's they're still okay, like you said right there, like... Not the best, but not the worst, and so we consider them for um, utility. I think. Who did you? Who were yeah, your all's that... AUG players? Who Who were three and four? It was uh, Saltat, Maestin, Pobo, and Frago. Okay. Were the AUGs, yeah. So and then you... Saltat ended up playing DH, and Maestin didn't play at all. Yeah. Sadly. Okay. Yeah, we so we recruited when we knew four AUG was going to be a thing. We tried to have a bunch of people play AUG because like Dranaco played it in the MDI. Uh, Splat, I think, played it in the MDI. We had, like, Exile. We weren't sure if, like, we had someone else who could play Rogue. And, like, we tried to get so many people in our guild to play AUG, and they were all like, I'm going to quit the game if I play AUG. <laughs> like, they were, they were, like, we could not convince someone in our guild to play AUG. Like, they were, they would do it, but they were like, I'm going to quit after this tier because I'm just not doing this. So we had to recruit one. So we recruited hardy from instant dollars who has been great and just in general he plays a lot of different things but he was playing aug at the time and then they fucking nerfed aug in our face and we were we were at blizzcon with them and we were like yo can we like send him back like do you guys want him back <laughs> after they nerfed aug like we're not like we're not gonna play four of these things man yeah, i don't know i think we were also a little bit self-inflicted uh, on the nerf we were all standing around the blizzard people and like guys this is real bad playing four orcs and they're like, yeah, can you give us feedback? Can Is it really bad? And Ian was like, I mean, guys, the, the alarm has already gone off for the four orcs. And somehow we kind of nerfed them ourselves, I think, at BlizzCon as well. Or maybe it was uh... already pre planned, but uh, at, at least uh, they got like the reinsurance that it's going to be four orcs if maybe. they don't nerf it, right? Well, I don't know if I ever talked to him directly. The, the only conversation I remember is all everyone here in this call, except for Dratnos, was standing in a circle around Ian. And, well, not like around him. That would be insane. He was in the circle. We were <laughs> not. We were not surrounding him. That would be fucking crazy. Uh, he was in the circle, and we were like, "Okay, so, uh, how many augs need to be on our raid comp for the alarms to go off?" Was the question, and then he responded with, "The alarms are already off." So like, so like, he, or the alarms have gone off. Like they they were aware that augmentation's power would still be insane. I mean, I think they handled it well because like. If your opinion of handling it well is augmentation isn't required, I don't think you understand, like I like the rhetorical obviously. Like I don't think you understand how aug works because in a scenario where augmentation, the support spec, is designed for the person in every guild, which I guarantee you, in almost every guild, all they're doing is buffing their like four best DPS almost all the time. That is what they're doing. Maybe they track some cooldowns and throw it around every now and then, but it is nowhere close to the crazy level of optimization you can do with that class. So because of that, that class has to be good for who it is designed for. And if that is the case, it will always be extremely powerful if we are making sure that exactly the best four people every 30 seconds have this buff. I mean, it'll it'll be BIS for the rest of time. There's never a world where 2AUG will not be BIS, right? 
That's that's what I told him as well, dude. I told him it's either going to be really OP for us and average for the normal player or really shit for the normal player and average for us. Like, the class design is just flawed. Uh, they have to, I think, the only upplay to that is you have to cap how much damage you can contribute. Uh, like, I set a hard cap or maybe um, a soft cap where after a certain point you get very low benefit from even might like the stat falls off or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they did not seem to agree with that when I told that to a class designer at Piscon. They were just like, no. <laughs> 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 like, no, no. <laughs> Well, I think I, I, I think I think they should uh, like I, I said this as well. I think that, that the balance between how much damage the org does himself and how much they give to others, I think, is way off. Um, and to have any reasonable balance um, tuning of the, the spec, they should just flip that on its head, kind of. Uh, so org does I don't know sixty percent, maybe even seventy of the damage, and then they buff only thirty percent. So it's a way smaller thing. And then maybe they can do also a thing that you can't just... Because I don't know. I mean, yes, for us, it's a little bit interesting that you can change who you're buffing all the time. But I don't think the general population that plays augmentation are going through all of the hoops of figuring out exactly who to buff. So it's, it's a thing only for the top... Uh, uh players and it causes also i guess a lot of uh, stress so i don't know maybe maybe just doing something similar to how dan's partner is with um in um, in final fantasy where you basically just lock yourself with a person so they can just attack like they just put a buff on four people and then it's kind of like beacon let's say right but you can't just uh, you don't have to refresh it all the time i don't know like, i think that spec just needs a rework uh just to maybe simplify it a little bit uh, well, because when 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 it is so skewed of how like i understand the whole aspect of oh easy to get into hard to master but when it's so big of a difference it means that like uh, scribe and you said earlier that uh, uh it will be impossible to tune this that it's not op for us and still good for the average player so i think they need to dumb it down a bit i don't know so yeah. as far as I can tell, the one last thing about augmentation is, so I think Blizzard got a little unlucky. So they had one guy who was kind of masterminding Evoker, like this guy was the person behind it. You guys probably saw him in a few interviews. His name was Graham Berger. Um, he, from what I can tell from people who worked with him, is the absolute shit. Was really, really good at his job and was like majorly handling a lot of this stuff. And then I think he stopped working there. Uh, and I think he works... It's either in Ghostcrawler's company or Riot, one of those two places. Yeah, I, got, I think Ghostcrawler, I, I've been told that yeah. he went to that company. Yeah, so I think they were kind of left picking up the pieces of that yeah. with him leaving. <laughs> so I think Aug would have been like a bit better had he stayed. I know like the log hooks were almost directly attributed to that. It, it, that happens a lot of times in WoW where like... You don't really realize it from the player's perspective, but like there are people with jobs and sometimes they leave. Like I think it's like priests have kind of felt out of place this whole expansion, but I think like priest talent trees got released and then the priest developer, the person who like mainly did the priest thing, left like immediately after posting those. And then like the rest of the class design team has been picking up the pieces of Shadow Priest for the rest of the expansion. So like, I don't know, sometimes stuff like that is the reason behind those things. But yeah, I definitely agree with you that augmentation kind of seems like this unsolvable problem because of its design and it'll be interesting to see how they kind of tackle that in the expansion but let's uh i think i kind of want to get into the raid so uh do you, do you, want you want to start with splits <laughs> oh no <laughs> we can start with splits but before actually yeah let's start with splits uh is smolderon 1515 with helpers the hardest heroic boss you've ever done Oh, guys. So your boss, yeah. Oh, my God. I think the amount of times uh, I said the word balls was uh, unhealthy. Um, but I will say that Tindral also was a big eye-opener for me. Um, generally, it was... I would say Smolderon was a bit harder than Tindral. But the despair I had 
from <laughs> sync that people could not fly from platform A to platform B. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it, oh my it made god. Me lose faith in humanity overall. Uh, uh, I, I we, must did, say... we, did, we tried everything, yeah. Listen, we tried everything. <laughs> we tried marking a person and I was like, yeah, follow this guy, you know, easy, smooth sailing. I tried saying just ignore all the balls, just go like you're flying to the next world quest, just avoid the balls on the sky. Ah, uh, yeah, we, we even tried telling, okay, who is not comfortable of uh, of doing it? And we had a Uber service, basically, like people picking up the players and driving them there. We tried it everything. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know how people can do the other mechanics and not fly when the expansion has been out for like a, a year plus at this point. I don't know. I was, uh, I was in shock actually. Uh, but yeah, small drone, definitely very spicy on heroic, and I think that's where, um, that's where you guys also, uh, like we realized when heroics are so hard, the fact that you guys have uh, like five or so extra players than us yeah. in your roster played a big role because any, uh, like we had a lot of wipes on small drone that were let's say five percent or less. Mm -hmm. That's the difference of two or three players from your team versus uh, helpers, right? So um, that really, like, we were struggling hard, especially at the start uh, on well, those two bosses. So how many, so this is probably a Skype question. How many people down your roster this raid did you actually make sure had, like, bis as fuck gear? Like, usually in a raid for us, I feel like it's close to 25-ish people. There's always, like, a second or third lock. There's a second mage. There's, like, all these classes. In this raid, I feel like the comp was so Omega locked in, and you had really no way of playing other things. And we geared just less people in total, so we didn't do mm. as many. Like, how did you guys handle that? Or did you guys still, like, spend time gearing options? We, we gear in general the options as well. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It was probably bad in this raid. Uh, I was also like a bit sad that uh, we maybe wasted a bit of time in heroic. But at the same time, I mean, you never know during progress. And, uh, you know, there's a random boss like Lords of Dread, and then suddenly you want to stack these crazy classes, even get mm -hmm. the mage out, you know. Uh, there was times where this proved to be the right strategy. But uh, yeah, the this tier. Yeah, I guess we could have gone with a lot less, yeah. But although in the end I did I was a bit sad that we didn't have a third rogue and a third hunter. Um I don't think it was super needed. I think the third rogue was we we, we could have used if that guy was like a full on rogue, you know, like guaranteed yeah. full rogue brain. But it was a narcos rogue who didn't play rogue since years and it wasn't he had never played sub. Or uh, didn't play Asa for a long time. Could only play Outlaw, so uh, didn't end up using him. But we did gear him. But yeah, and I also feel really sad about it. Like you have these people that are sitting on the bench. Oh my god! Yeah, they've been waiting for six months. They have twelve characters each, mirrors and everything, and they don't get geared. Like I don't know, bro. What is this game? Yeah, I mean, we we geared all like all of them got runs. It's just like. I think the amount of fire axe we did was the exact amount to make sure that we had full heroic tier on the top like 23 people and those were the only people that ever killed a mythic boss. Like we didn't we mm. didn't we would have I think we would have had to do like 22 fire axe or something to get full heroic tier on like everyone and that would have been like I mean that's just like insane and like kind of unnecessary. And that happened yeah, this raid more than any like we have a few more raiders than you guys and I can bring it back to like the smolder on thing but I noticed that this raid so many less people got to play like outside of the comp that both of us ran the only potential options you could have ran were a third bm hunter a third rogue maybe a second mage fight dependent they would have been really really good for seeds in the last phase of fire act for example but their damage kind of sucks uh maybe a shadow priest if like the if you needed mass dispels in p1 but they made the dispels really easy and maybe arms warrior for two target cleave in uh p2 of fire rack and then like execute at the end if that ended up being great but like that's there was maybe no chance maybe maybe second warlock for tindral although i think we tried it and it wasn't that good but uh yeah we yeah. thought about that yeah because it's obviously they're the best root damage but they they uh 
I don't know. We were really down on Warlock this tier. We we thought if you didn't need Gate, you could like easily sit Warlock. Like that class was just fucking trash. But it it ended up being pretty good for P2 Firak and really really good for Seeds. Actually, we can. So you guys ran sub on uh on Tendril. I think we ran Assassination, and that is how we like solved the the like root problem because like Spatter just absolutely soloed all of the hard sets. But then we on our kill we ended up even taking off Spatter. But I know, did you guys end up killing with two locks or did you just try it for a bit? No, we, we tried it for a bit and then we had the issue that we got a melee out uh, for the Warlock and then we had not full melee squad to the, like the, the go up was a little bit scuffed and Andy went up as a tank and we had like, it was a little bit uh, sc scuffed angle and people were signing a, like swapping position on where to go up and with what feather. And that's what we had when we had the second warlock in, and then we changed it to a second warrior afterwards. You, you guys had augmentation going up. We had what? only melee yeah. squad. So that exactly. was the yeah. difference. Yeah. Our augmentation people just didn't want to go up, and uh, they said it's really bad. And also, when you get the dispel, it was bad. I don't know if you had some secret tech there to bait the dispel on the augmentation or something. Mm. No, uh, I don't know. it's a good question. Actually, we we so we had a priority system for the dispels, and the evokers would always be like either two i think they had to be two or three if they both got picked but basically uh sang our first evoker was assigned to go up and if he got the dispel goop would go up and if if goop got it mark would go up one of our hunters so it was a three-way rotation they always got the same feather and they were always pre-positioned there and they got something that told them whether they were going up or not and which one to take and it was just like a rotation thing and it ended up working out also all going up randomly it sounds really bad because, like, AUG is technically your best for, like, root damage, right? So then being in the air is bad. But that specific timing was insane. So they got all of their oppressions out, and they had all of their damage rolling, and they lost almost nothing by going up. It was, like, one of those few scenarios where you're, like, losing the least possible raid damage of sending anyone in the raid up by sending up an AUG exactly when we had them go up. Interesting. We flame our augmentations after, I guess. Sounds good. Only I like I'm typing, <laughs> typing already. Huh? <laughs> Did you guys have an augfacer? Uh, we have one. That was our that guy ended up being our DH. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. So that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It was Salta who. I mean, they were like he was part of the four orc team. And uh, he also wrote the feedback post to Blizzard and kind of benched himself initially. Um, then uh, we were planning on having him just be augmentation in case we run four or three or some weird shit. But uh, otherwise, he would just, uh, you know, be the officer, like you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, then we want to play double Boomkin or a double like Druid option, like Feral slash. Oh, Boomkin. interesting. Uh, and uh, that's why we put stove on uh, Druid as well, who had a gear DH to but um, to keep our options open, because augmentation seemed completely dead, we said, okay, Salta goes DH and Stove goes Druid. And we did actually use two Druids, by the way, on Tindral. Um, I don't think... I, I think I would have rather had uh, Rogue Yeah, in. third Rogue. I don't know, sure. what, what, was our, what was our difference? You guys had a, another Hunter in, or what was it? Um, We ran... No, we had two Hunters. I don't know exactly what our comp difference was, but I can tell you that... If our third rogue had the same gear that our first two rogues had, we would have absolutely ran three rogues in that fight. Rogue, rogue is so fucking good on tendril. Did yeah. you have a third rogue main? Oh no, we had we had a third we had a third hunter instead of your druid. Yeah, we had three three hunters instead. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we would have benched our druid for a rogue in the end, but he had so much practice in that pull uh, in, in that boss. I said, I think this is like maybe 15, 20k extra DPS, and we were very close to a kill. I said, fuck it, we just go continue with the druid. Oh yeah, also that I think, and we can talk about this more when we really get into Tendril, but I think, and this probably really hurt you guys, I think, when Zalia had to take a day off, but I think, <laughs> I think that Tendril is one of the hardest bosses to make mid-progression swaps on in the history of WoW with three-second seeds. Like, it's just, people do so many small things to be consistent with that, and like, you can swap someone and assign them to their spot, but you're still just going to have wipes to that. Yeah, so yeah. playing healer is even worse, uh, and the oh, yeah. priest even worse. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the that's the extra thing. Like, um, we had Sol, and you know, big thanks to him for stepping up and uh, jumping into Tindril Prog as a healer. 
Um, but the, we, uh, he, the plan was that he would generally only play holy because the idea was okay if we, uh, like we didn't plan that Ken would get sick, obviously, right? Yeah. Like that's you, ca you can't plan about everyone getting sick and replacing them. Um, so the the thought process, I think, I mean, Ryzen can probably say more on this, but uh, was uh, if we need an extra priest. It's not going to be a third disc. Like, there's no way. So yeah. he just focused on just uh, playing good holy, and he did a good job. But uh, yeah, that that boss disc is definitely better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we had to shift actually during that day. We shifted the augmentations, buffing the healers, just to get by. You oh, know? interesting. Just to make sure the healing. Yeah, just to make sure that the healing is okay. Did you guys um, not have root damage problems? I feel like roots would have been like really difficult if you moved the augs off of it. I mean, um, we, we had a lot of problems, I think, overall that yeah. day, but we managed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of problems, but the roots were fine. I think the rogues were just sending the, the AOE at that uh, time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah we just yeah. took single target damage away. It was just a full scuff day. And I remember people, I think we were, some people were still comparing our DPS to yours. I think we had like, common, like oh, that's got to be so tilting. Out. We have we, we were like, guys, we're still buffing the healers. Like, it's <laughs> ignore the DPS right now. Yeah, it's fully scuffed. Uh, same uh, with the eye level comparison. <laughs> no, don't say it. Oh, don't that, say was it. Roger, that was Roger. Oh no, <laughs> Roger oh, was God, blaming dude. us. We did this many splits, and our eye level is so low. And I was looking at this. You know, I was also a bit confused when he pointed it out. And uh, then I was like, hold up, guys. We're all playing cheat death trinkets to progress further. That was and, smart. Uh, I wish we would have done that. I I, I uh, saw you guys do that, and I'm like, especially when we had to, like, problem solve, like, Tendril P1. Like, a cheat death trinket would have been... Because I think we had to spend, obviously, mm. a lot more pulls on P1 Tendril than you guys did. So, like, yeah. that would have been so yeah. fucking smart. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, we had them that get those trinkets, but we just didn't do that. Yeah, that, that was, like, a... a how, when did we decide to farm that trinket? I, was it like two, two, no, two and a half months ago? We started, uh, yeah, getting on another we, character. We, we were like, okay, it's time to farm the trinkets, but we didn't want to make it super public. So I think we were just um, organizing yeah, I... hours where people were off stream and just making inside the the team groups, um, and just uh, farming the shit out of it. We actually even thought like, yeah, maybe should we farm it for our casters even. Uh, yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you would. I mean, anymore. like the amount, the amount of deaths in P1 tendril learning where you could have just got early P2, like information, that were just due to one shots of some kind, right? Uh, like cheat death trinkets would have been insanely OP for that. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that was, uh, that was really smart. Um, we were talking about splits before we got into tendril. I think Dratnos, you had an extra question there, right? Yeah. So okay, like. Every tier we get to the race, right? And kind of nobody knows what splits are going to look like each time except for you guys. And then you guys always end up doing something different from last tier or like, not always, but often different from last tier, but like the same as each other. So I guess I want to know like, what was the process like? And I know Max, you're less involved in the splits, but like Scribe maybe, of deciding how many splits you were going to run this tier and how much did the 13 eye level difference that they added this time like change what the plan would have been i want to say initially that i hate to be like the the person that, that's responsible yeah. for i i hate these uh, things i hope uh, in the future that i will be just like max standing here and having no idea what we're doing just get just get us geared guys and that's it um but uh the change was mainly um in the difficulty of the raid like, we didn't know if the raid will be more difficult than last time. We were suspecting it will be, because otherwise it will be very easy with later on with gear. Um, since you get so much gear. And uh, we were thinking of increasing our normal raids. And I think we did a bit um, compared to last time, but not that much. Just to get gear from normal so that we can have an easier time in heroic. Uh, that was the idea. Um, aside from that, from heroic, the way we um like i guess calculated it or like guessed how much we need was basically looking at the past um uh, we had uh, 21 runs on uh, the previous year and we knew that was like just the right amount to get as much as many people gear as we wanted to and uh 
we wanted even less people geared this time because of augmentation and you know so many slots being locked in so um we just went uh, uh you know we, you know it was a bit of a feely craft let's say uh we just went with 22 runs uh it was also the amount of characters we kind of could do and uh, with the increased eye level giving some more options for some rng reroll gaming um we thought 22 would be nice so one more than last time but a bit less characters to gear as well yeah does it as far as i know how about the go ahead okay. us. no you're good oh i just so okay how about the um you remember when they changed in vault how the eye level or how item distribution changes and you mm -hmm. can't uh you can't like log off characters anymore obviously that can't change came in with avarice mm -hmm. as well but how many more splits do you think that led to you guys doing than if you could still like bank on an offline character that's a good question holy shit I don't, I don't know the difference <laughs> between I don't... Uh, vault uh, splits and this, how much we would have done. I think we would have done probably the same amount on... Um... It would have just been more optimal. Y yeah. We would have just not wasted as much loot, I guess. But the idea was to... Uh, it wasn't that we distributed that, that wrongly. I, I guess I guess technically we could have done less with that. Yeah, you're right. But I, I don't think... Because it was so easy on a burst with the, the bosses being so easy and you could triple core and stuff it felt really efficient to just bang uh, bang out the runs i don't think it would have changed much it would have changed more maybe in this tier uh because we would be like more ready for it and but but also having done more runs allowed for easier firak splits as well because we had so more uh, so many mm -hmm. more characters and firak was like super worth right splitting as much as you can kind of uh, so I, I don't know if we would have changed much. We could have geared more like random characters, I think, but we would have still wanted to re-roll our chances a few times to get a more optimal splits. Because I remember even on uh, Barrows, we had, for example, Revis, who didn't have a trinket, even though he had so many runs. I mean, he, he had a run with a trinket, but then he didn't have a weapon there, and he just chose the weapon over trinket. But like these re-roll chances, you still want to have, you just wouldn't waste the gear on the other characters you would just gear some more uh like maybe another warrior or another something else whatever you know i i think the main difference between what it was in vault versus now so in vault you basically do all these split runs right and then you have information on what dropped in every run and you have tech and spreadsheets that can assign all the loot to the best people and then it's like handled right the difference now is instead of waiting with all the runs being over and then putting, making sure that maybe your mage who's going to be in on every boss gets the exact best run that he gets, you now have to like prioritize certain people as you go on. So if you think Fired Up or Teach D is going to be in on every boss, you would make sure that like the first really good cloth run, their character is set and then you move on. Maybe 10 runs later, they get an even better run, but you can't take that chance, you yeah. know? Like you have to like, prioritize down the line and gear people in order rather than like looking at all of them at once and then just making it perfect so i i think we would do the same amount of runs we would just be more geared if the four hour thing didn't exist because you wouldn't yeah. have that limitation i hate cool. these all of these things i just want to say <laughs> yeah, it again. it's so bad <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad and and also it takes all the fun away from getting geared like when you log on your character and you go through a heroic raid, you see things drop and you're like, oh, I just got this cool trinket. And then you're getting things traded to you one by one and you can feel your character being stronger. None of our players actually experience that anymore. What happens is they do a run. They have no idea if that loot is going to them. They And then, <laughs> and then two hours later, they log on in an instance and they open up a trade window and some add-on just puts fucking 15 items in their bag and they're like, okay, well, I guess this is my main. And then you, and then you just keep going and doing raids on shittier versions of your main character. And then, I don't know, it's, it's fucking strange. I, I need to add here, I was losing my mind. I think Scrab as well, when we were giving out the mythic loot and the rings oh. dropped. I, I must say, it's nice that Mythic Loot is in the game and whatnot, but rings and this upgrade system together, I actually wanted to just delete the ring and not deal with it instead of giving it to someone, yeah? I think we spent 20 minutes on one ring trying to find out who to give it to. Ah, it's a horrible experience. I don't want to do it again. 
Oh my it's God. so hard to tell as well what the yeah. because you don't even know what they have. I mean, maybe you guys have add-ons and like yeah, some external software for this. We should have gotten one uh, in hindsight. Well, we kind of knew we had we should have gotten one before, but it was just didn't happen. Um, to like track how much like what the max eye level is that you can upgrade to on every piece, but also even if you know that. You gotta check with the stats that people have. You gotta know how many crests do they have still, and of what type. Also, like it's like you have to be playing a completely different game to maximize this perfectly. I I don't know if if you do that that much because I noticed also it, every tier is the same thing. You guys send your stuff so much earlier than us. Like mm -hmm. we're trying to look at every single drop of 0.1 percent DPS gain. And then I look at you guys, or some some of you guys even had crafted already with the steed thing. I was like, holy fuck, they crafted like some of them crafted weapons. It was crazy to me. Oh, I well, first of all, I don't know too much about that. All I know is that we didn't send. I don't know if we sent any of our upgrades for Smolderon. Well, I don't know about crafts, but I know for upgrades, the only time in both weeks that any of our players crafted with aspects or worms crests was when. There was no possible other drop, so I so we we didn't even send our crafts until the last day of tendril in the first reset. I think it was like Monday or something. Like most of our aspects had not been spent, so we we were really really like Bubba had full control. You could not fucking spend a crust unless Bubba told you you could, and that was if uh and he was tracking all the potential upgrades you could get. So we were very 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 safe with that. But I I I don't know what you're referring to as far as crafting weapons really. Maybe maybe someone did that. I'm I'm unsure of that. Uh, it was when the whole seed thing happened, and then uh, it got. Uh, oh, that was. Like, uh, reverted. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think James so, crafted daggers, and Drani crafted the sword so or something, and we're like, I think what it was. So it was not people's mains. Yeah. So so this is all pre seeds. That kind of makes sense. I think what we were doing is, once like, it was possible that people were going to get reverted. You sent the crafts in case you were able to keep them. Got a little sneak. You would have, ah, you, 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 oh, you, you would have, you would have otherwise, that, you would, yeah, you would have otherwise lost them entirely, right? So that's why yeah. I did. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Yeah. We were very confused about that. That, that <laughs> was good, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but as far as in progression, we like, like, could you have killed Smolderon a little faster had you sent upgrades? Like, yeah, but like, you just didn't need to, right? It wasn't hard enough. So yeah, we were. Uh, very very stingy with that um is that is that all the split stuff you wanted to know dratnos i, I do want to oh dratnos sorry well no, you, ahead, if you have a question too what's up yeah um i wanted to ask in terms of um raid leading your heroic splits hmm. um who was doing it for you guys because I, I guess you were you were doing two at the same time right yes well, like we, we did. did yeah. So we did two versions of splits. I'll, I'll kind of explain how we did that. So for one, I, re I raid led one group. Uh, and then the other group was done by Lummel, I think. Uh, Peace's old raid leader. Um, mm -hmm. And then what I do a, f a few runs into Heroic is I'll start taking the runs off uh, to go look at like Heroic Firak and, uh, you know, some early Mythic bosses, which actually got done this tier. ID went into the raid like super early. So I'm able to like prepare for that then because the early Heroic stuff doesn't need me. But I always did Smolderon and Tendril for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. that, that's how we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we did something kind of natural. It happened, right? Um, where we had two runs and we had our two tanks, Merz and Andy. They were raid leading the first bosses up until like Nimue, uh, or maybe sometimes also Nimue. Um, and then me and Scribe would jump in for the last two bosses. And I think that kind of saved that's our pretty sanity. Much, cause, yeah, that's exactly what we did. Yeah. Because I cannot imagine someone having to raid lead 11 <laughs> raids back to back. <laughs> All the time, non-stop talking to the helpers. That is some cooked things, yeah? Like, um, so I thought that was uh, uh, nice to also give a bit of a break to the people raid leading. Well, I was just wondering if you did the same. Yeah, yeah we do the same. And then also, so I, and this has actually hurt us in the past, but we also like create a little competition in guild, like for the two teams against each other. So whenever I'm taking the early bosses off, Atlas or... 
Shakib or someone will be in my group. We have efficiency officers. We have trash officers. We have people who are assigned to like check all the like helpers and lockouts and all that stuff. Some of it's handled by weak orders, but a lot of it is like double checked by people. And then we have people who are like raid leading bosses, raid leading trash, and they like get really into it. Like, cause they want to go faster than the other group. And we've noticed that this has increased efficiency. They have a lot of fun with it. Um, but also in one raid, it went really bad. So we were doing like three runs and cause like this raid we did two for everyone who's listening. We do, we usually do like triple splits at the same time. And like most of the previous raids and like one of the groups got really unlucky and like had their run held up for reasons that they weren't supposed to have happen. And one of the other groups was supposed to pick up one of their runs to make up for it because they like didn't wipe or anything. And that group like flamed the other group about it, who was already really down for like having this stuff happen against their will. And then like th you could tell that people took it too far and like absolutely tilted the fuck out of some people. But so I think you have to be careful with it. But I think the friendly competition yeah uh like definitely adds a little bit of like spice to those otherwise really really shitty days and i think that helps a lot i think we had that a bit i think the the peak of that was in sepulcher yeah that's when, when we it was doing like that's when people got told yeah them. oh okay. like, because we, yeah. you were, right. we were doing individual <laughs> bosses yeah and i remember we had like let's do nine halondruses and then you would uh, really see it there that people were like go 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 uh, this time, I think it was a bit more chill uh, overall. Yeah, it, it was more chill, but on Sepulcher, some people got really flamed because one group, I think, got overtook t two times or three times, and they just, like, they were just getting fl flamed down bad, yeah, for... Uh, for and they're the, already for down bad. Like, they're, left, yeah. they're already yeah. sad. Like, they can see that they're going slower than other groups, and then, like, getting <laughs> flamed on top of it. Like, I remember Mavy specifically was in that group, and he wanted to fucking kill Atlas or someone. Like, he was so <laughs> mad. Yeah, so... so the, and yeah, oh, that... And oh. let, me, let me just say one more thing, by the way. We realized at some point, getting augmentation helpers, that was not it. Yeah, let me just say... I don't know if you guys have had the, the filtering process, but I think uh, augmentations, whew, that was, uh, we might as well just uh, have a, a second character on the floor, I think, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Then again, like, the uh, lock hooks were also scuffed, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but Maybe I think it's just too it hard. So, yeah, I don't know. So I mean, we that's... had, yeah, we, so Aug, we didn't really notice that much. Uh, we didn't like, like, they were looking bad on logs, but that's just how the class is right now. But then they, like, they, typically they would die a lot, yeah? Dude, we was Disc Priests. Like, if you were inviting healers to your raid, like, one out of ten times, you would get a Disc Priest that knew how to heal really well. And nine out of ten times, they're just doing absolutely nothing and just can't play the game. And that was, mm. uh, that was one that we, we hard avoided Disc Priests. Yeah, we are, are any healer except Holy Priest, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we had our MVP, and I, I, I'll, I'll end uh, this with the splits. We had an MVP. Still remember his name to this day. Oh, we did too. His, his name, name was Pickle. We had a guy named Pickle. He's a goddamn beast. Pickle, nice. We had a guy called Lizard Wizard. Oh, that fun. guy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> so we were on Tindral, and then we, we decided to just replace people if we saw that they're just you know, holding us back a little bit. And then we decided to remove him, but then we couldn't invite the other person or something happened. And we're like, okay, we can't wait any longer. You're back, Lizard Wizard. Let's go, dude. Even <laughs> though he didn't make the flight the first uh, try or whatever. I don't remember oh, how you many gotta tries bring did, him back. But yeah. He... yeah, we brought him back. We're like, here you go. Another chance. Prove to us uh, your worth. And then... He didn't make it to the second platform again. Oh, it was Jesus. so sad, dude. That is so sad. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, Lizard we've got, wizard. I'll we've never got a forget couple. Him. We have Piss Believer. We have Bone Farmer. We had a bunch of celebrities show up. Actually, we noticed that a lot of, a lot of our helpers do it every season. Like this whole expansion. Like you, you definitely recognize names of people who do this every season. So, that is a uh, yeah. Think we that's always cool to see. Yeah, we had some people that we saw before. Uh, Dratnos, any more split questions? Are we good to move on to the raid? We move on to the raid. Although, actually, speaking of when to move on to the raid, I do want to ask about like how you guys decide whether or when to do M+, and if you guys were thinking at all about 
earlier M plus ever this tier because that's uh, something that I was at least thinking was maybe somewhat likely with the eye level jump, but sounds like you guys decided normal instead for early gearing up. But of course, you know, some people need to do M plus at some point for trinkets. So uh, that I guess is my last kind of split C question. Well, normal is a totally different device. So normal, what it does is it, it reduces the amount of potential mains that like people have by like making sure they have really good options for like trinkets and the really OP items from normal. And also like gives you some gear for heroic, but all of normal is done before you have any idea what your main is and doing mythic plus is impossible until you know what mm. your main is. So a mythic plus always has to happen after heroic, but I think we did do that slightly differently. Um, so I can at least say how we approach mythic plus, which is a lot of times you can't do all of your mythic plus before going into mythic because there's inevitably going to be time where Blizzard forces you to leave the raid. And that happened to us two times this year. We had uh, Smolderon's bug, uh, orbs were bugged. I don't know exactly what it was, but I would say like maybe one in 25 or one in 30 orbs, which was like every other attempt, you would soak an orb and then it would just double pop and instantly kill everyone. Uh, so we had to go AFK for, it took them like two or three hours to fix this. So we had to do Mythic Plus during this time. Like, could we have killed Smolderon without it? Yes. But, like, you're just wasting one in three wipes to... Or, I mean, it's just a complete waste of time, right? Uh, so we did that. And then on Tindril... I don't know if you guys ran into this at all on Tindril. This was the last, like, bug thing we ran into. I've never experienced anything like this. But Tindril would start lagging as the instance would go on. And then every three hours on the dot, whenever he casted Fire Beam or Roots the boss, not you, the boss would lag out for five seconds, do all of his abilities at the same time, and instantly kill everyone. And we had no idea what caused this. The only way we told Blizzard about it, they didn't know how to fix it. The only way we could fix it was by soft resetting the instance. And this, and then we, so we had to take a 30 minute break outside of lunch and dinner three times that day uh, to let it, let the instance fully reset with us out of the raid. And then we went back in, and exactly on the three-hour mark, the boss would lag out again. They eventually fixed this, but that was like three. So to answer your question about Mythic Plus, at least for us, because like obviously this is always going to happen more to us just due to the way the race is released, we can't do all of our Mythic Plus first, even if it's technically time-saving. Because number one, you could get things from Mythic that make you not have to farm Mythic Plus. That's number one. Number two, uh, you need something to do if you can't play the raid. And that, so you leave some of it, but you eventually get it done. I don't know how they handle it. Yeah, it's similar. Uh, we obviously <laughs> usually have it tested by you guys. Luckily, right? <laughs> we started a bit later, so we don't have that issue that much. Uh, but still, it's nice to have something to do. But you generally still have something to do, even if you do some M plus. But what your first point was applies to us uh, as well, obviously, where you do the normal rates first to get uh, the trinkets, um, the rate trinkets, because like, you want to do the non-repeatable things first to know your main, right? And plus, you can always farm, but the normal rates you can only do once per character. So you want to check it for, well, the trinkets, the Firak weapon, the um, I think it was the Thorncaller weapon, it was really good this year. Um, I don't know if there was any, I mean, there was some like necks and rings that were okay or like a bit better than plus options, but the rest didn't really matter. Um, uh, I mean, well, we didn't look at the rest at least. And then uh, this was just from M plus and, uh, like M plus is like filling the character with gear because you can repeat it, but normal you have to do first before you decide your main. Uh, I think one different thing that we had in our approach was that you guys do lower key M plus a lot more than us. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, honestly, but I don't think there's a big difference no matter what. So I know this was a Bubba cook. I think the general idea was you just need to have the item and you can upgrade it with flight stones anyway. So like, you know, you're not like holding off on anything, uh, and you can get gear that you need faster. You can target specific items faster and you're already going to get your vault stuff anyway. So it's more like, I mean, it's getting it on the hero track versus getting it on the champion track. But yeah, I don't know. It, yeah. it, it's a Bubba cook for gear. Yeah, I, I do have one more thing about how we did Mythic Plus differently, but I want to let you finish first. 
No, I'm good. I mean, like I said, I don't think it, it matters a lot. Uh, for certain situations, it's definitely better. Like if you definitely need to shrink it quickly for this boss and the guy can't be benched to farm a plus for years. Um, but uh, so from that, I don't think there's a big diff. Yeah, I, I, I know we did most of our Smolderons as 15 15s and running two at a time. And maybe this is something we can do by having a few more players, but what we did instead is we realized that Mythic Plus is not the same for every raider. Some people have the opportunity to do Mythic Plus much more than others. Specifically, I think each of our guilds mm -hmm. probably has like 14 to 15 people who are like always in the raid no matter what. Those people, Mythic Plus time is much more sacred. So we realized how many Smolderons we had left and we could have split them. But what we did instead was we ran 20 raiders with 10 helpers, which also made it all very, very easy in all one shots. Uh, and then we allowed 10 of our players, including both of our tanks and like all of our healers and like a few people who are in all the time, all those people that usually never get to Mythic Plus. We let them Mythic Plus for like half a day, get everything they needed while gearing out the rest of the raid. Like basically the first 10 people to get geared or so just got to get all of their Mythic Plus done so you didn't have to do an organized guild Mythic Plus. And it was yeah. like kind of mixing the efficiency of finishing off your heroic runs before Fire Axe and finishing Raiders in Mythic Plus so you don't have to take that break during progression. Yeah, we, we thought about letting people do this. Um, I don't think uh, we thought about also decreasing the amount of threads, let's say. I, I, I compare it to like multi-thread that's... Uh coding or CPU or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so going from dual core to single core is mm -hmm. what we call. I don't know if you have the same terminology. But um, yeah, we, we didn't think about that part. Um, but honestly, I don't think it matters. Again, like this is the small min-max of split yeah. running. I don't think it matters much. Yeah. All right. Getting into the raid now. Uh, Dragon. Wait, can I say yep. a small thing? Oh, no. I, okay. I'm injecting. I'm injecting. All right, inject. This is. A... <laughs> what did you think? First of all, did you, did you, had you sniffed it out, or was it a bit <laughs> of a surprise? The whole NA adventure we went, uh, Project oh. Albatross, as oh. we called it. Oh no! So. That's I dude, I totally forgot about that. Uh did we <laughs> sniff that out? No, we never sniffed it out. Uh I mean we knew that like okay, so if you guys were ever actually going to play on NA, that would be very obvious and it would involve you definitely not having five hundred geared characters on EU. So like yeah. that that I mean, whole no, course, yeah. yeah, so that whole <laughs> announcement was just like, okay, they're going to do one of two things. They're either doing this purely for content, which makes sense because I know one thing that tilts you guys about the I mean, you guys have said this multiple times, like anytime you bring up the release difference, one of the first things you bring up is it sucks for content because we're always late to content, right? And that's like all, like that right. first Tuesday is the case. And this is a chance for you guys to like get in on that and it makes sense. It was like a very quick amount of thing for content. But then we were also like, okay, well maybe they're like gonna fuck around and like practice some weak auras or tech or some of that stuff. I don't think you guys ended up doing that. I think something with your lockout got fucked up or something, but um you ended up going to bed and, and doing it. But I mean, I, I think all of it made sense. I will say it was both surprising and not surprising the amount of people that throughout the entire race thought you guys were playing on any servers, though. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. you, you, no, no. Wait, one second, Roger. You, you don't understand. Servo had to calm down the masses in our Discord and we're like, I signed up for Split, but I don't have an NA character. And we're like, <laughs> right, guys, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> we're still doing oh Splits on God. you. It, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we we waited to announce it like very last minute as well. Um, just to because if we announced this earlier, it would have been way longer shit show. Let's say of people uh, thinking that we're doing it, um, that we're going full NA. Um, but yeah, no, uh, the plan was. So we don't know when the servers come up. Uh, so there was a big risk that if the servers don't come up early or, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, extended maintenance, we would have just canceled the whole thing, which would have been very Yeah, sad. that's what I was um, interested in. I was wondering if you guys were willing to lose sleep. No. To get content. No. And yeah. I was like, that would be crazy. But I, I think you guys still got eight hours after it was over or something like that. Yeah, no, and the people... Eight, but... <laughs> I mean, it was we lost a yeah, little bit of false. sleep, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so bit. so you guys, you yeah. I mean, so that's the thing. That was the thing that surprised me that you would be willing to lose 
sleep or we gain info as well though keep that in mind especially what info did get that look out later in the next morning and uh, got it got some uh, stuff tested well what info uh, did you what out. info did you guys get that you wouldn't have gotten for free we... by just sleeping no I'll, I'll, uh, okay so the idea was that we go and we clear normals real quick and then we <clears throat> we would turn off the streams and then just do essentially a PTR test of your act normal for like an hour or two. Okay. Like, uh, so testing, yeah, testing any weak or as we had made, making sure that works, seeing how me mechanics work. Yeah. Like we had no idea uh, you, you read the journal, but it's very different than what you imagine. Um, the only thing we would not have seen, cause we're thinking maybe we should do heroic. Um, but we're like, nah, let's just go for the easy one. Um, the the blazes would have been the only thing we uh like we couldn't see yeah, yeah that's yeah. Uh, literally the only difference um would have been nice to have seen the blazes i don't know if it would have changed much but yeah and uh, yeah the, so the plan was we remove a person for firak normal keep and the then they don't get saved keep the lockout and then do that somehow i don't know maybe he didn't leave the instance fast enough as we pulled the boss i i don't know how but he did end up getting locked, which was very unfortunate. So then we had, we decided instead that we just go to bed instantly. So we didn't play at all after turning off the stream, because uh, there was no point. And instead we we just woke up like a, an hour earlier than planned. And then we went in there and tested some things um, in normal before the EU servers came up, uh, which was still valuable. I mean, it would have been better if the na servers came up a bit earlier and we didn't scuff the lockout thing it would have been decently yeah. valuable Dude, speaking of that that is something okay every tuesday we're excited but we're also just like anxious to get in we're like i hope they don't extend i think our longest maintenance ever was castle nathria mythic tuesday it was six hours like we're just like bro just fucking let us in the raid you know not only because you want to get going, but you're also every minute that it's not live and you've already woken up, you've fucked your sleep, right? So mm. like, that's like, okay, but this raid, none of that existed because I knew this raid, the longer they delayed maintenance, you guys were getting fucked just as much as us. So I like, I didn't have any opinion on it whatsoever. Like if they extended maintenance by two hours, you guys would have either had to just go to bed and then miss the whole thing that you were trying to do, or you were going to stay up and lose even more sleep for the raid and then both of those things are good for us, right? So like, I like I wasn't anxious about the raid start at all because for the first time ever, if they fuck, if they delayed the servers, it was affecting you guys as well. Yeah, yeah I remember I'm, people were I'm, saying like, "We're damn, it's not working out. The servers are delayed." I'm sitting here like, "Is this a good thing or a bad thing?" I don't even know at this point, you know, because we're ready to go in as well, but you guys are also ready to go in. I'm not sure what we were hoping for. But, yeah, uh, exactly. Part of, me was hope, part of me was hoping, please, it should be extended maintenance so they, they don't get to start uh, a lot uh, before us. But part of me was like, God damn, we put effort into this. Make the surface up, I want to play. Um, so it was a bit mitigating, I guess, uh, from our side as well. The You know, if the servers come up early, that means we get a bit extra time on them. If they come up late, that means you guys have uh, less of a head start. So it is... I don't know. I mean, it worked out in the end. I think the, the main thing that I must say, though, was a lot of fun for the people participating. I don't know, just it felt like a cool project, let's say, like uh, gearing up the characters on an A, uh, doing M plus and, uh, and heroic raids and all that. So it, it was definitely a fun project. I don't know if we would necessarily do it in the future. But uh, with something to discuss, I guess. I mean, I think it has um, value yeah. in the future. Like, like the whole like I... being able to test the as long as our realms come up early enough and you don't lose sleep, it is objectively better information gathering than whatever you could be doing on that Tuesday on EU, right? Like, I mean, if if the realms don't come up late, I think it just makes sense for you guys to do it. Yeah, but it also depends on that week. Like, we were lucky in a sense, oh, yeah. especially with how the seed farming happened, that we didn't have anything to do really on Tuesday. But if it's like some exhausting grind, like think of the first, um, the first raid, Voti, farming rares and doing all that crap, oh. and and then having that on top would be maybe a bit too much. So, or we I could do 
Or, uh, yeah, Scraggy. I mean, cool. <laughs> oh, no. Scraggy is the, the person pushing the go full US uh, angle. I don't know. I think you guys should do it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I used mm. to be... So there's two things holding you guys back majorly, and I think it is... Number one, you have people leaving their accounts that they care about. I think that is something that matters more than a lot of people would think. And then I am actually not as concerned. I think you guys would be able to fill your splits on NA. Like, I know that's been the concern in the past is like, what if we go there and we can't do as many runs because we don't get as many favorable helpers or whatever because you're in a different region? I actually think there's, there are so many helpers. There's easily twice as many as we need. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not the bait, guys. <laughs> is it a, is it a bait? Yeah, yeah. Come on over, guys. <laughs> well, I could totally see. We get, we go there. People are like, yeah, I'll help with your split. Uh, and then they come yeah, in sure. and it's like, you guys are going to get go. go you guys, yeah, you're going to get go. Yeah, you're going to get some go liquid, guys, for sure. Dude, do you guys uh -oh. know that player, this was in Eternal Palace, that stole the font of power? And yes. said, "Go method." Yeah, he's raiding for you he now. He right? raids in our guild. Yeah. No. What? Yeah. It's... I swear, the the only the guy who stole the trinket and said, "Go method," and left the group <laughs> raids in our fucking guild right now. Yeah, it's fucking insane. But does he? What, what, does what he kind still of ritual? Have the uh, <laughs> what, what, what did you force him to do to pay for his sins? <laughs> uh, I didn't. <laughs> well, when he applied, he was just someone we were going to recruit, and then I found out, I think, a little bit before that. And I talked about it on my stream and he like messaged me. I mean, obviously he was just like, I mean, he's really young. He was just like a kid at the time doing make, probably trying to make his friends laugh in discord. So he just apologized and said, I did a stupid kid thing. And I think we can all relate to that. So yeah, it made sense. Yeah. Um, there is something so crazy. you guys mentioned about, uh, like splits and, and like, and like going to bed and like how many hours of sleep you're getting. I think that's one thing that is majorly different about our guilds in progression is the amount of time we raid and the amount of time we sleep. So, and I'm going to completely disregard the whole, like, we can get into this later, the whole, like, staying up for uh, Tendril and Fire Act thing. I mean, even in the first three days of the race. I actually did the math on this before this started. Uh, you guys, tell me this is correct. You guys raid when your realms come up at 5 a.m. And then you play till, I think it's 11. It was, so it's like a gig. Yeah, gig yeah, the goal is 10-11. Uh, 10-11. I, mean, so, I don't know what we did this So you do a time. super, super long day, and then you move your next sleep back to a reasonable time, right? To like, uh, yeah, like you sleep till what, like 7, 8, or something like that, your time? Yeah, around that. Okay, so that, obviously, we our, our realms come up at 11, so we normally just do a... We, our goal is like, generally speaking, we want to wake up as close to the start of maintenance as possible of it coming up. And then we just start our full raid day then. And then that's our sleep schedule for the week. And then obviously if the reset is coming by, we'll start moving our schedule earlier, which we both had to do this time. But you guys actually, by the end of your third day, raid, I think, five more hours than we raid in our first three days. It might be six. And the only thing you guys lose to do that is sleep. But it's like, how much do you value losing sleep on something like splits? versus something like mythic progression and i think that's fascinating like how uh mm. like how both of us choose mm. to approach that because like obviously sleep is so important like bosses like tendril and fire Act, like if you are not well rested you have absolutely like your progression is going to be so dog shit on fights like that but on a lot of fights that aren't quite that hard how much does sleep really matter how much does sleep matter for efficient splits and then also like, <laughs> no. and, and, and then and then you guys specifically, and I'm sure you have a lot to say about this, but like, you know, I think our our things start like generally 12 hours apart, the the release difference, and then you guys, in the I feel like the community doesn't know this enough. You guys make up half of that in the first three days just by going ham, and like, well, have you? Yeah. What is your all thoughts about that? I do think if you, because I didn't calculate this, but if you're saying it was like five or so hours like two to three hours of that is generally always gonna happen because let me tell you it's not fun waking up every day at 4 a.m so by default the first day we're always gonna essentially play a bit more just to shift the sleeping schedule a bit forward so that we wake up at a time that let's say the hotel serves breakfast at least yeah um so it's uh it's always gonna be a couple of hours i don't know 
the other two or three hours. I, I, I guess, yeah, maybe Scribe can or Maris uh, elaborate on those. I mean, I, I mean, maybe Scribe has more data, data. But I was just like, I went to Scribe. I was like, oh, we need to finish this. I'm just gonna put less hours now, and I just put it into Discord, and then we had less hours, and that's fine, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my my take on sleep is that uh, that it's just an illusion. I don't know. I don't think it matters so much, especially oh, wow. in the early days. I mean, that makes complete <laughs> sense because, like, I I mean, I, yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me because, like, we definitely feel differently about that, and we had like if we if our realms came up at five a.m. There is absolute. We might start at 5 a.m., but there's absolutely no way we would play all the way until 11. Like that, just, just full stop. Like that just sounds crazy. But like I, I think you guys feel more compelled to make up that time, right? So like I yes. mean, I would probably feel differently mm -hmm. starting from behind. So like I just, I just think the psychology behind that is is insane. And hearing sleep is an illusion. That that makes so much sense. And I also, <laughs> it is. It, to to add on this, by the way, I think we have a little bit the the, the bad rose. Scribe says sleep is an illusion, and the break officers like in the game that they're handling break is Servo and me, and Servo's at home and it's like, guys, we don't need to sleep, and I'm like sleeping five to six hours on average, on progress. So I'm like, guys, we don't need to sleep that much, yeah. And then we have like some raiders are like, guys, we need like eight hours, nine hours of sleep, and we're like, nah, it's all okay, right? And I think if you have longer than eight <laughs> hours sleep, you're just wasting, uh, I mean, sorry, eight hours of sleep, eight hours of break. I think you're just gonna sit there and just uh, waste time. I think you're just gonna like look at your phone, go through Twitter, or look at what you guys are doing on stream. I don't know, they're just gonna sit there and just, you know, watch stuff instead of trying to actively, like you have to actively try to sleep. And I think a lot of people don't know how to just go to sleep. They will just sit there and wait for sleep to come to them. And just waste sleep. This this was the progress where I had the most amount of sleep because I actively tried to sleep and uh, didn't look at anything. I just you know took the phone aside. I closed my eyes and tried to relax as much as I could. You know. I did the same thing. I I slept with uh what are, you know those things people wear in the movies the little fucking eye covers. Yeah. yeah. Oh the eye mask. Dude, I oh, have I I had I used an eye mask this raid because the blackout curtains in my apartment didn't work. So I was just I was just sleeping like a like a baby the whole time. Yeah, I mean I also slept. We had a lot of conversations like that near the end of our raid this time in regards to sleep actually where you have twenty people in your raid. Uh, well you have more people in your guild, but like twenty people in the raid. And everyone needs a different amount of sleep. So some people are fine sleeping six or seven hours every night. And there are people who unironically need like nine or ten. Hours. Like uh, Nick, Nick showed me his phone and his phone had his sleep data for the last six months. And he sleeps on average ten and a half hours a night. I'm fired Whoa. up. I'm no, fired no up. Way. I'm fired up. Sleeps 12 hours a day. Okay. That's what? I can't believe I mean, it. I mean, Every okay, day. that makes sense because he's not human. Yeah. I, I must say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, literally, it's fucking insane. Okay. So, because of that, you don't really realize this in races like Abaris or even Razageth or even like Nylotha, Nathria, obviously in one week raids. Like, you don't run into this. In this raid, you started to. In Sepulchre, both of our guilds went through this, where we reached that point where very obviously you had to take one or two nights and sleep more, right? Um, it was in like the th like end of the second week, usually. This this raid was near the end of the second week, and you could kind of see... It's near the end of the raid, so you don't want to do it, but you could kind of see that like the few people in your raid that need more sleep in their life, they are absolutely dead for the back half of the day. And these two bosses at the end of this raid specifically, your efficiency loss when you have people that are dead versus motivated and like well rested, I think is pretty noticeable. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that is, I think something where our two guilds just view that totally differently. I think you'll have, you know, what's the value of rating two extra hours versus getting two hours extra of sleep on one of those bosses. I, I don't know that there's no one who studies this. There's no other esport that even remotely compares to, playing all day every day at full cognitive load for two weeks like no one does this there's like like someone told me maybe some kind of like really high level like navy seal combat training has people who looked into this and this is an insane comparison like obviously we're just playing video games but like the mental <laughs> the mental stress 
of something like that is something that it's probably one of the only scenarios people have looked into doing this or like marathon running. But again, it's just less mentally taxing. It's all everything that you can compare to this is purely physical or mostly. Mar Mar yeah, we, we always say marathon, marathon, bro. Marathon is two hours, bro. Are you joking? That's like two splits. <laughs> I, that's nothing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, but there's yeah. the long ones, so I go like for three days and stuff. What they run for three days? Well, yeah, two, yeah. Well, no, of course they take There's breaks. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, well, isn't it like the the guy that wrote a book about it and stuff? They were super famous, lost a lot of weight. Yeah, we near the same. Yeah, what, near... Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Near the end of our raid, we were like ending one of our raid nights, and I'm like, guys, we don't need fucking extra sleep. Like this boss is dead in like two days. I think it died three days from then, but. Like, we need to, like, be going full-time. We were like, this is not the time to catch up on sleep. And then, like, I had a few people that were, like, pretty adamant. We're like, we need more sleep. We have people who are dead. And I'm like, all right, yeah. can at least a few more of you guys pipe up and tell me that you need sleep? Because, like, I think our entire guild getting an extra two hours of sleep uh, for, like, four people just sounds insane. And then, like, at least, like, six or seven more people were like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I like, near the end of these days, I'm completely fried. Uh, so I think we did that. Plus, it was also what we were hoping at the time was like, because this didn't really happen this raid till near the end. We were like, all right, we're going to take two extra hours of sleep. Echo had a good day yesterday. We're going to wake up some new info. So it'll be like insanely good, efficient sleep, right? Like the best two hours of sleep you could ever have extra two hours of sleep are when you know your opponent is going to pass you and give you a bunch of free shit. So we were doing that. And then you all didn't fucking do it, man. I felt so <laughs> mad. I woke up so... I'm not kidding. I woke up like super tilted because I wanted... It was like the day after that where you made significant progression. And then on that day, it was just like, man, I just... This is the one fucking time. So we just slept two extra hours for... Well, not for no reason, but yeah. yeah did wow. you... Um, I, I, I do want to say um, we pushed two times pretty much, right? One was Tindril for the kill and one was uh, Firak on the last day, right? Like the last night, let's say. Um, and Laradar. Okay, yeah, and Laradar. And Laradar. That was the first was, day. Uh, we'll get to that. Oh yeah. my God, Jod um, was uh, ready with the jobs. I, I like got it. the receipts. Okay, can we, can we start with Laradar? Because I think there is something fascinating to talk about with Laradar in, in regards yeah. to both of our guilds. Um, so tell me your reason I mean, for staying up on Laradar. Well, the um, reason was that we thought we're going to kill it in an hour and then go to bed. That didn't work out. <laughs> uh, so at some point you're like, like, obviously we thought that any pull could be the kill, right? Like it's not, it's not a pause where you're like, oh, we're getting closer, but we need an extra few hours. Like it's just silly mistakes. And we knew if we fix them, we'll get the kill. But in hindsight, obviously it was a okay. big mistake. Um, yeah, I have. There were a lot of mistakes going on. on so, tomorrow, by the way, I don't know if you guys recognize the like irony in this, but in last raid, we ended our third day uh, of splits. It was halfway through our third day, exactly the same as when you guys started to go into mythic, and we decided to go into mythic for that day, clear the first few couple bosses, and then go to bed, think about Scarn, and then do whatever. Okay, so we do that. Notice, and I want people in chat to know this. When the when you decide to start mythic progression after multiple days of splits, and more specifically, starting mythic progression like after dinner when you've done splits in mythic plus all day, your characters, your players' brains are fried as fuck. Like they're extremely fried brains. Uh, like that is the worst mythic progression you'll ever get. Like it just as far as like how long it takes you. So I imagine that vastly contributed to your all's Laradar. And last raid for us, that contributed to our Rashok. We did the same thing you all did last raid, this raid. We go through, we do Forgotten Experiments. We think Rashok could die any pull. We end up staying up like 30 minutes past our our like normal time we would go to bed to like do Rashok. And it, and it was one of those things where I think we wiped at like 3% on the third pull. And we were just going to keep... We're just going to kill Rashok and then go to bed, right? And then, like, 10 pulls went by, and then 15 pulls went by. And then we were like, I mean, we're just going to one-shot this when we wake up. And why the fuck did we stay up in the first place? So we go to bed, wake up, and one-shot it. Uh, but, like, in hindsight, after the tier, we looked back on this, and we were like, that is a total fucking mistake. Like, this doesn't matter when you kill this boss. 
you always just go to sleep because you're going to kill a boss like that and not fry it in the morning instantly, and you're just going to inevitably save time. So then in this raid, I saw you guys do exactly what we did on Rashok, on Laradar, almost to the exact same thing. It was the end of your third day. It was a wing end boss, and one of the wings just the exact same fucking thing. And then I wondered, and then what I wanted to ask you is, do you guys value the feeling of a boss being dead when you go to sleep for, like, morale reasons? Or is it, like... Because, like, I think objectively, if you would have went to sleep an hour before you did, you would have killed Laradar faster in the morning than you did that night. Do you, mm. do you all agree uh, with that? Okay, so then, like... Do you think it is a mistake to stay up then? Or do you think that the value of having the boss dead in your mind or the bad morale of going to bed with a boss alive is worse than the sleep? I think I the second one for me. It, I don't know if the sleep was that big of a... I mean, like... <laughs> <you're> <laughs> here, <right? laughs> sleep is an illusion, bro. No, uh, I don't think it, it was that big of a deal. Uh, it was very slightly yes at the beginning, but then we had it sorted. The issue was we didn't do our homework on Laradar. Uh, we thought it was just probably easy and that, uh, you know, didn't really care about eye level and stuff like that. People had still loot to fix, um, EOEs to equip and things like that. And uh, I think our eye level was just quite low to kill it. And then uh, once we equipped our stuff, we killed it in the next pull. Um, so we were just, you know, pushing a little bit extra didn't do homework, didn't know what instant dollars wipe to, didn't know what you guys wipe to, and uh, just went, went into it kind of blind. That was the main issue, I think, that we did wrong. Um, aside from that, killing a boss before going to bed, I think, does feel pretty good, especially if it's a later boss. I don't think it matters as much on Laradar. Like, on Tindral, it, matters a, it mattered a lot for us to just... Because we knew we can also just do... Uh, you know, kill, kill a Tindral later on after sleep was no problem. But uh, there you also have the benefit of having a couple pulls of Firak and going to bed with Firak in your mind instead of Tindral that you're going to one-shot anyways. On Laradar, yeah, it didn't really matter that much. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Laradar, it's more yeah. just the concept. Obviously, Tindral has much more, uh, like, ramifications to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I mean, the mistake was just generally we should have just gone for Council instead. But... It was Ooh, literally was like, we just killed three bosses and we we're all kind of feeling hyped. And we we're like, fuck it, let's keep going, yeah? Yeah, we, we thought, also didn't... Like, uh, uh. We, 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 I mean, we assumed that it's going to take roughly the same time as it did for you guys, which was about an hour, and that would have been fine with our sleeping schedule. So we're like, yeah, let's just kill this. Like, it's fine, I mean... Uh, and yeah, just didn't work out at all. Um, we just... Uh, yeah. A lot of uh, small mistakes, especially with the the firefighter thing, went uh, a lot of times badly, and uh, not prepared for the boss properly, just led to. Uh... Also, I must okay. Maybe I'll I'll just wait if we're gonna talk about the boss later. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna kind of go I... through every boss and briefly. There's not a lot to say about the early ones, but I I do have some thoughts on Laradar. Like we had a nice. Uh, like CC plan for the last phase that we thought was going to be pretty fun and then it ended up just being something that instantly dies and didn't matter at all uh, so that kind of felt bad like I think our re-clear of Laradar it was we one shot it but we, so many things went wrong at the beginning we did the last phase in like maybe eight yards of space there was no space we just like uh, I don't know it, and it just worked I don't know it just I, it just I don't know that fight that fight definitely had I think a few issues with it but uh, what did you guys think about the first, like, all the bosses just before Smolderon, maybe, as a whole? Just, like, what were your all's opinions on those? Um, I mean, I, I can go first, I guess. Um, I, I think they were pretty good, all of the, the bosses beforehand. Like, they did feel kind of decent, let's say, to play. They were not the super easy bosses. I guess Igira, it was a little bit uh, weird play, I think. Um, but all the other bosses were kind of nice. I think Naimi, however you want to pronounce him, her, whatever, uh, was very underwhelming. But the rest was, uh, I think, was pretty fine for the first bosses. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I, the, the problem is the tuning, right? It's just, it's not made, like, bosses made for us. They're just yeah, made for okay. casual people. So, I don't know. It, it's nice, but it's, it's like you're just doing this... Uh, 
like random quests that like don't really matter. It's just like a fun thing in the game. It's like, like you're doing whatever. heroic almost. Like you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. Yeah, my my, yeah, own, my I, only reservations is I feel like Volkros, even with then with it being where it is, was still a little too easy. And then, do you think Naimu or Laradar was too easy? I know that was the, you know it was super funny. Like the whole bit in the community leading up to this raid, and then before Smolderon was there, was like ID was in the raid, and the rest of us were doing splits. And there's two funny talking points that always happen. Number one, uh, are you guys afraid of the raid? <laughs> being instantly <laughs> cleared by it. this dude chatters to say this all the time like god i mean when do they i would just love instant dollars to full clear the raid while they're still doing splits i would just like it's like guys this is just not how the raid works and then also people are i loved how people said this raid was too easy oh just another easy raid even after looking uh just through naimu and uh laradar which is like i think as someone did the math on this or looked at the amount of raids. I think it was like six of the last 10 raids or something, including some of the hardest ones ever. When the best guilds entered the raid, the first six bosses died in two hours. Like that's happened in almost every raid. Like that's not a new thing, but like I think the race to world first like just gives people memory loss. Yeah, because yeah. they need to watch Blitz for four days and they forget everything that happened in the last six months. Yep. I, I will say the one boss that it, I'm not a huge fan of, I don't know why, just, yeah, is uh, the first boss actually, Narrowroot. I don't know. I just don't feel it. I think uh, the rest of the bosses, I think they did a good job, but uh, like Scribe said, it's not really for us. So they're going to be good farm bosses, I, I guess. Um, yeah, but farm yeah. doesn't hmm. matter. I don't know. Like what... When do you guys yeah. think you're going to re-clear Tindril and Fyrak? Like, well, what would be the point? <laughs> I mean, to be, I can say, I because uh, I had a plan for the 5th of December, like for that week, because I assumed Blizzard would nerf the bosses, but they're somewhat not nerfing the bosses, so I'm not sure when we're going oh, back. Yeah, yeah we we're kind of expecting the nerf and then just slam them, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Seems like we're kind of done with the first couple bosses, so maybe we can talk about the last three, because that's like kind of the important thing and i i have... oh, one thing for larodar i need to okay. ask yeah how do you do you fully understand like actually fully understand because i to this day i still don't know how does that mechanic work where you poop the the, the oh, lava let's dude, say, okay the i'm so glad you brought this how? up okay so yeah. on mythic testing we vigilantly made sure that all of our players stood on the edge of the lava and it did not like they were not placing lava pools like it didn't grow. Yeah. Okay. So then we watched ID kill it and they're putting fire everywhere. So we're like, okay, they changed the mechanic or something. And then I went and looked at us doing the boss and just for whatever reason on live, we were not standing on the lava as well. And I think the lava was growing more than it was on PTR just in general. But like you could see that like the mechanic of the pass veil of you not being near lava was procking more often. And I couldn't tell if our players were just being really lazy or whether they changed the way it worked. I'm really glad you brought I don't know. I, uh, yeah. we, we had someone stand in the middle with it and it didn't do anything. I, oh. I think it just targets uh, X amount of players, not all for every lava placement tick. And then it'll take like three targets and another three targets, but it can be anyone. So you can be lucky and never get chosen. Yeah, that... Uh, yeah, that, I, I don't know. Wait, you had someone stand in the middle of the raid with igniting growth and it didn't spawn fire? Well, yeah, like not near, near, not near fire, and it just didn't do anything. And we're like, okay, I then I definitely don't understand how. I, that, who knows? Maybe it's just fucking broken. I don't know. Yeah, I that, like... me that mechanic is. I think it is the first time there's a mechanic in a boss, and I, even after playing it, I still don't know how it's. You know, the the code. I don't get it. How, how it's, does it's it work? Same, bro. It yeah, I mean, X -X are you player? sure though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> we, we've done it on PTR as well, and then people were stressed. Sometimes you would just not get a single pool, and sometimes you would. It's it's just selecting X amount of people each uh, tick to drop a pool. The yeah. debuff is on everyone, but that debuff is just kind of fake. Yeah, yeah. I mean just that. Means, I think that yeah. mechanic was just strange. I hope they don't do more of that because that was just weird. I don't know. Thankfully, it was on an early boss, so we didn't have to min-max it too much, but I don't know. just felt weird. 
I, I would have, yeah. I, I think a version of Laradar would have been nice that was harder. Like, I mean, just like if the 40% to zero burn was hard and there was enough CC to actually be interesting, but I feel like it was just completely ignored. Oh yeah. On, on Laradar actually, cause you mentioned the CC earlier, we actually had a plan. I don't know if you uh, thought about that. We were planning on having a DH tank in the last phase. Uh, basically take half of the uh, ang half Jeez. of the circle yeah. Yeah. and just uh, take aggro from them and just infinitely kite them in the lava so you just don't like half the odds you don't care about and the rest we cc uh but not cc everything because we thought like that's just too much chaos so that was our plan for that boss um yeah all right i can i can show you mine one second I think the general idea of what I wanted to do was here. Let me stream my POV. This won't be long, but I think we did. So there's like the eight that spawn, right? They kind of spawn like this. If you have the boss on the edge, they kind of spawn like around you in a circle. We just had like these two get cleaved under the boss. These two get rotations of traps, uh, blinds, paralyze, things like that. Uh, I think you needed to like single root this one. And the bass one, the back ones, we thought about playing a Blood Decay to make this fight easier. We thought about playing a Vengeance Demon Hunter. But our, our idea actually was utilizing Dream Walk. So we would just do a mass root in the back. So these two walk in naturally to get mass rooted. And then we had our two Aug Evokers, uh, Dream Walk or Sleepwalk, whatever it's called. We had them sleepwalk the outer ones into the mass root pile and then get mass rooted. So you don't have to play mm. a, a weird tank or a second tank. Interesting. I don't know if yeah. that was better, but it, I, I, I always, I, I think this has happened to us in the past too, where you, I, you guys are always more willing to do the like extra tank or the tank comp swap. And I hate that so much. And I would rather do anything to figure out a way around it. In fact, that was what we did. I'm so glad autumn allowed mass grip on fire act to be up for both because like we thought about double blood dk but playing ret sounded so bad <laughs> and then uh i mean oh you can also go aura just not play devil aura that also uh, that's what we did oh yeah okay so that's, uh... that's what i thought about doing before they buffed red aura so a lot of people in the chat maybe aren't aware of this but like red aura has been kind of assumed that it's like a raid buff for a while red aura until they hot fixed it in this raid was absolutely dog shit like it's uptime is so bad it's you have to play around it and even then it's still so bad and then they hot fixed it and now it's like 100 percent uptime of like two percent basically permanent damage and healing which is in my opinion like i don't think you can sit that like that's way too good so I don't know, but I wait. Would you guys have actually? No, sat no. We, we we sit. We said the like our holy paladin was just playing red aura. We just we didn't have devil aura. Yeah, but that's that's psycho too. <laughs> like that's yeah. I, I mean, it, was, it, was it was a little bit. Time, at the same time, we swapped the healer from holy to disc, and we were just yeah. dying left and center. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, and then we, we swapped we everything back. <laughs> yeah, that yeah we yeah we we did that. That was actually what we did off stream. Uh, on fire act the previous day was we messed around with a lot of that stuff in our cc but the uh let's go back to uh tendril so i want to ask you guys a tendril question um i wanted two questions first one is how many pulls does it take to kill tendril with uh 20 percent more health in the last phase and three second seeds <laughs> i don't i mm, is it even mm. doable with the gear we had i don't think so Maybe so 1, I think you could have maybe <laughs> I think you you maybe could have beaten it because like the enrage was kind of a joke like you never came anywhere close to the enrage where we killed it uh but like maybe you could have the damage but like bro I think the hardest seed set would have been the very first one right like the three second seeds in those mm, fire beams, beams would have been like yeah. fucking insane holy shit I think you would have wiped to that lineup hundreds of times alone I don't yeah. know when, when when we got ripped in the Blizzard Discord. You guys, it would have been killable, but we're still nothing about twenty percent. We we're like, holy moly, that must be some <laughs> crazy crazy gamers to kill it uh, with three second seats and twenty percent more HP. I'm I'm curious actually. Has anyone? Because we did have a try where we saw deeper than I think you guys uh, did. Um, I think we reached like eight minutes or something in the fight. I. I, I'm curious if anyone has ever seen Enrage 
actually, because so, I, I don't think so. So BDG, someone told me BDG saw it in nine minutes. I didn't watch the VOD, but I heard someone say that they had some shamble pull that they didn't wipe to that seed set, but they like lived with a bunch of people for a while. Like, you know, the fire beam that you usually kill the boss during, like they yeah. lived like yeah. 45 seconds or something after that is what someone said. What? Yeah. So like, I, I don't know, but I mean, I'm assuming he's going to do what he did on PTR, which is he's going to like do the enrage cast with the ramping damage. Yeah. Right. And then like, he did. yeah, but I don't think no, anyone's seen uh, that. Th that is fine, but we saw a little bit deeper um after the part where we both of our guilds killed it and we saw essentially let's say the next set of mechanic that is brutal as fuck dude wait I what, is, what you, is the like, next what is the next combo um let me let me pull it up um uh, and it was the was it wasn't uh, it the roots Skype, Skype, do you have the the the, the, the figma the, where it's, you moved it's yeah. roots fire beam and then what 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 is after the fire beam? Because you have to do the you have to do another set of roots without any CDs up before that fire beam, and then and then there's and then I think it does a star shower, and then I just don't know what the lineup is after that. But I mean, just based on timings, it has to be seeds and dispels, right? It, I'm trying to see because I noted it down um, the exact timings. Yeah, I'm, I'm also trying to find. Yeah, it. our plan. I, so, so this is maybe where we differed a little bit early on Tendril. I know you guys were going for like more consistent seed damage. You're like playing a second lock. I think you made another swap too for seed damage. And we were like, our seed damage or our root root damage, not seed damage. Our, our root damage works. We, we even thought about bringing in like either another rogue or another enhance because enhance also has insane boss damage on that fight, but literally the worst root damage ever. Because our plan was let's just kill the boss faster than ever learning more mechanic sets. And that was uh that was the strat. We did not want to see farther into that phase. It was fucking psycho. Yeah, I don't know. Tindral was uh I mean these three if we would have actually had a three second seats in the last phase, this boss would have been a quick oh. one thousand push boss. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think well more than that. <laughs> but also they, yeah, I... yeah, but they uh so this is while they're looking up the Figma for how the end of that fight works. I the second part of that question that I have is okay so both of our guilds never want anyone to nerf anything not only does it like uh like kind of not reward you for putting in the time to get like for example if they would have nerfed p2 seeds as well we would have felt fucked maybe you guys would have felt fucked as well like getting good at p2 seeds was really hard and like imagine that, like method is like working on p1 and then they just never even have to spend the time getting good at p2 like that would feel like shit to us, right? So I'm glad that they only nerfed the last phase. But we train, we're psychos and we train ourselves to think that any boss is killable. They never need to nerf any boss. We can kill anything because if you don't think that way, then you're just sitting around waiting for nerfs. And then, you know, you're just, you're, you're not, you're not playing with the kind of mentality you need to win. But I want to ask you guys is Firak a better boss with the nerf they did? than if they would have left it unnerved so is because like hard harder doesn't necessarily equal better right like which one do you think is a better version of the boss i think maybe uh, instead of four percent like two percent or maybe 2.5 <laughs> oh seconds <laughs> at, do you mean? at that point really nitpicking uh, no, no, it's not like the four percent nerf. They do the two point five. You said fire rack, right? No, 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 tendril. Oh, okay. Oh, I also understood fire rack. Okay, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, I meant the I meant yeah. the tendril nerfs oh, from right. five second yeah. seeds in the last phase. So like, like is the version of that fight with three second seeds in the last phase and twenty more? Oh, I said fire rack. Sorry, I must have misspoke. Uh, yeah, the uh, is that version of the boss with twenty percent more health and three second seeds in the last phase? Is that a better version of the boss, even though it's harder, or do you think it is a better? Or would the fight have been better even if they had it like four second seeds in both phases from the start, for example? I mean, I, I yeah. you want to go, Scrap? You can. First. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it was fine. Mine is short, so I can no. go first, I guess. I think the nerf was fine. Five uh, seconds. I don't think, I think three seconds and 20% more health. That sounds a bit uh, cracked. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's the same. I think the seed nerf was good because the mecha mechanic, if you played it yourself, was very frustrating. Like, it, it, even the, the three like the three seconds in phase two, it was so frustrating that you soaked your seed, you see one in 
near distance and you just can't do anything you just look at it and you just wipe and you're it was a very frustrating mechanic and if this would have been the case as well in every last phase set oh my god i think it would have been pretty horrible to play but maybe the hp would have been cool like maybe we could have uh, played the boss for one and a half minutes longer yeah i agree that's um, i that um, i think you're right with like the i wish yeah. tendril no matter what i don't care how long the last phase is i wish tendril died in the enrage cast for sure yeah that would have been a lot more epic i agree but i i, I did link oh sorry yeah, yeah. No, no yeah go ahead go ahead you can yeah i linked the picture you can show it if you want but uh those are the mechanics that we never even like did anything with them let's say yeah and just look at that lineup in within 20 seconds that is some wait so this some... is this so this is after the root fire beam yeah. after the seeds this so that feathers roots is after the fire beam yeah oh interesting yeah i i, I can link the previous no. ones i love oh, death so i like the death call there's a death timer you're <laughs> well, just fucking was... dead i mean the... I wrote, I wrote the two ones, yeah? So, yeah. so, so you, you have you deal with the, the fire beam. You're like chilling for ten seconds, and then the boss literally pops bloodlust and starts casting within twenty seconds. Feathers, roots, fire beam. Oh my these god! Spells, seeds and stars. The stars is just to finish you off. Yeah, if you made it that far, you just clap, get clapped. Oh yeah, there, I mean yeah? you would need for seeds plus stars. Keep in mind the dispel buff is rolling, so you're gonna be soaking seeds with a dispel dot and a star aoe during i mean that is actually death like you're just dead like that, that is an insane combo <laughs> holy shit yeah, yeah i don't know psycho but, boss. That, but that boss I, I must say that boss with 20 percent more or like 50, 10 15 whatever that he would have died in enrage i think would have been cool and i also wouldn't have minded if the seeds in phase two would have been longer so we can play the boss longer like progress the boss better just to see Enrage and play the boss the whole way. I think that would have probably been nicer, I guess. The but... Enrage thing is cooler, but yeah. it also requires them to be so good at tearing the boss. I, I kind of like the little bit more Final Fantasy Savage approach where if you deal with the mechanics good, you're probably going to kill it at some point. You know, that's how Tindral felt to me. And they didn't have to be the, the perfect, you know, doing the perfect tuning. You could play it in a different way. So you you know, you could uh, be going safer, but longer. You can go a bit more glass cannon, but you have to finish it within a set amount of time. You don't even do the tactics, let's say, after a set amount. I, I like this, um, like, let's say, logically, this design more. Emotionally, yes, it feels really good to kill a boss. Like, you know, right before Enrage Cast, kind of like um, uh, Rygalon was really cool, right? But... Uh, I, I think this is this is pretty good design as well. I, I would be happy if this continued like this too. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm just curious. I'm interested to see because this is just eight minutes. You, I, Guys, you can't I, be silent like this. I, what? Did I DC? Yeah. Oh, you, you're oh no, he's, he's gone. Yeah. He's, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, oh. Sir Scribe? Wait, where are Hello, you? I'm back now, yeah? Okay. Hey, welcome yeah. back. Okay, okay. Um, I'm like DCing every like 30 seconds. Uh, Everything except Discord. This was the first Discord DC. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to say. No, we heard you earlier, though. Uh, it's mm. fine. Um, yeah. I. I'm just curious because I saw that overlap afterwards, and I'm like, this is. I do not think a single team with the current version of the boss is gonna survive this no, seven forty yeah, we... till eight minutes. Uh... Um. So I'm curious to to see like what happens after because i was expecting the regular thing and i think that's why <clears throat> like i'm um, looking at the boss energy i think the the boss was supposed to end raids around eight minutes 30 mm -hmm. um or something like that so there was um, i mean we killed it at 7 30 or so right so there was a good minute on top of that so i do think the 20 percent nerf they did could have easily been a 10 percent nerf but then they would have to make a little bit the overlaps in the last phase a little bit easier, yeah? Like, it was a little bit too much, I think, if they want us to to actually reach and raids in a reasonable time. I mean, it's just uh, Psycho. I feel, though, could have worked as well. Yeah, it's also... Yeah. Yeah, yeah we thought about 5 healing. So we, we thought it, we were cooking, like, Resto Druid 5 healer. Like, that... Like, just having our Druid player who's already learned ranged on the fight, just do the, like, out-of-form cat form 150k DPS for some reason, and then just heal during times where they have cooldowns, basically. I just... 
I, 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 we thought about it. The only reason we didn't do it is he's playing Feral, and melee on that fight is really easy. And ranged has to learn a much more difficult version of Tendril. Mm. And we just felt like the relearning of ranged was not worth. And also, when we were looking at deaths, we were never dying to healing. We were dying to raid one shots with seeds blowing up and like more structural problems than healing, really. So I feel like five healing wouldn't have really helped, other than like you would have definitely saw to the enraged more, I guess, but I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Made also the intermissions a bit easier. You didn't, you could just, like, you, you never really wiped through the intermission shields. So if you remove a DPSer, I guess it would be a little bit tighter. Yeah, you'd have, and yeah, it'd we be did, bad. We, we did have some deaths actually to that. I don't know if you as well. Uh, like, maybe, like, usually, like, maybe the last tick or two of the, the intermissions, let's say, uh, would uh, just kill one or two players randomly. Uh, I don't know. we did, we did when it was the first week. So when we were getting, uh, eight stacks of the damage tick in the intermission, we sometimes would lose someone on seven or eight, but when we got the reset of gear, you never saw anything past a seventh tick. Uh, so mm -hmm. that like just made it super easy usually, but yeah, the, uh, I think that was how it was in, uh, initially. My, my question is, I guess it's weird when talking about difficulty curve because we want bosses like this, but I always wonder if this is Blizzard's ideal thing. Because like when I think of this boss, Blizzard is going to have to like do the Holandris 30 second bomb nerf, but just to Tindril in some way, right? Like I, I don't know how many people want to fight versions of bosses like these, but I guess they do live in a world where you can make these bosses for us and then, and then nerf them afterwards. Yeah, I mean that's a big discussion, right? I I do think what they did in this raid, to me, this is the perfect uh, thing. Um because I I get the whole idea of like, well, Sepulcher was way too hard, but I think there the problem was also that way too early it got too hard. Um so it wasn't just Rigelon and Jailer. It was also Anduin, like Lords of Dread was no joke, like we killed him in Enrage, deep into Enrage. There was Halondrus, obviously. Like there's a lot of bosses for people to feel like, hey, what's going on here? Uh, but I think if you just make the last couple of bosses like quite hard, you get the best of both worlds. And yeah, I mean, you. I don't think fundamentally there's something wrong in terms of the uh you know nerfing the the bosses after afterwards um but yeah i mean that's a, a huge discussion i guess i don't know i i think this time they, they did it as good as i've ever seen them do it let's put it like this uh while still having bosses that take uh, like how, how many pulls like 300 400 pulls um yeah yeah so before we move on to fire act on tindril i wasn't paying full attention to this because we were progressing fire act at the time but like you guys stayed up insanely late on Tendril, right? Like like very very. I don't know how when, what time you woke up actually, but like it seemed like you guys stayed up a long time to kill that. Was there a lot of discussion of like when you go to bed, or like in in hindsight would you have done that differently? Do you think like to me a boss like Tendril, I feel like you guys did kill it that night, but I feel like you could have slept three hours earlier and killed it faster in the morning and which one of those two things is better and then it brings up the question again of like how much do you value killing a boss before you go to sleep for morale reasons like we killed the boss on our day after reset did you guys feel like like mentally to keep up you had to do that too like was that part of it like explain that thought process yeah Maris how I did mean, you feel sleep <laughs> is an illusion that's I stand by this and uh, I do think it was good that we killed it in the end if he had not killed it I guess it wouldn't have been that good but uh, we did, so uh, I guess I was right once again, right, Mers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can say, I mean, I didn't say, I, I was just dying. I was getting ill. I was uh, sitting there. I was just, I couldn't even read it anymore. I was like, holy shit, get me out of here. But I was still playing. It was all okay. Um, but I think it was a big morale boost to kill the boss. Um, same same day as you guys, and it was good to fire rock and Okay, so that's, so you guys do think sleep, about that. Like, that matters. Sleep with it, yeah. Like, like if you I mean, I think it... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no man, you're good. Yeah, yeah. I think it was kind of the same with Broodkeeper in uh, in yeah. Vault, oh, uh, where yeah, we yeah. stayed up and and pushed as well to kill like 
right after you, I think it was, like maybe an hour or two, I'm not even sure anymore. But it was kind of the same, we killed it, we extended a little bit, but it felt really good to just go to bed and be like, holy fuck, we are basically on the same boss as you guys now, we caught up the time and everything is nice and now we're just progressing the same boss at the same time, kind of. That was, uh, I think it's a big morale boost for sure. It did, it, we did push a thing until like, what was it, 1 or 2 a.m. on that day? Oh, that's not the, that bad. The, the Firag push was 4 a.m. Oh, uh, in yeah, comparison, yeah. yeah? Okay. Just to put it in. Uh, so let me move but, it. But we had started at 5 a.m., right, Roger? On that day? Yeah, we started uh, at 5 a.m. on Tindral Day. So yeah. Tindral Day was long. So Tindral was 5 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Yes. See, that's, to 2 see, that's to just Tindral fucking... Day. I just think that's insane. Like, that's actually insane. Like I know, I, like, like do, do you guys all three agree with that? Like, yeah, like is this is this is this a scribe diff or do you actually think that like you have the same chance of killing Tindril in five pulls when you are twenty hours into a raid versus okay. when you just woke yeah. up? Like I I just think let it's say, crazy. Yeah, let me say, <laughs> I like similar to how let's say without the, <laughs> okay similar to how off you were with how many tries Tindril would uh, take to kill before the race yeah i was very off in terms of when we would kill that boss because i thought <laughs> we were gonna kill it before dinner okay yeah um which was around uh, we, we usually have dinner at six so i vastly thought we, like uh, like i underestimated how many pulls we would need for this boss and i think i don't know this is something definitely to look into why once because the strats were kind of done it was just some minor fine tunings right like very very minor so in terms of any pull could be the kill i think we had that right before dinner so in my mind there was no chance that this boss survives the day um okay that makes sense i don't i, I don't know if everyone felt the same i do think um we had like really good pulls ar around dinner so i don't know yeah. it just took us so long debuff. Oh. Yeah, you, we just get into a streak with uh, one seed popping all, uh, all the time, and it just brings the mood down in general, right? Like, there's nothing more tilting than uh, one seed uh, going off. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Definitely no, actually... something to look why we struggled so much, because we shouldn't have on that no, boss. Roger, I, I told you, I, I'm pretty sure this is my gut feeling and how it felt playing the boss was that we had a really close attempt towards dinner, and we were, like, killing it. And I think then people started to play a, a very slightly different on the seeds because it, my melee soak, like where I was saying the boss and I was just backpedaling into a seed, disappeared a lot of pulls. And I was oh, like, guys, man. something is sus here, yeah? Dude. Like someone is taking different seeds than they were taking the previous 200 pulls. And then we were wiping to seeds quite more often. And I was yeah. like, hmm. Something is something feels very sus, guys. My seed is getting stolen a lot. Dude, yeah. that is, that is, is that, a boss. Uh, yeah. That is a boss where if someone makes a change that isn't discussed, it can just absolutely throw off everything. Like you, you that is a boss where you cannot change anything you are doing about seed soaking at all unless like it is discussed or else you just start wiping insane. If one person starts going to a different spot or even soaks a slightly closer seed in the same spot, you can just chain wipe for 30 pulls. I do, I do yeah, I, I do think this is a good point though i am wondering what you think on this max actually when you get a good pull like a close pull and then your the raid can feel like okay we can kill this boss now uh any pull do you notice at all like people not necessarily going full crazy like because that, that would be ridiculous but just slightly playing a bit more greedy or a bit more min maxi and then yeah that yeah. leading into wipes of i think course. that might have been a severe case of that with us or it combined with some unluck because you need like i think both the last bosses needed a bit of luck to get a good pull just you, you just yeah. sometimes got unlucky i mean what can you do right like the seeds might have been messed up one try or fire beam caught someone while flying and towards the end um so yeah, I don't know. I, I think that might have been a case with us. So yeah. I think this happens in a lot of guilds at all skill levels. But what can happen on bosses, especially RNG type bosses like Tindril and Firak, is very early on in progression, you can have a very low pull. And you can trick yourself into thinking that that's the point of progression you're at. 
when in reality what got you that pull is like insane rng like for example what could happen the first or second time you get into p3 fire act no one with a seed gets a blaze at all for like the first three sets of uh or like the first mm -hmm. three like seed placements and then like now everyone's mind okay we're progressing from 10 percent to zero now but in reality they're still progressing from 30 to 10 percent they just got an insanely lucky try where none of the things that can wipe you actually happened and then now you're focusing on optimization and less about like good strategic learning and then now you're just feeding for three hours because you think you're farther in the fight than you actually are i think that happens a lot it happened to us this raid and i it happens a lot with other guilds too where then they get like tilted and then they're mad that they're like in quotes regressing but they just tricked themselves into thinking that they progressed farther than they did oh but then mm. it's time to change bloodlust immediately when you have 10 percent pull that's a topic for scrub mm. <laughs> well so that was something okay so that boss in particular i think there's a few things that are really interesting so we were in p3 and we were lusting p2 to see p3 more often and then we got to a point where we were both awake and both doing that so we think okay the best thing to do is to kill this boss you're going to lust in p3 you could have actually killed it with Lusting in P2. The boss's damage check wasn't actually that hard. But although I think there's a lot of value in killing it before you see those extra last blaze sets, right? Because you just did just mm -hmm. less wipe conditions. But we we're like, okay, you're Lusting P3. So what better time to learn P3 Lust and obviously regress in P2 a little bit, getting your damage cooldown timings right, than while you guys are doing deep P3 pulls, isn't this the best time for us to like learn p2 have you guys learn p3 as much as you can for us and then like we have the p3 lust online sooner because like the way it played out was we ended up not getting a lower pull while you guys were still awake i think we got that six percent wipe right after you went to bed but it's because the time we spent while you were up was like progressing something that you guys were going to have to do eventually and then i think when you guys woke up you guys spent that entire time learning p2 lust uh and then we woke up and we were basically just at the same point I think we were like a few percent lower or something. So like you guys just chose to learn the P2 lust later, but by doing that, you like gave us a lot of info by allowing us to do it first because that's not something you can copy really. That's like the thing you need to work on yourself. I mean, yeah, I have my opinions on lust. Uh, I guess I can say. Um, I really, really like the consistent getting to the progress point over uh defeating the progress point um and uh that's why I, I i i think it feels horrible when you take away the p1 loss or the p2 loss later to get like one good pull late a lot, lot longer down the line but you will wipe to intermission because you like damage now because you had to, to pop two minutes again p1 you will wipe in p1 because you will play the last set of cleavers you'll, uh, uh, with the P2 to P3 uh, swap also, you will wipe at the Colossus or the Colossi uh, multiple times. It will just feel so bad, and you will lose a lot of progress pulls that you would have had getting there. Like we were in P2, I think that's the last you were referring to here, swapping from P1 to P2, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we were getting to P2, we were dying to the first blazes, like sniping ads, not being able to grip or CC properly, but people still wanted to swap the lust there. Like, what's the fucking point? Well, no, that know? one that one makes sense. I think lusting P1, we lusted P1 for a long time while we were in P2 for that yeah. exact reason. I think the thing that I'm more interested in is the P2 to P3 lust swap. And I, I know I know Mira's, I think, well, like Mira's, what, what is your opinion on that? Because I, I think that was weird. Because like, I understand the reason for continuing to see P3, and I understand you're going to move Lust to P3 at some point. What I didn't get is why you stayed up and didn't move Lust. Like, in the way I would do it, <laughs> the way the way that I would do it oh. is yeah. Yeah. if you're going to move Lust to P3 and go for a kill, you sleep at normal time, you wake up, mm. you go for the kill tomorrow with Lust, or you, like, learn it for a little bit and then go to bed and think about it. But, like, if you're staying up that late, it implies you're trying to kill it. So did you guys think you were going to kill it with Lust in P2? Because you can, right? Like, that is, it is killable that way. But, like, was that the plan when you stayed up? Or was were you staying no. up that late just to see more progression? I mean, it, it, it was not the plan. The plan is to get to the point where we would swap the Lust at, like, around 2 a.m. And then kill it at, like, 4 to 5 a.m. or something like that. Oh, okay. 
uh, but uh, we didn't get to that point because we were consistently, even if we defeat P2, we were wiping at P3 very early to just learning the phase. It was the case of uh, we had a good pull, we thought we were at the you know later progress point, and uh, were a bit foolish into thinking we might have a you know. Uh, we, we might be able to do that more consistently the 10 percent wipes and then i think i think we had a 10 percent wipe actually and then we were thinking well you can cut four percent away just by swapping the last properly and then you just have to play longer and defeat the boss um but that was obviously a bit uh too optimistic thinking yeah what was the yeah i can i can i can say in terms of why we pushed that late Okay, the the logic. I mean, why I thought it was the correct call, at least. Uh, it turns out that we did not play good. Uh, so sleep, I don't think was as much an illusion that night. But I don't know why. <laughs> I, I think it played a bit too much of a factor uh, compared to what I thought it would personally. Uh, but uh, in terms of staying up late that night, I was under the impression that if we go to bed you guys are probably going to kill it, right? Um, so the idea was, in my head at least, if we play, like, considering all of the scenarios, if we kill it tonight, then we win, right? Like, it's, uh, or, I mean, we were pulling at the same time, so it's it's at least we're both pulling, so it's uh, mm. whoever gets the kill. If we go to bed early and you guys kill it, then it's out of our power, we just, you know, it's over. However, if we push later into the night, we're essentially aligning a bit more our playtime with your playtime, so you don't have that situation where the boss dies when you're asleep, or you you shorten that time frame, let's say. Yeah. Um, so that was the logic of like, well, if we push, if we don't kill it, at least we've pushed, and then if they haven't killed it either, then they will go to bed as well soon after us, and then we will uh, uh, wake up, you know, I don't know if I explain it good, but uh, do you get, get what I mean, right? Like trying to basically align the play times so that at the very least we're both playing and we, we have a fighting chance no matter what, and we are not going to wake up to a kill. Yeah, I mean, I think you all doing that made our decision easier. Like, I th I think if you guys didn't stay up, we would have probably stayed up until we killed it that night. Um, but like knowing that you guys were sleeping so far into the day, it made sense to end our raid at our raid time and just like go hard at it tomorrow. Uh, and like I think that ended up making sense because like we knew you guys, we it was possible that you guys killed it when we went to bed. Um, just because this is a boss where I think Method literally did kill it from 8% to zero. Like I think either of our guilds could have done that. Like this boss could have mm -hmm. died the previous day, it could have died at the beginning of that day, and it could have not died. <laughs> like, like that. This is just yeah. a fucking weird boss. That but like, is true. Yeah. Like, it's just a really, really weird fight. So, like, going to bed is like really because, like, most fights you progress all the way to zero, you keep getting better and better. This fight has way too much RNG and like way too many exponential mm -hmm. wipe conditions near the end to where like you could actually just one shot it from a certain level or wipe a lot. And so, like, going to sleep was scary. Like, you know, we definitely had to go to sleep with the idea that you might kill before we wake up, but we knew you had to progress not lusting p2 and i thought that would take a few hours and it did so like that gave us enough time to wake up with us still having a lower pull and like we had some pretty good pulls right away and then yeah yeah that last day man i i know i messaged you this roger <laughs> i don't know if i've ever felt anything like that that was like i don't like we were playing really well and we were really motivated like we weren't scared or nervous or worried we were playing well but like I felt like if I were to drink any caffeine, my heart would have exploded. Like, I, my heart was beating at, like, probably, like, 150 beats per minute for, like, eight hours. Like, it, it yeah. was, it, I was, I've never experienced anything I like mean, that in my life. It, it, it was crazy day. It was to play. I mean, I don't think we were also, like, scared or, like, anything. It was just we were normally playing, and so many things just happened that we were like, what, what is going on? I think we had, like, three wipes back to back where we had unlucky seed explosions, and we just... Holy moly, just go again, I guess. <laughs> I was, uh, was some crazy, crazy day. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I, I will say just real quick, first of all, 
I have never, yeah, I don't think there's ever been a boss where we get a 10% pool and then it takes us how many? 15, maybe 20 hours of raiding after that to finish the, the job. I think this was like a first for me. I thought we we're going to kill it way faster than it ended yeah, up we being. Did too. And, and the 10 percent pull that we had uh, like the day before, that was without bloodlust. And I think it was before the nerf, if I'm not mistaken. So in my head, I was calculating, OK, 10 percent, remove about 4 percent because of bloodlust, remove another 2 percent, maybe three. I don't know. Let's say that was basically like a 5 percent pull uh, at least if we shifted bloodlust and then min maxing a bit the intermissions as well like could have been like a four percent wipe so in my head i'm thinking okay this boss is gonna die and then it took i, I didn't calculate but it must have been at least 15 hours of pulls more to to actually get the kill so that was that was the first um very crazy um in terms of that last day though i swear being on the outside was I, I think I lost uh, like 10 years of my life, like I told you, yeah, it was, it was crazy. The, 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 I, it wasn't necessarily a mistake, I think, because on the outside, you kind of, I kind of had to also watch what you guys were doing in case you were doing something uh, a bit different and maybe it was good and we can uh, make some small adjustment here and there. I don't think any, uh, any big adjustments at that point were going to happen, but just watching those pulls, man, oh my God. Like that, that was the most nerve wracking thing I've ever felt in uh, at least World of Warcraft. I felt like either of our guilds could have killed it for like basically that entire day once we woke up. And then, yeah. and I think when you guys killed it, we had the exact same amount of sub 5% tries. And then also when you're watching that boss, it seems like every pull, this is an underrated part of the fire rack of ring experience. Every pull seems like it's going to be a kill, right? Because mm. you usually have res uh -huh. in the last phase. You usually are watching someone with everyone alive with the boss's health like rocketing down from from like 5%. And then it's just like, all right, is the boss going to die? Or is the entire raid going to instantly die before that point? It's not like you're watching someone limp to the finish line or whatever. Or you yeah. like, it's just like, it's just like you could just fucking blink and it's over. And, and that is, uh, that was like, so like we would watch pull or I would watch pulls from you all. Although I did that very briefly, it was like mainly over lunch. I I I don't do even outside the raid. I don't do what you're doing. I, that would that would like psych me the fuck out. I think, but I like just I'm just assuming you guys are wiping low at the same time, and that is exactly what was happening. And then like as as you're saying, you're watching us with everyone alive at five percent, and you're just like, oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Dude. Exactly. Yeah. And then I, and I then, told Roger as well, I couldn't do what you're doing. Like this is just pain. Yeah. It's yeah, it's pain. If well, you have a good uh, pull. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't watch a single progress, or like a single pull of you ever. And then in the lunch break or something was, or when we took a quick break, someone was like, holy fuck, they wiped on one point six, and we were on one point seven. I was like. Holy moly, yeah. <laughs> not, not looking good. Yeah, dude, we, dude, the 1.7 <laughs> was actually a really bad pull. Like, our damage was, like, I think 2%. The boss was 2% higher going into the last phase than it was on a good pull. And we had, like, a 5%. One of our 5 percenters, we had the... It was, like, our best P3 pull ever, and we pushed at 45.7, I think. And we wiped to something really stupid. I don't remember what it is. But I'm pretty sure it was someone with a seed being hit by a bad firestorm placement. Like, they actually just got hit by the tornado with their seed. And, like, that oh. was, like, I'm pretty sure the boss would have died as the first blazes were happening in that phase. Like, it was getting absolutely shit on. Um, and that was the one that Turbo feels bad. But, yeah. Do you remember the thing I said to you, Roger? The last thing I said to you before you left after that uh, dinner when you came to our facility? Uh, that uh, you hope that uh, either we... Or you uh, or destroy the tier? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I like, said. Yeah. yeah. I hope we destroy you guys, or I hope, or I hope we either demolish you or get demolished because, like the yeah. the feeling of like any singular thing could have gone different, especially too because this is a race where like, and I mean I want to hear your all's opinion on this, but like obviously this release difference shit is bullshit for everybody, but. No matter how much you want to argue that mattered in a normal race, it could not possibly matter less than how it mattered to this raid, right? It's deep into the second reset, nowhere near another week. Uh, there was a decent amount of, like, bugs and stuff that we encountered. 
Like, it th was just like a straight up fucking like brawl at the end of this race, which is like pretty rare that we actually get that when things are normally happening around the reset timer. And that was, I don't know, just that, that last day made me, uh, 10 years of your life is probably an understatement. <laughs> yeah, that I, I remember literally this was the first time that I could feel myself, like my heart, how stressed I was. And then when I saw, let's say you guys uh, having a seed explosion and wiping, I could literally feel I can breathe again. Yeah, like this was, oh my God. I, I don't know if, uh, I, I've never felt this with any other boss. I guess it's because of the nature of this fight that you just have either insta wipes or, you know, you keep uh, blasting the boss. So there's no in between really of like slowly wiping. And that that played a lot of extra role in the the stress level of like, I mean it's sad to say yeah, but you I, I, when you're sitting there and you're hoping like come on someone explode man someone <laughs> explode dude, <laughs> and, then, and then when it goes off you're like oh dude oh my god oh this uh, this is too much yeah wait this were you much. the only I, person I wish... doing that. I don't know if others were doing, but the thing is, like, at some point, my job was kind of done. Like, uh, at least the first couple of phases, like, there's nothing really for me to to do. In the last phase, I was always uh, watching us and trying to note if there's something to call and whatnot. But generally, not uh, not too much to do, let's say. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if others were doing it. Maybe some other outside people uh, were doing it, but I wish... I swear, I wish I was playing, so I didn't do this. This was not good for uh, uh, the the mental state. But also playing the boss was like crazy. You enter the last phase, and it's a uh, it's like the full battlefield starting for four minutes. You're just sitting there, and you're like protecting your seed, not trying to hit another seed. You're praying that no one gets hit by a firestorm randomly, or like the seed gets hit. I I don't know, dude. Firestorm it, was. It was much more of a wipe condition than I thought. Like, Firestorms, if they were not really, really good, it made that phase infinitely harder. Well, also the random um, the random fire puddles that spawned wiped us, like, quite a few times, actually, in the very beginning of the phase. It was very sad. Yeah, did you figure out any pattern in terms of, like, exactly how those spawn? Like, uh, no. Cause... I want to ask yeah. you this question, though, because I saw what you guys did for Firestorm was you just left your seed there. And you just yeah. kind of hoped that fire didn't hit it. And if it did, you just wiped. And that was something that we never wanted to have happen. So we actually changed our strat to swap at the firestorms rather than at the beginning of the phases. So mm. the firestorm puddle never was a wipe condition. Did you only swap once every cycle? Uh, so for our range, so we started noticing that uh, we were having some seed problems. So we started just putting more and more seeds on players that we felt like had a much better chance of not blowing them up for a few reasons. And one of them being Firestorm. So like for a mage, for example, if they get Firestorm with their seed, they place their seed, they can blink out their Firestorm and then alter back onto their seed before the fire can hit it. So like that just removes that wipe condition. Same thing with Warlock ports. So for our uh, mage, for Warlock and mage, uh, they did like a little bit of a good seed, bad seed swap, and then fired up, held it to the end of the fight, and then took a soul stone and picked it up again. So he held a corrupted seed for like a minute and a half or something. Or oh, maybe. interesting. Um, and then THD did something similar. Uh, so we had them having it just the full time and took it away from other people. And then our melee did a three person rotation because we were having a lot of, if healers got firestorm, we were wiping to like yes. corrupted seed people yes. dying. Uh, so what we did was we had, we had two very, very good enhanced players and they weren't holding the seeds at all. So what we did was we added a enhanced shaman to our rogue group and added an enhanced shaman to our demon hunter group. They never wiped us with the seed one time each, which was great. We did this in like probably the last 10 P3 pulls and they did a three-way swap. So the, basically between the three people, they would swap at the beginning of the phase and they would swap on firestorm, eliminating the firestorm wipes and also spreading out the dots amongst those three, and then they stop dying forever. Yeah, what's up with enhancers and vaping it, dude? We also yeah, have the enhancers vaping. Yeah, they didn't uh, do anything. They, they were they, like... Like, I never heard the clicks they're, they're say just a so word squishy. in this entire progress on that fight, yeah? He was just like, yeah, I do boss damage. That's it. That's my job here. 
Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> nah, but that's uh, that's quite interesting because we didn't do any of that. We had just uh, two people swap. We didn't want um, to. The seat. And uh, but but we had uh, different swap times, right? So we we didn't have a person do a full forty six seconds. I think it was the rotation. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so we we had different timings for people to swap uh, in between. So they would only reach like. Uh, about 15 to 20 stacks, not higher than that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that was a bit of a weaker yeah, we, uh, yeah, angle. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, so basically we came to the, we both came to the same conclusion, which is having players hold it for a whole phase and going to 40 stacks or whatever, that is like way too much damage and causing too many deaths. Mm -hmm. And the two solutions were swapping on the debuff timer and finding different rotations with your partner or just adding a third person. I, I kind of like the swapping of different timers because, like, having more people have to learn seeds in general uh, sounds bad. In, like, just as a strat-related thing, just as a basic concept. Uh, but our two enhanced players specifically are, like, if you were to pick anyone in our raid and class didn't matter on, like, who was going to hold the seeds and not blow it up, our two enhanced players would be at the very top of the list. But we didn't have them doing it because enhance is so easy to die. So, like... Why would you put a corrupted seed dot on a class that is likely to die, kind of thing? So, well, like, the, yeah. the only argument there, because this was something we were discussing, is ank, right? So they can just die and then just ank and. Yeah, we, we utilize that, yeah. yeah. So, for the last bit of the fight, the demon hunters and rogues uh, went back into the raid with very little stacks. The demon, then, if the shamans had ank up, they would take it until ank, uh, use the toxic health pot, and then pick it up again. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the toxic health pot. Oh, oh, that's interesting as well because you guys, you guys were different on this on which health pot was uh, like generally the best, right? Because liquid, you guys were using the toxic one a lot, and uh, Echo, you oh. were mostly using the the Dreamwalker, right? Oh no, you you don't understand. Yeah, we had Ken gaslit the whole team. He said on Tidral, guys, like he was ill, right? Came back and was like, guys, why why are we using this shitty potion? And everyone swapped back to the uh, to the Corrupted potion or whatever. And then like halfway through the day, it's like people dying to the corrupted potion. And he's like, oh guys, it was biggest bait ever. I swapped after five pulls back to the <laughs> to the Dreamwalker potion. Oh my god. And everyone was still using the other one. And then we were split again on the team. And the day before, when Ken was not there, we did like a team decision. We're like, guys, we stop using the corrupted potion now. And we just uh, went for the Dreamwalker potion. I think in a if you were a perfect player. And you could have two health pot binds, and in the split decision, in the split second decision that it takes to choose to use a health potion, I think there are a variety of mechanics that make sense for each. Like, there are certainly mechanics where the toxic health pot is better, and most mechanics, I think the other one is better. I think we use toxic on Fire Axe specifically because P1 consistency. So, like, in P1, you would get... If you got like cleaved by an extra blaze or a frontal with your personal up and the boss was about to cast wildfire, you would die if you regular health potted. Like it just hit hard enough that you would die with it. So they toxic that and that kept a lot of deaths from happening because like you weren't worried about the dot for the rest of P1 uh, after the like last wildfire cast. At least we weren't. Uh, so that's why they used it there. I, I think we used a mix of them. I don't think it was through both. I just think there's scenarios where Toxic is good and the other one is good. Did you guys mainly just use the other one, though? Nah, nah we used a mix as well. Some people still used the Toxic one, even though we said not to use it. And other people were just dream only. And then they died to having the dream only. And they were like, fuck this shit. I go back to the cor Corrupted. And they died like 20 pulls later to the Corrupted. And I don't know. There, I think there was a big... Uh, big war going on in the potion department who's using what I, i'm not even sure what people use in the end um did you guys ever consider doing a 10 head uh seed stack strategy in the last phase or were you fully committed to spreading it out and gaming it from the beginning uh you mean just everyone with a seed being on top of each other and just moving out with blazes or I'm talking every single person in the raid stacked on top of each other. And yeah. if you get blaze, you drop your seed and move out. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what's funny about this? I think this was a strat. I mean, I don't know if we strongly considered it, but we actually had this strat suggested at least um, from, uh, I think it was Alex. 
like the caster yeah yeah i think so uh, i think it was alex yeah so alex was like yo guys why don't you just stack up and move as a unit and then you just move out of the place or, i don't know i mean I, I think he suggested it um uh, maybe it was someone else but uh I don't know. It seemed like way too risky to lose progression time to try a completely different strategy. And also, how do you regulate who picks up the seed? Do you, you just YOLO the stacks basically at that point? Or you have, you need to have two groups or something? It did not seem worth to be like, if you guys were the first ones to try it and we saw, okay, this is working, then we could have swapped. Yeah, but being the first team to ch completely change your strategy seemed like a very bad idea. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, uh... yeah. I w I feel the exact same way as you. We 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 gave it like I think one try in the last phase, but we didn't do it with the whole raid. We just did it with the seed people, so pe new people weren't learning extra action button stuff. Uh, and they didn't like it, but it was only well, it might have just been bad anyway. But they didn't like it because they were already like. 15 pulls deep into doing seeds natty right so like mm. it's it's unintuitive to do it as well it's one of those things where it would have been very interesting to see one of our guilds completely abandon the idea of doing it natty committing to this unintuitive blaze stack thing and it probably would have met with immediate regression but i could see a world where the team that committed to that and actually gets good at it just one shots the last phase as soon as they're good at it like instantly it instantly mm. dies right because it just repeats and healing is easy because everyone's pixel stacked and the only people who are at risk of dying is the two people moving out in each direction so evade made a weak order for this and evade is the person who kind of strategized it for us uh and he figured out the way that blazes spawn so looking at the at the tree they spawn in the exact same angles every single time and you, he figured out a way where, like, you could attach a sound to the multiple different spell IDs for the different uh, blaze sections that spawn in the different angles. And, like, this, you could attach a, like, private aura, weak aura to, you don't have to press a macro or anything, but it would just tell you to go up or go to the right or go to the left or go down. Hey. And you uh -huh. and you could just hear up and then you have two and a half seconds to press your extra action button if you have it and then just go forward with like the horizontal beams you would go to the right with the vertical beams and then none of them would ever touch the group but there's there's more issues with this which is what happens when two people with a seed get blaze they both drop their seed and then move forward do they pick up the other person's seed as they're moving mm. out true that's yeah, like i think we yeah. had this happen uh once that Servo, or like with Mike and Servo. Yeah, and, we had it once. And, yeah. yeah, and and Mike dropped the seed, went out with Firestorm, then Servo drop, had got Blaze, walked over to Mike's seat to drop his close to Mike's one and picked up Mike's one while walking past, basically, and dropping his own, and then he blew up. I think that was there's the a, There's scenario. also a yeah. cooldown. You cannot drop... Yeah, there is like a, a one-second cooldown, I think, so you cannot instantly drop the seed after you pick it up, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, he literally, yeah, got it. like it was, yeah. What you're saying, I think, would have hap would happen for sure. Like just randomly, would have been. Uh, yeah. So the that case. that was the know. main yeah. thing that did that uh, stopped us from doing this because it did seem like mm. something that would completely trivialize the last phase. But we thought that that could happen and that would make it bad, and that gaming ended up being the the right way to do it. How did you all feel I mean, about the oh. private auras in general on that boss? I don't know. I, th I think. I think. You go ahead, I Roger. You guys. Yeah, I think <laughs> the, it's a little bit like uh, an attempt by Blizzard, but I don't see it. I don't. I don't see it working out as they would have hoped it would have, and I don't see necessarily a solution apart from just ripping the whole thing. You know, like. I, I don't know. I think it's a little bit of a failed project, if you ask me. But at the same time, I also hate uh, going to super weak aura mode and uh, everything is uh, needs a... You need like a whole coding squad just to fight the bosses. I don't know what's the solution, honestly. I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of an unsolvable uh, situation, I, I, I'm afraid. The, actually, the one thing I will say that could... 
Oh, Scri- Scribe is going. He, he said he was out of here. Yeah. Oh, Scribe oh. is going to bed, guys. Right. Even oh, yeah. though sleep is an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm uh, not so sure about this one. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, he said he wasn't sure how long he's gonna be able to stay. I th- this was two hours earlier just for him. I think he's got like dad <laughs> stuff, but yeah. The uh, shout out to him for being here. But I yeah, private um, wars. Yeah. What, what, what I wanted to say is that what the one thing I could see working is if they essentially make the weak aura for you so then it's standardized what i mean by this is if you get let's say the cleavers right that's like a um uh, uh it was private the, uh, the the cleavers in p1 if then you get a mark over your head of like one two and three and that's it do you know what i mean or yeah. like this is just an example well, like, and then I mean, you, you don't can say it roger it, you, what? Like Final Fantasy, yeah. Like Final Fantasy a little <laughs> bit, yeah. <laughs> like something, or like an icon. Like imagine the icon of the private aura is just something that indicates, that kind of makes some sense of how you, you're going to deal with this mechanic without requiring um, the some macro or whatever to deal with this. Um, it's... Uh, I think that's the way maybe that it would be properly accepted by the community but i don't know if they're willing to do that yeah but you you can't you can't just give us like think of the orbs in in on smolderon like yes we can play it you can have the person calling and all that but what about the like i'm thinking of a general population here as well right uh we can find workarounds of dealing with these mechanics even if they removed all add-ons let's say we'll find a way but then they would have to make the mechanics a lot simpler but Imagine if on Smolderon, oh, this guy, he got the bomb and he has like a number one on his icon. So you don't need anything else then, right? Like you just uh, essentially make reasonable weak auras provided to you by Blizzard. And then you don't have to stress out of like, oh, we need to have a macro and a prior list and this and that. It's just like, it, I don't think it has solved anything so far. Let's put it like this. No. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think, well, okay, I think here's why they don't do the numbers on the head. And I also think this is something they really care about. I think you have to look at any success that they have found with private auras. So look at Firestorm in P1, right? Just the four circles. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have private auras on that, it's a little too annoying to press a macro. I'm assuming you guys did not macro the Firestorms. No. Uh, no, no, no. if, if that was not a private aura, would you have a weak aura that tells you which spot in the line of four to go to? The answer is almost certainly yes for consistency. Not a huge deal, but I bet you would do it. Same thing with the mythic. Did you guys have a macro weak aura for the mythic three soak thing? No. Okay. We did not either. Would you have an, would you have a very, I mean for sure. yeah, yeah. Would you have a very intricate uh, soak assignment and backup system to make sure there was enough people in every single soak and assign people who get it left, right, or yeah. middle. Yes. 100% oh, awesome. <laughs> yes. So what Blizzard wants is they want you to get mechanics like that and they want you to YOLO it like we did. And that is why private auras exist. And in my opinion, a success case of it, which is they do save you from yourselves on some mechanics by doing that. But the issue is, those are the positives. But those positives do not even remotely outweigh the negatives of any time a mechanic is hard enough. So the cages in P2 of Firak, the... Uh, intermission. The intermission. The first intermission. The first yeah. intermission. Anytime something is hard enough, you will always do a weak aura to make it more consistent. Yeah. And now private auras just make those weak auras more annoying to create, interact with, and deal with in general and that problem i don't know is solvable unless they just make mechanics that don't require weak auras but then rating is boring because the mechanics are all too easy right like like for example if yep. the p1 fire rack mythic soaks were harder if they hit way harder and if you had someone miss a soak you died we would have macroed it right like you would have yep. had to but you didn't because yep. it was easy enough so I, I don't know i don't know how they deal with it i don't know i don't I mean, know either I'm... I mean, I'm fully on your case, yeah, that they should just make easy mechanics, private auras, 
So it's just nice to handle even without a Vigar and you don't need to bother. But these crazy Vigaras, or like these crazy mechanics and you need to press a macro, it's... I was really tired of saying 400 times in, in, in a row and pull guys press the macro if you need to. Oh my god. Bro, fucking... I, I wanted to end it. <laughs> bro, imagine, imagine doing P2 cages on Fire Rack where you don't stack up two and two you spread them out oh one two three God. four oh, no. and then and then oh, you no, would dude. have to have without any kind of assignment the four red circles break out all four purple people with one second of reaction time literally no fucking shot that would you would have wiped that 500 times like yeah like yeah did what you, you mean? The, did you the did testing you, team did it yeah did Fine. you do anything for the cages actually themselves like or were you just not the two stacker uh we did okay so we had the red debuffs press a macro to get assigned to break them yeah. out which i think we both did we did not assign the the two and mm, three stackers yeah. intentionally we just if a triple happened it was okay uh we never had a quadruple one time in all of progression, we only ever had like triples sometimes. I'd say like maybe one in three pulls, there would be a triple. We also did twice the amount of uh, cages as you guys. We did two sets of cages every time yeah. instead of one. Yeah, I yeah. do want to get to that, but just as to say before, man, we were prepared to, with like having two different macros. One for the, if you get the cage and one if you get the other one, right? Like the what's it called erupt, fiery eruption what? and thinking yeah. When I saw that you guys did the double stacker and that it's fine, oh my god, that was another sigh of relief. I was like, because I was so scared about that mechanic. I thought oh, no. we we're going to have to do four and four and it's going to be tragic. Spreading yeah. all four out would have, even with a weak aura, would have been insane, insanely hard. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so th that cages thing was pretty good. I also think, just in general, I think P2. I really like Firak. I guess I didn't actually ask you guys your opinion on this. What what was your all's opinion of Tendril as a boss, just in general? Like all things considered, like do you like the fight? Do you think it's great? Do you think it's one of the best? Do you think it is problematic? Like how do you guys feel about that fight? I think if you add one second to the seeds in P two, make it four instead of three, and if they made, um, and, and if they you actually reach ten rates, like I, I kind of like going back to the conversation, I do. I did not like that they slapped a 20% nerf that and basically just cut out the last minute of the fight. Um, but uh, overall, I would give that boss like a 9.5 out of 10. Like, I think it brought back uh, a lot of, let's say, good uh, memories where you just have to play really fucking good. And there is, it's like a constant um, dance around it, uh, like a little bit like okay big throwback here but like seeds crafter where it was like it wasn't oh these are the three mechanics or whatever five mechanics and this is how we deal with each one of them no you had to have like a plan throughout the entire phase of how you move and each time the mechanics came it was a little bit different and it was uh i don't know it was a very it brought back uh memories of previous uh, expansions let's say and bosses that i uh, really enjoyed so yeah very nice but yeah, the, the seeds in P2, man, I think a little bit too annoying. The three seconds. Oh my God. I, 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 can, I can say I do agree with most of the part. I think though the boss was not, it was fun to play, but uh, after some time it became uh, not so fun anymore. I think one of the main issues was the, how's it called? The seeds, of course, were very, very sad when you saw one go off and you couldn't do anything against it, right? But the other thing was as well, the constant stress when you, messed up one mechanic it was kind of very uh, spir like hard spiral out of control that something is not going right anymore and you're like holy moly what, what is going on now like in phase one someone flies up late the roots die late everyone is full panic you're just legging it away from the beams you're barely making it to the spot then half the people die to the beam and you're just in full despair if uh, one thing doesn't go fully right i don't know um and i think the flying became really annoying after pull 300. I was really bored of flying alone on the left side. <laughs> I don't know. That was really boring. Everyone was just having so much fun. The whole Raiders were like, oh, I chase you. Oh no, this guy is faster. And I'm just full resident sleeper on the left side alone as a tank. I'm like, guys, haven't seen anyone in 400 pulls. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. a, I think that was a tank issue though. 
I think did I, have a couple of people that passionately hate the, the boss, by the way. I don't know if you had the same. Most people, I think, really liked it. But there were a couple of people that overall, like not just after pool 300, just overall just despised the boss. Oh, really? No. We... Kus, Kus was one of them, I think. He was like, bro, this boss sucks. <laughs> I think, I don't know if we have, I think, I think pretty much everyone in our guild was, a, I, I did not hear, I mean, I'm sure there's, we have a lot of players. I'm sure there's someone who isn't favorable, but when I asked, it was largely, largely positive, which uh, I think maybe Exile actually, maybe it's a rogue thing. I yeah. mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I think the boss was great, but it came like, I think the pull amount made it uh, not so nice anymore, I guess at one point. Yeah. Okay, and then what is Jarl's opinion on, before we continue down the, like, cages thing, like, what is your opinion on Firax quality of a boss? Like, mine is, I think P1 is good, but not great. Like, I think Sarkarath P1 is better than Firax P1. Um, I th But I think its P1 is good for, like, in the history of end bosses. I think the last phase of Firak is very unique and very cool. I, I think I'm a fan of the last phase of Firak. I have some issues with the RNG of it, but I think it's a good phase. Bro, I think P2 is a very, very, very mid boss phase. I think they cooked too long on P2. I, I, I don't, it's like, it's, it just directly repeats itself twice. Like it couldn't be any more interesting than that. And then I don't know, like, I feel like Private Aura has kind of just like dominated the phase. And healing ads, you know, like no no uh, boss frames for healing ads, and you have to like target. I don't know. I just I don't think that phase is very good at all. Yeah, I mean, I can say from the ga the gameplay POV at least from my side, I do agree. Phase two was it was better than Sakuref, I think. Sakuref oh, was Sakuref P two is even worse. Yeah, like like it repeated itself even more. It was even worse. But uh, in in that phase, it was really just also a a constant thing. Something was happening, and you're like. I don't know, it was just uh, bad things happening. Like, it was also not fun mechanics the whole phase too. Like, knocking, going out, CCing, getting stunned, getting people out of stun, and, like, dodging the healing ads, healing the ads. Dude, <laughs> all the, the fucking... All, all mechanics were not fun, I think. Yeah. That was the main issue in phase two. If <laughs> you had the cages not break out a purple person and the ads died, they were just caged forever they just like the yeah. ad like when the ad when the purple ad died at least the cages should have gone away and then also the healer ads if you didn't if i think if one of the mobs was one percent low at a certain point in the phase the tree would die unless you life gripped or rescued in one mob to like give yourself energy early and i think that's oh, like yeah. ridiculously tight like uh, i i, I I'm, yeah I must say, I think that was from my POV. I didn't, I really did not understand or think that that was actually a design choice that you need to grip the ads to the tree. I was really surprised that you actually had to do it. I was like, yes, I'll be sure that this I is don't not like something, think you do. So, something wrong. So if you, if you have them all at exactly 100% health, I think it doesn't happen. But if you have one mob in the first like minute and a half of that phase at 99%, you wipe at that point. Unless you mark the wild, of course. Oh, it's 99. Yeah, I heard about yeah. the mark of the wild after. That was crazy, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so basically for people in chat who want to understand how it works, when the ads go to the, to the tree, they are literally healing the tree with the amount of health that they have. So... If you give them buffs that increase their healing in some way, like Mark of the Wild gives them versatility, right? So it increases their healing by 3%. They Those mobs would literally give the tree 3% more healing per mob. Uh, same thing with Red Aura. Same thing with, I think there was a few other weird use cases where you could do that for, like, what about stam buff? No, no, no. It, that doesn't increase. It, anything that increases the healing on your character. Uh... It, it made them heal the tree more. So that was something we figured out uh, pretty early that helped with P2 consistency, but you still had to grip. All it did was make it so that like random wipe didn't happen where a mob was at 99%. Yeah, that is crazy. I don't know. I think phase two was big, big disaster. So not nothing was fun, like I said. <laughs> another thing about P2, Roger, I think you were going to ask this about the cages. So we knew about the cages. We just didn't want to do the damage yeah. loss. So... I, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That, is, that that was okay. So we did clear, it. We we had it happen to us on stream before you guys went dark. 
Like we after because they made mm. the change because we kept complaining to them in the Discord. Like we would be killing the mobs, we would kill the red one just because we were lusting, right? So like you were doing a bunch of damage, and then we would have the purple people get caged and have no way to break them out. So Blizzard said they fixed it, and by doing that, we didn't know how they were going to fix it. I guess we they could have made the red thing still go off, but what they did is if the red one died, That's just what nothing they would did, happen. Though. Well, what they did was when the red one died, the purple wouldn't go off either, right? The, what yeah. we've, yeah. No, but, oh, 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 no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. So as, as I understand it, at least, so this was a find by Just Wait. Um, he found in the logs that the fire one was casting both the cages and the fires, um, like from the, from the get-go. I'm uh, not sure. I, that can't I, I be possible I don't think they, because we had we had two this is why it got fixed we had two wipes i can go back and find it uh i believe what happened is we had two wipes where we killed the burning when we started lusting at the beginning of p2 we killed the burning ad too fast and the purple ad still put out its cages except the red one did not give you any red debuffs to get rid of it so the four people were caged forever that happened to us two times we complained about it and then they made that change so i don't okay, know if they, I'm, I'm pretty sure Wait, wait, no, no, but, but I'm pretty sure you're wrong on this because we we have been Maybe. killing the the purple mob, uh, not the purple mob, the fire mob all the time, and there was always the purple mob, uh, the fire mob controlling both things every single time in the logs as well. Okay, wait, so just yeah. saying he cast both but applies shadow first, 0.5 seconds later. Okay, so what must have happened then is we killed the boss in that 0.5 second gap and it gave us the purples but not the reds then that could be yeah because yeah, it, cause it, it happened it happened to us yeah this is why it got changed because this happened to us on stream twice and then we complained they, about it and then that's why they did the fix the change as far as i understood it as well was that the shadow cages um did not like i think if the if the debuffs were out but they hadn't exploded yet um the cages would not happen but also the fires would not happen so I thought that the reason why they changed it to make the fire still go off was to make sure that if you had, let's say, maybe you had someone trapped from the first cages and you wanted to release them, that you don't uh, actually, you get the chance to do it even if you have killed the mob so that the fires always go off, but the shadow cages, if you kill the mob while the debuffs are out in those five seconds, that uh, they don't go off. I thought that was the change. I don't know, honestly, at this point, but... It was definitely... Oh, that was the change, yeah. The... Yeah. Wait, I think it, I might have it, it backwards. Was... I might have it backwards. So I'm looking at the Blizzard channel to see what I reported to them. Uh, and it happened at 1.40 p.m. for the first time for us that day and 3.43 for the second time. Because the first time I said how it happened and the second time I just said, this is a very unfortunate way to wipe. <laughs> and then the first time I described it, though, it is slightly different. So exactly what I said to them was, if the fire ad dies before the debuff goes off, it doesn't break the jails. So what was happening is it's putting out the purple and fire debuffs. So now uh, the eight people all have a purple and fire debuff on them. If the fire ad died before the red ones went off, they would do zero damage and not... They would still be on your character, but they wouldn't break the jails. That's what it was. Yeah, okay. that is correct. Yeah, and that got fixed after you reported it. Correct. Um, but, but we were surprised about that because we thought... You reported it that the fire guy is casting both things at the same time, and you got to change basically that the f they're casting the different things what they're supposed to do. But that was not the case. It was still the fire guy casting both things at the same time. So we just continued to kill the fire guy and skip the mechanic basically. Yeah, uh, I I must say I was definitely a bit, uh, let's say, confused why because I think you did it for some pulls that you were killing the fire guy um, to not get the second cages. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, but then we swapped. We didn't on, like it. You swapped it back, and I was like, "Man, why?" Like we were basically playing half the cages than you guys. Correct. And what was so? I mean, do you, do you I can tell you why. Proper thing, because it looked like uh, I guess maybe it, it looks like a little bit like the bloodlust thing for you, right? Like to us, it was like such an obvious thing. Like yo, you just kill it and you remove a white factor, basically. Yeah, exactly. So it is a. So we were still thinking about P3. So. When we were doing both, let's just say we do two back-to-back -back pulls, no lust, uh, on the first pull, except this is actually to make it more realistic. Let's say we do it for five pulls, where we burn the burning ad, and then we kill the purple ad after. Uh, using the exact same cooldowns, 
we were like just barely killing the purple at in time. And I think we wiped on it one time. Uh, we were not, our cages were pretty consistent at that point. Although it is a progression halter. Like we definitely wiped two second cages. Like sometimes, very rare though. But like that did cause wipes. Uh, then we did the exact same pull after five. And we just tried going back and even cleaving them. Because like the idea is it might even be a damage increase to uh, kill the thing early so the second jails don't even happen, right? That's eight people that don't have to mm. move and do things. That's what we thought initially. But then we just did it uh, two tests in a row where we were like, okay, let's just go back to doing the second jails and just blasting these two ads. And we were using the exact same cooldowns. And with two pulls of sample size, obviously it can be a little bit different because certain people getting jailed can matter more than others. Those ads were dying almost a full like eight to 10 seconds before their casts are going off. Mm. Like just a massive DPS difference. And what this allowed us to do was it's just like the value of two target cleave is just insane even with people getting jailed briefly so we basically just took the damage thing that allowed us to move i think like four two minutes off of the ads and put them onto the boss and that allowed us to phase the boss a little bit lower so we basically were taking a sacrifice in p2 uh on a little bit of uh jail progression to move more cds onto the boss and kill the boss faster in the last phase to not deal with the blazes i see <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's an interesting approach. I mean, different approaches. I guess uh, we we just valued the... Uh, no, I respect that. I mean, I was pushing for that, to be honest with you. I was like, guys, even if it's harder, like, you just straight up remove cage wipes, right? Um, yeah. But I think the, yeah, general, I mean, was... the general sentiment within the guild was like, and Bubba specifically, who was doing a lot of our damage optimization, was like, we can gain so much boss damage by by uh, mm -hmm. by doing this. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah, we did the exact opposite, the, I think. Yeah, we did the exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, we um, we also kind of saw that, I mean, of course, <clears throat> the last part of uh, phase four is the hardest one. So ideally, you just, you know, kill the boss in P2. Uh, but uh, you know, we we realized that Enrage is not going to be that big of an issue. Um, so we, yeah, I, I guess to us... Uh, we were like, yeah, let's just keep phase two as easy as possible uh, to just go into phase three more and more. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a fight uh, where being in P3 matters more. Like, it is an RNG phase, but it, that doesn't mean that being in that phase more doesn't lessen the chance of RNG. Like, for example, will all the people holding seeds at the end of the fight, uh, five pulls in versus 20 pulls in, be better at not blowing up the raid? Like, absolutely, yes. It's just that... Also, what could happen is before they get good at it, you could just kill it because the right people got the yeah. right things, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so. so crazy. I did want to say, um, in terms of the phases, um, the phase one, I was definitely disappointed. Like, I really liked it as a concept, but I was really disappointed because while you guys got to the boss first and I saw how you guys were doing it, I mean, we did very similar. I think there was some slight changes where we placed the, the the lava but uh i was hoping that you're gonna have to play another firestorm yeah and that you're gonna have to essentially have everything but the roots filled with lava and that would have been i mean yeah that was a disaster that, that would be a disaster in the intermission at the start because you're gonna have balls coming from the front but yeah uh, but i was a little bit disappointed i don't know because there was definitely room to squeeze Probably another 5% oh, of that boss. Oh, yeah, no. If the boss's health was not nerfed, that boss would have still died that reset. It probably wouldn't have died that day, although it definitely could have. Like, if you if you just look at... Again, it's just an RNG phase. If you, I, I'm sure this is true with you all as well. Like, if you took our best P2 push and our best P3 damage using the exact same CDs, I mean, you the, the pull that it died on would have been 3% lower, right? It's just one of those fights. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, I mean, uh, so you, you know, you could you could have easily killed the boss with that, but it it probably would have taken another day from both of us of of like optimiz optimizing and also just having the seed people get better to where you're getting more consistent like things where people are. I mean, that's just one of those dude. If you're a seed user in that phase, you are your damage is going up every pull, like every single pull your damage is going up. Yeah. Well, it, goes, it actually goes both ways. The damage is going up and the heart rate is also going up, I can say, out of our own experience. All right, Dratnos, any, any thoughts? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Dratnos is still here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I, I, I mean, are you guys done talking about Fire Rack? I think, uh, I think keep going. Cause... I think there's a lot. I mean, just anything you think is interesting would be good. I, I still think even though Dratnos hasn't talked a lot, I stand strong in my opinion that Dratnos has a very high, if you were to ratio the amount of time people are talking and the quality Dratnos will be very high and putting us in good directions. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the Fire Rack discussion is good though. Like the, the specifics are just stuff you guys know more than I. Um, but if we're done with that, then we can move on well, to some I, general stuff. Okay. Well, I do have one more question about, so you guys, your strat in the last phase, I really like a lot. It has like your raid swapping sides of the boss. Actually, no, let me just pull up a raid plan. It'll be way easier to do this. Uh, if I'm like mm. showing your all's general idea versus ours, I have fucking layered R up right now. Let me turn my stream or stream on in discord. So at least from what I can tell when you guys are doing this phase you are like have the boss here and then i think you have like your entire raid like on the left to start or something like that and that way when you're putting firestorms behind you're like already on the side of the room to get to the edge and the seeds are i don't really know where the seeds are but the idea is your raid does firestorms here and then the next phase right your raid is over here and firestorms go here at this point, you have put down the two things, right? And then, like, you back the boss up, like, very slightly. And then what do you do after that? What is the third orientation? You... I can, I can, I think maybe, because... Do you show our Figma version? I can, yeah, show, I can show this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah one second. Because it, it's the only uh, concept I've seen of it is more, like... This is, you this may... is the first bloom, basically. Um... Yeah. Okay, so you have like a decent spread. All of the seeds are arranged. Okay, so you do double hunter and mage warlock, exact same as us at the beginning. But you have the raid. See, this is the thing that we wanted the raid to always look the same, and we wanted everyone to be in similar spots. So like, this is okay. So I get this, and then this is just going to be flipped slightly for the second phase. I want to see the third. What yeah. is phase three yeah. C? Link that. I I did. That's when the cook starts going yeah, a little no, bit no. like that. <laughs> a little bit uh, yeah. crazy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, here you go. That's uh, I, I that's think the third one. On the three C is the main issue was that people swapping around after this was a uh, holy fuck. Yeah, that took a long time, Roger. By the way, like yeah. after this, when when we if Roger's gonna link three D, that was a big issue. Well, yeah. I, I think three D was a big issue for. Okay, yeah. so we have the exact same concept for where the raid is standing and where the melee seeds are. We just opted to always have that be the same with the sacrifice of people having to pre-move for firestorms. So you have the raid already in the spot of where you want to put tornadoes. We had the raid mm -hmm. in the middle, and as firestorms are going out, if they're putting firestorms to the right, they're like pre-running there. So like, I, okay, I get an idea of yours now, but like this is the general orientation in the raid right you have like the two uh good seeds to start back here uh you have the two good seeds over here and i'll just do like in i won't do like every single phase but i'll just put where the corrupted seeds go so like the corrupted seed for dh is up here rogue is up here tank is up here uh because the two seeds playing together was like pretty playable um uh, yeah uh, before you continue this was actually something we debated quite a bit we had the situation uh, if you if you check 3D, um, the picture. Yeah. Okay. This we had the issue that the tank. Uh, oh, sorry, 3C. I guess. Sorry, 3C. Okay. Um, we had the issue that the, you see the DH, the tanks, and the mage warlock. I mean, Xero was not that far. Let's say, yeah. yeah and then we close. actually had we had a couple of wipes, more than two, I think, where. The, the the corrupted seeds hit each other with the blazes and it was so unfortunate but it was kind of hard and we were debating like should we have the dhs be on top of the tanks and then they just dodge each other but then the warlock is you never have to worry about the warlock because the d8s had it kind of hard because they had to look at both directions basically which is like the camera is not easy to do that um so did you have two corrupted seeds on top of each other? Because we thought of doing it, and the players were like, nah, we're just used to this. Like, let's not change it. Uh, but, so uh, yes, we did. So our first progression uh, from the beginning is obviously the four good seeds, just like this, with the raid being loosely spread behind. Uh, what we did was every time we were putting firestorms to the left initially, 
So let's say our first firestorms go like to the front left of the room or something. They would bait, the entire raid would bait to the uh, right side here to bait the beam here. These guys would move to the right of the beam. These guys would play in the middle. And now the whole raid is in the middle with Blaze out of range of everyone's seeds. And then as firestorms would go out, we'd be saying firestorms in three, two, one. You'd basically just be going in this direction in case you get it, just like babby strafing, and then you would have enough time to make yeah. it out. But this way, all it does is it makes every single blaze of the entire fight happen with the raid happen in like this box, and that mm. never changes, and you never have to worry about rotating, and that's what most of the people in the raid are doing. And then when we when we moved the corrupted seed location, it was like we initially, I think at the very beginning, and then phase two, right? You have uh, the three seeds. One has been popped. Uh, I think we still had uh, two over here. And then now the first two corrupted seeds is tank plus DHs. And we had DH go here and tank go here. So same thing, pretty easy to understand. You have like the entire raid still doing the blaze in this box. Uh, and then these people yeah. are on the two front sides of the thing, the circle. We put same, I think same as you, front left first, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then like the boss generally plays like here. And then now everyone's out of range of seeds. The third one is where it gets uh, a little it like keeps the same concept but we put the two seeds next to each other like we basically said if two ranged can be out of range of everyone and do their seeds together then like why not be able to do it in melee as long as they are out of range of everyone else's blaze and they always were uh so yeah. so the next phase we do uh hunter one is gone we put we actually kept the good seed with fi so fired up in thd i think wiped us in total two times to seeds over all of our pulls so we just started letting them carry the seeds more by doing some soulstone stuff. So we had THD keep the good seed and they actually swap. So like when I saw that man, I thought it was so cool. <laughs> I kinda yeah, wanted to do yeah, it. But... Yeah, yeah, they did yeah, they did like firestorms here. Like they would do the firestorm swap and they would basically just leave the good seed, do a corrupted seed swap, and just they would do that swap there. And then that way they and then THD picked up the next one. So they each held a corrupted seed for like the rest of the fight after this. Um, but for this mm. phase, this is done. And then what we did, which is different than you, as opposed to your 3C, our 3C is two in melee, rest on the left side of melee. Didn't, keep in mind, these seeds and these seeds are not in range of each other or the raid. So they are just in their own world, not blowing each other up kind of thing. Uh, we had very little wipes to these two seeds, if that's what you're asking. Like, it was actually pretty consistent. Mm. Uh, I mean, we, yeah. I think we would have had the same. It was just an issue what the Roger pointed out that the Demon Under Seed and the Warlock Seed in the beginning were like too close sometimes and then they blew up. But uh, when we yeah. were in the positions where they were kind of alone, we also didn't wipe to it. So this is something that so. Final Fantasy strat making kind of taught me, which is that as much as you can, you want to make every single phase look the same, like orientation boss relative wise to make things consistent. So like what you guys did, and I think was really good for Firestorms, what I really liked about what we did is you always are looking at the boss yeah. the exact same way. Everyone relative, always here, always here. That never changes. These guys are back here. These guys are back here. Uh, and everyone is behind the boss. And every single blaze looks exactly the same from everyone's direction. I, I But I do think firestorms were a much harder part of this phase than you would think. So I actually really like the way that you all like swapped back and forth sides of the boss. So there's much less movement for these people. It's probably a damage increase. Uh, yeah, the firestorms, I mean, they were an issue for us as well, but I do think, yeah, we focused a bit to make that. I, the main thing we actually had an issue with, with the firestorms, were on, yeah, 3C and 3D, like, basically, the not the first two times, uh, but the third and fourth yeah. part of the fight. Uh, if the people with the good seeds got it, it was quite hard sometimes to, to get it to a good position, and uh, that caused a bit of issues. Like, uh, this is like the final product, like obviously that you're seeing here. Like we had issues where the hunter, they couldn't make it there uh, or they didn't like pre-move, let's say for it. And then they would just drop it a little bit more in air or they would go at the bottom bottom at the tip and drop it there. But then we we kind of banned doing that, even though we had one there for the kill, yeah. but uh, it was not supposed to be there. So we had a bit of an issue with this random, like, or Xerwo, like we had a wipe where Xerwo in this, what you're seeing now, yeah. he placed the tornado there on the left, and then I think it was nice memes, he went out to place his tornado on 3D, and he didn't expect to have a tornado there. Yeah, dude, and this, happened so many this happened like so yeah. many fucking times where 
like like in our strat right here what our hunters would do early is like if they got a firestorm they were pretty far from here so like they would put a firestorm like here or here and it was like so oh, the, dog shit later in the phase but the, like the illegal yeah we, yeah. we, we banned it and called it the illegal and yeah it like, is so yeah it was, this. <laughs> yeah it was definitely bad so then like the way that we did this for four is we were like okay we can utilize what we're not utilizing in the room right now is like these other sides and what you guys chose to do and we did not this is probably the biggest difference in our strat is these tornadoes are turbo sketchy right like you have you these tornadoes you're putting like almost in the next tornadoes uh or the previous tornadoes sorry yeah. or like you can even put them in the puddle if you have like a big personal or something right so like like that way you're doing it we just thought that that was insanely sketchy but like again i i like the way you guys rotate we just put our third one here flipped our side of the room had a thd or the hunter get rid of his seat here and they picked up a corrupted now and then we have a tank and now it's just flipped looking at the boss on the other side completely clear with everything behind you so like this part mm -hmm. of the phase there's like, just like one swap and the boss is obviously hitbox is much bigger than this for people who are watching it but um you start doing this and then the next one just goes like on the tip and then you just back them up and do the same thing yeah. and and you have fire yeah. firestorms can kind of be yoloed left or right for both of these phases as long as you just have enough space um so that that was that was the way we did it uh, what did your all's last phase burn look like? What is like three E, I guess? Uh, yeah, one second. I just want to see what that looks um, like because it's like I'm assuming you just give yourself way more space. Yeah, but we also never played it actually because on the kill, like Roger said, we had a a wild tornado on the bottom left uh, corner, so I couldn't really put the boss properly in there because people wouldn't have had space. So I think we kind of ended up with almost the same boss positioning as you guys. Um, oh yeah it is exactly the same yeah it's like yeah, yeah. So, so basically yeah it's exactly the same except we were just here one thing earlier but you uh man it's so funny how you have these concepts of where tornadoes should be and where they should not be and <laughs> oh, and I then did. and then you can do the phase <laughs> but it turns out that you can kind of just fucking game and it just doesn't matter like actually one of our really early wipes we everything was wrong i'm actually pretty sure a, a seed was placed here and we had the boss here and our entire orientation was fucked and we just called like play the game like just fucking figure it out <laughs> like just just fucking yeah. i'm pretty sure blazes were like in the raid and shit and you just you can kind of do it like i don't know and like we had like a really low pull um but yeah it was uh it was definitely it's it's one of those phases where you need to have really good firestorms, but at the end of the day, you can have bad ones and just play fucking crazy and just kill it anyway. I will yeah, say I mean, as well, when we first got to this phase, we see the first two corrupted seeds. I was coping hard. I was like, there's no way that you get eight of this, right? <laughs> and so I thought Oh yeah, wait, what did you guys think? What did you guys think the phase was gonna be before you before you saw it? I mean, first of all, we had prepared massively for like a way bigger rotation because we thought that you're going to get a stack every second. Uh, turns out it was every two seconds. So it was doable with two people. Uh, but we were prepared with like a bunch of weak auras and uh, a little bit from Avatar, if uh, from uh, Tomb of... Mm, uh, yep, not, yep. Um, yeah, Tomb of Sagaras. Yeah, Tomb of Sagaras, Tomb of Sagaras. Yeah. So like a similar style where you have like five or six people and all that. Um, and uh, so yeah we we thought that you'll get not eight at least yeah <laughs> like we thought ah you probably get like three or four and then uh, so you get like four or five people on each and um yeah so then we see the two seeds and i thought it's either gonna be okay maybe the next time he doesn't spawn them and then he spawns two more towards the end so you have four of them or he spawns one at a time after the first two just to get a head start I did not expect eight. I was coping hard. People, like there was also the thought, if we don't use a good seed, maybe he doesn't spawn the corrupted. Yeah, because you can li you can live the apocalypse roar without a seed. Yes, yes. Yeah. We yeah. were like, guys, we just pop all, we live it, we don't corrupt the seed, like a good one, and then we don't get the co two corrupted ones. So we thought about this, and we just didn't want to waste a wipe by going to the last phase and then just like doing that and then fucking it because you can't test it in any other difficulty. But then we, I think what we did was we had a wipe really early on where like a bunch of people were dead. So we just called to use 
Uh, or we just called to like not use any seeds. We just like immune to the hit, and then we saw that they just spawned on a timer. I think was mm. was what happened. But yeah, they. Yeah. I thought the phase was going to be you zone in because you know how there were six good seeds on normal, right? I I thought there was just going to be four good seeds and four bad seeds, and you just had to fucking figure it out. That's what mm. I thought. But that when I thought of after we got closer to the boss. I thought, well, that doesn't really make sense because then the phase just kind of gets easier over time because you're like using good seeds and you're like losing seeds. Like all the difficulty mm -hmm. would be immediately and then it would just get easier. Uh, but it would be harder in the sense that you would have to have four debuffs passing from an earlier point in the fight. Like, I don't know. But the, the way they did it was definitely... I mean, I definitely think this is probably the best version of what they could have done. Like there is there is some versions of this phase that are absolutely psychotic. Like they, they could have made this like... I mean, there could have been like 10... Corrupted seeds, right? You could make that argument. Yeah. Yeah. They could, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I would not want to see how it would look with healers also having to play those because I think both this and Tindril were so hard on the healers, like as just boss designs, that uh, I, I like there was this thought at some point, yo, let's maybe maybe we put them to healers because they heal themselves as well. Gonna, it's good. Yeah. I was like, bro, like, don't do it. Yeah, they're already stressed enough. They don't need an extra layer of stress uh, to, yeah. uh, to in this fight. You were um, you were talking to yeah. me at BlizzCon about a secret phase. You were like, man, I hope there's a secret phase. There has been. There's been a secret oh. phase on the end boss of the last raid of the expansion in every single expansion since Cataclysm. Were you disappointed to yeah. not see one? Yes. I mean. De definitely, but it made a lot of sense. I think after seeing the last phase with the seats. There was a lot of cope going on. I think uh, some people in the venue were also like, yeah, we're all going to blow up and Chromie will dress us and then we get a secret face. Oh, that is an stuff, insane but, uh, cook. <laughs> but, but I mean, to, to, to be honest, after seeing eight seats, you were like, guys, I don't know. It was probably just the yeah, IOB. Bro, there, so. if, if we got that boss to 0% and a secret face started, I would have fucking logged <laughs> off. I would have logged <laughs> off instantly. <laughs> you know, this was a classic Argus situation. You have all these titans watching you, and they don't do shit. Yeah, and this time, you have, you have all the aspects watching you, and they don't do jack. Like, I don't know, like, just lore-wise, this is just strange, Blizzard, come on. Like, you need to have something cool happen. I don't know, look at the Ragnaros or something, right? Like, he pops up, there's like, all the people are coming, Malfurion is helping you, popping the roots to root the Ragnaros. Like, uh, implement those characters in some way. I don't know. I was so disappointed, actually, that they didn't do something cool. Um, I do think also, one thing yeah. to say is that the face looks crazy and it was very hard to get the kill. But it was relatively easy to reach... Rel okay. I guess not no, that... easy. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was yeah. reasonable to, let's say, con somewhat consistently reach 15% or so of the fight. Uh, it was the last... 10% especially, that was the hardest to get through. Um, I think especially the first two blooms of the seeds. At some point, you just didn't wipe until that point, right? Like you just- Or when you did, consistent. it was an Omega Tilter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just so, see the Firestorm <laughs> spawn on someone or- Oh, oh my, my God. God. Someone leaving. Actually, <laughs> what what, put, what did me the most on this fight was the when you had the seed and the Firestorm spawned, the hitbox on you was very small, but when your seed was on the ground, the firestorm just became the biggest missile in the world and just killed you, or killed the seed rather. I yeah. think that was very weird, very weird, very bad. Um. Yeah. But I... Yeah. I'm like, my point is that if they wanted to do they it, like if the boss at ten percent or fifteen percent transition to a mythic only phase, I think it would have been okay but not at zero percent like jesus yeah Christ. dude yeah like, if, that was... yeah if like i said if, if that boss got to zero and there was a secret phase i would have instantly went to bed and just like had to process that and then come back and <laughs> like dude think about how many pulls in a day like even when we get better at that fight how many pulls in a day would you even make it to the secret phase like holy fuck man like it, that's the kind of fight where you could have been there 10 times and then not get there for three hours it's just that's just well, how it is yeah if it was at zero percent but yeah, yeah. i think 10 percent I mean, oh, ten percent's pissed. His, yeah, ten percent is easy. Yeah. Historically, also the la the mythic only phases they're not super hard. You get there like twenty times, let's say, and the boss dies. Yeah. So, I think it would have been reasonable, but yeah, I was. I, I mean, it is disappointing in general, though. I don't know. 
I gave some thought so. to Mirez's idea from our last talk, and I have a cook for how they could make the Race to World First into an esport without affecting the current Race to World First at all. And I want to hear your thoughts on it, but I want to hear if Dratnos oh, has shit. any. I want to have some thoughts on, or I want to hear Dratnos. Do you have any, before we kind of like leave the raid as it was, do you have any, uh, any final questions? Yeah, I kind of got a broader one just zoomed out entirely about this race, which is like oftentimes we come into these races and we we sort of learn something and it's like, oh, we were doing something this tier based on what happened last tier, but like that was stupid and wrong for this tier and we didn't kind of realize it. So uh, did either of you, you guys have any kind of instances of something where you kind of like were fighting the last war, right? Doing the doing something based off of what was right in Aberus that was just not right in this raid? Uh, not Aberus, but I will say as this raid started to go longer, we were thinking of Sepulcher. And one big lesson we learned from Sepulcher when we were fighting this many hard bosses and it was going, I think Jailer died like a week from when Firak died, something like that. Uh, like in terms of like relative how long progression took. But like it was right around when Firak died when both of our guilds were having players tell us that they needed to get more rest or else like they were going to do dog shit progression. Uh, and we were definitely like... If if Sepulchre didn't happen, we wouldn't have slept as much as we did. But I also think that sleep on a fight like this, especially when there's things to gain, are, are really valuable. But I don't think that's something that's necessarily fucked up, but something where a previous raid had an impact on what we did now. Yeah. How about Echo? Because um, I, I know for Echo, like, Aberus, it felt like you guys weren't ever pushing it I mean, on the sleep, right? Yeah, I want, and then I wanted you just to lose say, without having slept, and then this tier I, you pushed, like, three nights, which, was that, like, an overreaction to that, or do you stand by it? I mean, I think an idea was to go into this progress that we just cut this, like, that we sleep okay in the beginning, basically, and then in the end, we just say, fuck the sleep and uh, just go ham. That is what we learned from, or like, I guess not learned, but what we saw in, on Avarice. And that's what we did this tier. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we... This is a tough question, yeah. But where, where are you doing this to us, Stratnos? Uh, f yeah, four hours is... deep. But um, <laughs> I don't know if there is something. I mean, I definitely was expecting a faster raid let's say although i was hoping that it would last as long as it did um so my mindset was that we need to just i guess this is one good thing to say that our, we did try a decent amount to increase our pool speed uh this time especially you know that's one of the reasons i was also outside um and i do think we achieved it not to the degree that we wanted uh definitely can improve even more but at least it didn't feel like we had as much i think there was only one time was like when we first got to firak uh or sorry when oh, we first yeah. got to p3 of oh, firak p3, yeah, p3. Yeah, yeah. and that that was the only time where i think it took us maybe like an hour or an hour and a half like just to discuss some plan right because you can do dude this is so funny you can, you can do you can do a million things on p3 right in terms of positioning or where people go so that was a bit of a discussion, but other than that, I think we didn't really have any big uh, breaks in between our pulls uh, compared to the previous tiers. I have to jump I mean, in there. I, I have to jump oh, in. Yeah, so, sure. so you mentioned that hour and a half, you saw Firak P3 and then you had an hour and a half break to talk about it. We did well, okay. the... It wasn't... No, no, sorry. It oh. was... We killed Tindril late at the night. Oh, okay. So then it, it was... Um, literally, we didn't... Like, we did a p one pull on Firak, I think, and then we went to bed. Um, and, uh, it was the next morning, like when we, you know, you guys had uh, already played phase one. So I had a plan ready for P1 and all that. Um, that was one of them, but then, uh, oh, sorry. Like I'm getting them mixed up like P3. Sorry. Yeah. On, on P3, we, it was in the morning, right? Uh, Maris? Like, I think it was when we got there in the morning, um, uh, that we had a long discussion. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was quite long. I think we, I, I don't know. Yeah, we took it an hour. Times, Dota's, I guess. Wait, Dota yeah. says it was two hours in the evening. We discussed P three. Yeah, it two hours in the evening? yeah. So oh, yeah, we so we did. So this is this is. I wanted to bring this up to keep on your previous point of like just pulling the boss more. We got to P three and we took like an hour and a half strap break, 
and we basically came up with like because now we knew how the seeds worked right so we like did our whole seed rotation we did like our initial plan for like how we're going to do the room and that took like an hour and a half and then i know after the raid like so like you're looking back on what you could have improved on i think what we should have done is probably come up with what we did in like the first 30 seconds to minute of that phase and then just kept pulling for consistency right mm -hmm. um and then so that was like a criticism but it sounds like you guys did the exact same thing which is i mean yeah it's like it's it sounds stupid to not pull a boss when you don't have a full plan of what you're doing and it would have been impossible for us to plan on the seed order before you knew how they were going to do the seeds right so the yeah but the issues as well like you know the entire fight basically from the get-go because the, the timers are full repeats so it's not like oh let's just pull to see further like you know what's gonna happen like it's not a mystery so you kind of want to have some sort of plan of where you're gonna place things because you don't want to also try something out quickly and then be like okay scrap all of that we're doing completely different positions and then people are like no but you know now i'm used to this I don't know, but yeah, I think you are also correct. We should not have taken that long. It I mean, I, I, I am I am fighting the other side of this because like we talked as officers like how what we could have done to be better and stuff like that. And definitely some feeling was like we should have just pulled faster in that scenario. And my feeling was how can you pull P3 without knowing what you're going to do when you're going to get there? And I think the compromise is you don't have to actually yeah. strategize all of P3 before you see it. You can just have bare bones general ideas and still keep pulling because like two hour breaks not everyone in these guilds is like a uh, super involved in strategy right like a lot of people are just playing mm -hmm. the game so like yeah, those yeah. those people check out during those breaks and your pulls after those breaks are usually bad uh so it yeah it's 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 hard but it it was actually crazy i was trying to pull for like an hour straight i think and scrap was just taking people one by one hostage and i couldn't pull he was like ah look at this now mike and then it showed Jinji. For like 10 minutes what he has a plan for the movement i'm like okay maybe mike is done now um press ready check and he's like oh look frago maybe you can check here i'm like oh my god so uh, that was some cra crazy time man. so ben who is a old raider for us you guys know ben he was just spamming slash pull 20 in our current raiders chat in discord during like a lot of fire act <laughs> <laughs> well, just... i can i i can say qu quickly on on tindra sometimes the ready check was done when we were wiping like during the wipe i was already guys we're pulling again there's nothing to talk about yeah, the, yeah. I, I don't need to i don't need to chat <laughs> Yeah, I remember also one thing like towards the end, like on the last day, we would have maybe like a phase one or two, not, not so much one, but like phase two wipe. And then people started discussing like why we wiped and stuff. And I'm like, guys, if we haven't figured it out in 300 and whatever pulls, it's fine. Like, let's just keep pulling. We, we should not discuss anything but P3 at this point. Yeah, like just keep pulling the boss. It's fine. Because uh, it was getting to that point where we're just uh, focusing, I think, on the the wrong parts of the fight. Yeah, I I think that's a lesson that we learned on Jayla and never managed again. Actually, I mean, I'm not sure how much, but in, because on Jayla, I was raiding phase one and two, right? And every time we wiped, and everyone was just kind of so zoned out at that point because it was such a long progress. But we wiped, and I was like, guys, is this something to talk about on the wipe? And I was like, nah, not really. And we just pulled again. But I think we didn't achieve that fully, this progress. Maybe we uh, need to try again next time, I guess. I don't know. All right, Dratnos, Some any other... This... Any other uh... Oh, sorry, Maris. I, didn't... I thought you were done. <laughs> I didn't mean to fucking no, cut no, you off. No, I'm you? done. I'm done. It's all good. <laughs> Dude, that felt okay, so Okay, I do want to... I, I know there's a story here with the lust, the lust movement and, like, uh, going over Skype on this. You want to tell that story, Maris? Oh, I can, yeah. I, I, okay, so in case people didn't hear it yet, um, Scribe didn't want to last, like we discussed earlier, it never wanted to last phase 3, even though we had like a decent attempt in phase 3, and then I think Roger and Scribe were just discussing some strats, and I was like, guys, I don't, we don't need to be part of this, and I just took Scribe and Roger and moved them into a different TeamSpeak channel, I pressed the, the pull button, and everyone in TeamSpeak was like, guys, are we just not lasting, and don't tell Scribe, and just where I was like, okay, I also don't get Scribe until phase 3 into the voice channel so i was also raid leading phase two so one and two and i was like okay we're doing this so we just played we somehow managed a first try ever phase one in the mission and phase two no last no death and we just go phase three and we just slam the last button and then scribe came back and we're like holy shit it worked and then scribe was like guys we're lasting phase two again on the next poll but oh shit but we did it 
<laughs> yeah, we, we, we did do it against him and we're like, holy moly, it worked. <laughs> Damn that! I've, okay, I did not. That is a that is a good story. I, I I didn't know. Well, I mean, so we we did the same thing. So like when we were first doing P one, we were like lusting it, and but we were holding CDs for the intermission, and we were like, yeah, I don't know what P one looks like without lust. And then we just don't lust P one, and we one shot it, and it was like very easy. And we're like, okay, so that's easy. Then we do P two, and we're like, what does P two look like without lust? We also one shot it, but then I think we kept lusting P two even after we one shot it, same as you. I think we swapped yeah. to P three lust sooner, but it was just like why not c3 why not cp3 more you know kind of thing i don't know mm. of course i mean i think it was in like it is obviously the right call was crab wonder but we're like guys and like the whole raid team everyone was so fucking hyped to last phase three even though we would have wiped in phase two of course right but everyone was like guys we need to last phase three for some reason everyone was omega hyped to do that so we just randomly yoloed it and uh, got it i don't, I don't even think it's random by the way like this is a fight where you could lust in the last phase and actually just kill it like it's it's just one yeah. of those fights like that you, is, you, that's, what chris, yes. that, that's what chris was saying because the, the argument was well let's get to like a you know sub 10 percent pool let's get there let's get close where bloodlust would have mattered and then we can switch it and his argument was bro this boss is so random like what if we get that uh, you know four percent wipe that could have been the kill like you never know yeah, let's swap the last because uh, uh, you don't want to be in that situation where you lost a kill just because of the last. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine imagine you're, like, going to bed that previous night. You keep a P2 lust, and then you wipe at, like, 2% or something. And then, oh, my God. And then it's like, how can we go to bed? Like, we literally just would have had lust in P3 and the bosses we win, right? Like, then, that, then that's crazy. So, yeah, okay. It was actually... I don't know if you know this, Max, but we had the, the four... 20 a.m. pull, like the last one of the really long day. Mm -hmm. uh, Scribe just said, guys, fuck the last in P2, we last phase three. And after one and a half hours of dying in phase one and two, we randomly one shot phase one and two without last, and we went phase three and we just lasted, yeah? At 4.20 a.m. It was a and really like, good pull, actually. And like, it was the, a really good pull, like, yeah. We had the bullshit wipe, let's say. It was, I don't remember what it was, but it was just one of those. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so but, you said, the only issue I have with what you said is you said it was random. I don't think that was random at all. I think, I think, yeah, I, I think, I, I agree. I think when people are up random. really it late, was the last pull of the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even the last pull of the day thing, like when, when you can tell people want to lust P3 and like go for a kill or whatever, if it's that late, people slouch back on their chairs. They're human. They're thinking about sleeping. And then like, you're like, okay, let's fucking move lust. They all sit up in their chairs. You know, it's like <laughs> that gaming meme yeah. where like the guy tilts forward in his chair. Like that's, that's literally what everyone does. So it's like, the opposite of random that you had a sick pull because everyone was really motivated you you know also i don't know if we mentioned this the tindral kill was the last pull of the night like we literally said this is the last pull and then we killed it on that pull yeah so yeah. that's there's definitely is that there's something there for sure it's not random i agree well, uh, i mean the other tech we, we had two tags this year the last pull tech and the no no food break tech also worked out well yeah right? we had that this time around, <laughs> dinner especially, we just didn't play good for an hour, like an, an hour after dinner every time. I don't know. It was just like uh, the opposite of what it has been in the past. Um, that happened know. to us. We got Thanksgiving gapped. So Thanksgiving in America is you eat this like massive full meal of like turkey and mashed potatoes yeah. and just all this shit. And then you get super tired afterwards. So like our, our raid like the after the thanksgiving dinner like on the day of thanksgiving was like super super dog shit <laughs> like we the whole night was so rough yeah i don't know the thing is we didn't I... even eat that heavy food on some of the days like we had some like i don't know it well was it was crazy. also the people who left home right like it's of not course, just like it was just... a collective yeah that we... <laughs> i don't know i just gotta look into that though for sure um I did want to bring up one last topic from my side, at least, that I think mm -hmm. is worth discussing. That is, um, throughout the race, like, just think of it like as a timeline. How was your feeling in terms of, like, how you guys are performing and how it's looking? Um, maybe, like, on each boss, how you, you, guys, how you think you performed? Because uh, I think that is definitely interesting. I can start off to just briefly to say that... Uh, I definitely think up until Firak, it felt quite uh, 
let's say like that that you guys are gonna win let's say yeah that's the feeling i i had um i don't know especially i would say smolderon uh, even though it was like not that many pulls of a boss but i did feel like we could have killed it like 20 pulls before mm -hmm. but especially tindrel like i said i thought we we're gonna kill it like eight hours or seven hours before we did and it felt a little bit like okay what's going on here right like we should be killing these bosses uh i mean even larder i guess but whatever um but i just felt like we really kicked into gear on the last boss uh don't know if there is just how our players work let's say in, in their brain but they just or maybe the boss mechanics just clicked better compared to the previous ones to us but um yeah, I'm just curious to see how your mentality was, because I'm I'm guessing you had a similar feeling that you guys are are blasting through the bosses and we're taking similar amount of tries. Um or yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh yeah, so we felt extremely confident throughout the entire first week and we felt like at least up until Farak that we were just absolutely fucking crushing the raid, for sure. Uh mm. yeah, I don't think you ever look at it like here's the way I look at it. In raids that even we've won, besides Nylotha, uh even the raids that we win, it's pretty normal early in a raid for us to go to bed and wake up with new info and then pass you again, and that's just normal. Like, that happens pretty early in a raid. It happened in, like, day two of Mythic of Abaris, for example. Um, I don't think that happened this raid until, like, fucking way long. Like, it might have been briefly on Tendril, but it was, like, very briefly, and then it was, like, multiple mm. days into Farak for that to happen. And then that, that was, like, okay... First of all, it's kind of annoying, low-key, because, like, we have to fucking think. Sometimes I'm just not trying to think, you know? Sometimes I'm just trying to wake up, <laughs> and you guys come up with some sick shit, and I'm just like, we're doing that. That sounds fucking awesome. That just straight up did not happen until, like, P3 Farak this race, and uh, that did give us a lot of confidence, because it's like, okay, I mean, if they're, like, basically a full day behind us, a full raid day behind us, and they're not, like, closing that gap, then we're in a pretty good spot. I don't think you ever really let yourself think that, though. Like, you can do that for motivation, but, like, you know, you don't... Because, like, the opposite of that can be, like, oh, we're fucking shitting on him, and then you get to Farak, and then you play Insanely Bad. The thing is, I don't... I've thought about this a lot. I don't think we played Insanely Bad on Farak at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you guys just fucking pop the fuck off. I don't know if that's how you guys felt in your guild, but I think you guys just played that boss. That might be one of the best bosses you've ever played, because we were... I think we were absolutely owning you guys until that boss, and then you guys came back. I mean, it is a good boss to, like, wake up with info on. You, I think the, probably the biggest thing you got was, like, you got to wake up to just, like, a full P1, just, like, okay, GG, swap yeah. a few things around, like, that yeah. That caught a lot of time up. But, like, for the rest of the fight, you guys were doing a lot of your own problem solving and just executing, and you were more consistent, right? So, um, yeah. That, I, think, that... I think one thing, I guess, that I, I just wanted to add is that in general on all the last three bosses i think we uh, i mean if you're uh, like uh, let's ignore firak yeah but, but at least on smolder and tindrel it wasn't so much like we progressed quite good on the bosses i i feel but we just couldn't close it that was our issue i don't know why like so even though we kind of were ca catching up on tindrel and we we were kind of on a similar place you guys just killed it and we were just stuck there just waiting to kill it and it, it just took us very long time and similar to smolder and i think it just we were just waiting okay like we have everything we've, we've seen enrage and i don't know i just I think... couldn't close the deal on those two bosses and that uh, made it so that uh, you kept uh, kept a pretty big lead going into firak yeah I, I think that you guys feed off of that a lot like i think in a race that you guys normally win it doesn't feel like this race like, you you can feel yourself clawing back towards where we are as the race goes on pretty linearly, right? Like, you're like, oh, we're passing here, we're passing here, oh, we're going to do this boss better, right? And then when that doesn't happen, when we're clutching out kills at the end of our night with, like, Tendril and Smolderon, you feel a pressure to do that, but not only do that, but do it faster, right? Because you... Yeah. You yeah, want course, you want sure. to be like catching up, right? So like when that doesn't happen on boss to boss, it didn't happen on Smolderon, it didn't happen on Tindril, then you probably start to get like, well, damn, you know, we're not really catching up any time here. But I, I noticed when it happened that you had like a P2 pull. It wasn't even any farther than what we were at. I think it was the point that we were at, but it was like the first time in the race where you felt like you caught up. 
Uh, and then you could tell from your all's comms that you were like really, really motivated from that. And then from that point on, I think you guys like shifted into another gear and, uh, and like went just crazy insane on the last boss for sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a big thing, I think. I completely agree with you. That if we, when we catch up and we manage to to get back to exactly the same spot, then we're both uh, not fully like copying. It's also a big thing for me personally. I mean, I, I don't play different, let's say the least, but copying is always feels way worse than cooking yourself some nice strat or figuring it out your, on your own. And we just go to the boss. Of course, it's nice to see, let's say, Firak P1, right? But if we would get there to get like, each each of us at the same time and both of us cook the same strat it would be is a way better feeling to play the boss than be like holy fuck we oh, play 50% yeah. copied over right so i mean I it's just it's a fun. big deal as well like remember nihilotha like nihilotha i remember Skype and roger you guys said that 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 was the least fun raid you've ever done and yeah. it's and it's because yes, it's yes. because <laughs> literally every single day and every single poll you were just copying what we did and that and you didn't have any other choice because of where we were so like that's no fun like i think fun might be a big part of it like your players are probably more motivated when you're going through that problem solving process rather than just watching a video of something right and like that probably adds motivation which kind of sucks because part of that is removed from you due to nothing other than the fact that our regions release the game at a different time right yeah 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 i must say though and overall the you definitely, I don't know, yeah. Like I, I, when we reached Firak, like when we finally killed Tindril, first of all, that was clutch. Um, like the last pull of the day, like we said, would have been quite demotivating going to bed without getting that kill. Um, but yeah, it felt like uh, you guys were just uh, owning hard, and uh, I, like I couldn't really point the finger exactly as to what we're doing wrong. It was quite frustrating, let's say, and it was very uplifting, I guess, on Firak to to be on a similar point. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was very strange, I guess. Uh, the emotions were all over the place this year. Uh, I've never, because usually it's not like that usually. Let's say, yeah, I think this was a pretty unique uh, race in that regard. Dude, you mentioned that you felt it would have been terrible, bad mentally for you to not kill Tindril when you did. I think something that a lot of viewers don't understand, and both of us knows what this feel like, feels like, but killing an end boss after you've lost is very, very hard uh, because yeah. you lose the motivation. <laughs> there is some motivation, and that is to be free, but that absolutely pales in comparison to the motivation of winning. Uh, so this happened like when you guys tried to kill Sarkrath, like you absolutely killed it slower because you know people kind of stop caring. It's very normal. It's human. It's not bad. I think it just happens, happens on, I think you guys said Denathrius as well. Um, this, the, killing Fyrak last phase Oof. after you've lost Oof. is so fucking hard. And I was very scared that we were not going to kill it that night. Not scared in the sense that that would have mattered. Like to me, the race is just like, you know, you win or you lose, that nothing else matters. But we had flights scheduled for the next day. And they, it would have been like thirty thousand U.S. dollars to reschedule those, uh, and that was, and we were not oh, going to yeah. do that. Well, why would you do that, right? There's, you're, you're going to fly home and just raid in a couple of days, uh, you know, whether that means method raids all day every day to kill it or not. Like, I mean, that, you know, that would be out of our control, kind of. But like, that could have very well happened because, like, I mean, generally morale was up during the day, but bro, if we didn't kill the boss that night, morale would have been absolutely turbo down bad. But Oh, when you when you fly home, not kill the boss, oh my, and th then you land home and after like all the U players twenty hour flight, and you're like, guys, let's get back to it. Oh my god, yeah, I mean it's Ooh, fucking my horrible. Love. Yeah, so that so that was almost bad, and I can tell you that, you know, we weren't like sitting around mad, like again, we didn't feel like we threw the race, and I think that's important because like if you did, then you know people are pretty pretty down on themselves or whatever the whole day. We were laughing the entire time we were re-killing that boss, but that's the thing too, is like if you start taking it less seriously, you're also most likely not gonna kill it. So like, but at the same time, like people have just been doing this shit for two weeks. They kind of want to laugh and kind of decompress a little bit. Uh but yeah, that was uh that was getting real close <laughs> to not killing that. And that would have been uh that's just a very hard boss to kill when you're demotivated. That's all I'll say. 
Um, okay, so Dratnos, any any remaining questions before my cook? Nope. Oh, cook there's away. a cook. Oh, yeah. And there's a cook based on my cook from the well, past. Well, I took a little bit of your cook. And okay, uh -huh. so you guys know in every uh, season of WoW, or people have talked about Blizzard getting involved in the race, and pretty much any like tournament realm, like this isn't on live servers things. There's like a million downsides to all of those things, although I did like Mira's take on it. Um, the race to world first happens as it happens, just like as it always has. It's unaffected. Okay, so this race happens. Let's say this could happen this season. It's not going to because they haven't planned for it, but it can just happen completely separate. Just like them having MDI weekends and TGP weekends throughout the thing, what they do is, and they allow either like the top guilds up to 50 guilds or 20 guilds, whatever, or I guess maybe anyone who wants to participate in this. They just release a singular boss, releases at the same time for everyone. It's on a Friday, just like when like time or Thursday, whenever time trials start or something. And it is like... I don't know, the Race to World First boss rush or whatever the fuck. You can come up with a cool name for it. And it is not a boss that's going to die in two hours. It is a tendril. It is a fire rack. It is a boss that would take us three to four days of progression most of the weekend, just like you would for an MDI. Uh, and they do this once a season. They don't have to create an entire new raid. They literally just create a boss. And it's something where people can get that feeling of the Race to World First uh not six months apart and there's like a little mini event and it wouldn't be insignificant it would probably be you know pretty challenging and something that everyone could uh appear on gearing is no, not an issue for this there are no splits you log on you have tournament realm gear uh and you can anyone can play and anyone can play whatever they want and i think people would watch the absolute fuck out of this and i think the load the lift for blizzard for this is pretty low too that's my cook yeah, where do I sign up? Oh, like, yeah, exactly. Where's the tournament room? I'm calling right now. Um, no, I think that is that would be insane. I do think, um, in terms of the difficulty, I like. Do you think this would just stay difficult then? For for like they, they wouldn't I mean, go and nerf I mean, it afterwards. This yeah. is I mean this there's no reason to nerf it. This isn't even on live servers. The yeah. only reason this boss exists in the game is for the purpose of esport and the purpose of it being challenging, right? So there's no reason I, to make it yeah. accessible to the masses because this is just like the MDI or the uh or the TGP. It is it is mm -hmm. something created for the spectacle of the race, which is fucking massive by the way this was like the most viewed race of all time yeah. uh it's obviously extremely popular infinitely more popular than dungeon content so like blizzard would also just be promoting and investing into a part of their game that people obviously really care about uh i don't know if if the argument is like it's taking away content from the live game it, the thing is is we're not asking for them to create extra esports raids we are asking for a single boss and a lot of the times when blizzard is making a boss the load for that boss is not a lot what takes a lot of time for dungeons and raids to be made is actually the concept theme and design and like how it looks and that takes a ton of time and it's a lot of bosses and boss design dude if a couple of boss designers work on one boss they'd probably make a banger and it's not going to take up a ton of their development time for other things and it would be extremely entertaining to watch and participate in and a lot of the guilds that are unable to compete in the race uh whether they would compete anyway is another discussion, but can't even begin to think about it because they can't do this many splits and have this many helpers and have this much gold and all these things, right? All of that is fucking gone. If you are an awesome, if you're instant dollars, right? If you're a sick guild and you want to actually see how close you would get, maybe you and your boys can take a weekend off and see how well you do kind of thing. And I think that could also make it a bit more interesting, so... I'm a, yeah, I think that's yeah. A, yeah. yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, and also, this was the one thing that I said when they uh, at BlizzCon, like uh, when people were asking, so what do you think about the war within and all that? I'm like, yeah, everything sounds great, but give me more raids. Like the the rate at which we get bosses has decreased steadily over the last few years, and there's you know with, there was the Shadowlands with the the COVID, uh, let's say, excuse, which is a valid one. But what about this expansion, right? Like, I feel like they 
I mean, I don't, I don't want to say they owe it to us, but why was it able to be done in the past and not anymore? Is my question. Like, why yeah. we used to get so many more raids, and now yeah. we're getting three. Yeah, and the it's three... like now it's gonna be a year and like fated. I don't, I don't know anyone oh, no. getting excited no, it's, for it's fated. Un, it's I unacceptable. Mean, maybe... I, I tweeted about this. I, I think. So what it is, is the War Within and Midnight and those three like World Soul Saga expansions are clearly going to only be 18 months long. And in an 18 month expansion, it is acceptable and normal for there yeah. to be three raids in those expansions. So what I think they're yeah. doing is they're just doing that early before that happens. But the reality is like a two year expansion only having three raids is just straight up unacceptable. Like Faded is fine if it's like the last three months like it's a glorified like little yeah. fun pre-patch thing that's fine when it's replaced which it did it, it it did that last expansion right faded was fine last expansion it had issues but it was fine it replacing an entire season is just it's it's unacceptable it's just simply not good enough like it is not okay to just not yeah. make a re i don't know i big not big i thought yeah. uh, i i thought they're going to uh, announce that the war within is coming earlier because obviously with the augment rune we got a hint that this might be the last year not fully confirmed but then they basically confirmed it <clears throat> at the blizzcon and then they say oh yeah we're within coming fall 2024 yeah. and i was yeah. like yeah if it huh? came summer if it came summer like we're chilling yeah. right like it would have made exactly. sense yeah. yes, summer exactly. made sense and i thought maybe they want to shift where they when they release expansions because they're kind of stuck in this infinite loop of two years and then maybe they didn't want to release it um around uh you know uh november or, or whenever they when was this expansion released? I don't remember. October, November? This was Maybe they were like, yeah, we yeah, want to do October. it in summer for reasons. I don't know, financial reasons. And I was like, okay, I'm down. But then they don't do that. So I don't know. <laughs> and not to mention, okay, a little bit going on the lore side again. Why? How can it possibly be that Firak is an end boss of an expansion? Like that, bro, no one even knew his name until this patch let's be real he was the fire dude okay and now yeah. suddenly he's closing dragonflight are you kidding me where is galakrond man hello and and no know. secret face i mean well said yeah FF. sorry i i i thought there's gonna be yeah at least a secret phase or i don't know i mean I mean, is it, I, I, max are you even into the lower situation or is it full ff for you what's up the, uh, oh <laughs> no yeah no no galakron yeah the whole dragon uh -huh. family all all of them big fan just comparing it to like argus or nizoth you know those are some important people and now we just killed the fire dude i mean i don't know a little bit uh <laughs> not not as impactful i guess but whatever. i feel like That's it was a I, I... suitable mm -hmm. boss for an end of expansion if you just look at it from the difficulty and like the design oh it, yeah it's suitable that oh, way yeah, yeah. you're just talking lore wise which i mean i have no opinion on yeah that. yeah oh I'm i actually just... well, well that's why i thought they're gonna do another raid that's literally the reason because i thought lore wise this makes no sense this is the last yeah. boss okay yeah. i i have two more things to add uh number one i wanted to add to my my esport thing cook i forgot to mention one very important part uh, there would actually be no reason for there to be a dungeon journal at all for this, and you would find all of it out natty, like at the very beginning. That, that oh, would yeah. be yeah, a, of course, of course. A, a cool part of this. And I then, mean... and then that I didn't want to like fully cook on that. I just wanted to let that simmer. And the other thing is, do you guys think there's a correlation between Sepulchre and Amirdrasil? They are the two hardest raids, probably ever. Maybe not for their era. Like for example, you could argue Tomb of Sargeras was harder than Amirdrasil, but like that's for its time right i mean like our current guilds would absolutely fucking demolish kill jaded and fallen avatar right so it's like you'd have to compare between the times but uh do you think it is a coincidence that the two hardest raids in a very very long time and maybe ever both happened as an end of expansion raid so ever since uh bfa with old year they have no longer done the like intro raid like castle nathria old year and vault were not intended to be easier than a regular raid but i'm asking is the end do you think it's a coincidence that the end of the ex uh, raid of the last two expansions happened to be significantly more difficult than the rest do you think that's intentional or do you think it's just like rng uh i 
I mean, my personal opinion, I think it's RNG. I think it was ever uh, working on the bosses, uh, just cook some good stuff. Because I personally, I mean, I expect the last boss to be hard, but I personally didn't expect Tindra to be this crazy of a boss, right? Okay, we can talk um, about that, right? It's because right. Tindril on PTR was a fucking joke. It was so easy. Yeah. It yes, was so easy. True. Like, <laughs> normally, when bosses on PTR go live, they'll be harder because they ramp up. They, like, change a few of the mechanics. They ramp up the damage. They actually, like, gave that boss bloodlust, and he cast abilities, like, three <laughs> times faster. Like, it's completely unrecognizably different. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe there's a, maybe there's a philosophy I'm, in Blizzard. Uh, I have... Right? I, the, the I, have a th I have a theory, okay? Oh, oh, no. My theory is that Ian himself <laughs> flew in and he... <laughs> guys, I don't know if you... I mean, okay, without going into too much detail, I do think uh, based off of the uh, BlizzCon conver uh, the, the, the Discord conversations, uh, he was more involved than in previous tiers. That's true. Um, and I yeah. think he might have uh, fine-tuned it a bit, let's say, or personally overlooked and uh, was a bit more involved, let's say, in this raid compared to the previous ones. That's my cook. I don't know. So you uh, think Ian, Ian put his foot down and was like, these raids have to be hard enough? Or, 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 I, I, I don't I can... know. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I could see Ian be like, yes, surely they can play these three second seats all the time, right? <laughs> okay, so... I, mean, I don't know if he went that deep, but I do think he was definitely more invested in it compared to previous well, times. That's he, how it felt. He said something very interesting to me, which was, or to us, sorry. It was like right after we killed it, this is a paraphrasing from him. Uh, there were times in the last week, referring to like the last week of the race, where we genuinely doubted whether something was even humanly possible, what you and Echo were doing. So they are, yeah. they were literally like doing things that, you know, they're testing to see if they work, but you know, they're like, we've said before and memed, like, is their testing QA team doing that version of Tendril we killed? Ain't no fucking way. Right. So <laughs> like the they're basically just looking at us and being like all right we have to give them something that challenges them and then we can nerf the boss as it goes on and i think that's really cool but the fact that ian said that immediately kind of makes me think that um that he he really pushed for that also i i don't know like when we talked to him a bit at and, blizzcon and, he loves this more than anything else right like this is we yeah. asked him this question yeah, i can i can, I can so hyped yeah i can say this on stream like we we talked to him and we said you know if you could uh do anything if you're no longer the game director of blizzard right or of uh, of wow and you can just work in any department you want to work on like what are you the most passionate about like what would you do if you went back and did that and he immediately said he would work on raids like you didn't even blink he just said it instantly right like this is obviously what he loves so uh yeah i don't know yeah uh, and and i and i think also um like again i don't know how much he got involved but i do feel like when it came to the uh, the nerfs that happened, I, I did feel like they were so much more precise, let's say. Oh, yeah. And uh, I do feel like there he most likely, may, uh, you know, was involved because I've never seen them do nerfs that felt so proper before. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've never seen this. Uh, yeah, also, so, also not, yeah. Im not impacting the progress of the... Yeah, the nerfs were like insane. The team, this like... Uh, it was just on point. The nerfs were just really good. I don't know. Just... Yeah, I, I feel like... So we haven't seen... The only two times we've seen nerfs and boss tuning this expansion was uh, Vault, which was, I mean, historically dog shit, right? I, they, they like the... I think they just had a Menti B over the, over the talent trees and just didn't really know how to balance it yet. That was very obvious. But we didn't get to see an Abaris how they felt about tuning talent trees and bugs and nerfs and stuff because we were so over geared from the upgrade system that we just fucking shit on all the bosses right so there was no reason for them to change anything so this raid was like the first time since vault that we've really seen how good they are at identifying how much damage we're gonna do and and like how to nerf things and i feel like they almost could not have possibly nerfed this raid better than they nerfed i think all of the nerfs made sense except for maybe the firac health nerf didn't need to happen like the boss is absolutely killable with four percent more HP, but yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but but like, 
I think it is, I mean, like, was the boss bad because it had 4% less? No, right? Like, it would have just involved us optimizing for another day or something. But, yeah, I, I don't know. The I think they did a really good job with that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, what 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 do, what do you think, though, in general, in terms of the tuning, like, the difficulty? Um, I mean, obviously, like you said, there's other, complete other ways, like, that we could have good progressions for us. But... Uh, did you feel like this was like uh, out of the last like let's just take Sutherlands and Dragonflight I felt like this was mm. probably the most appropriate tuning throughout um, including the nerfs and everything like I never felt like man this is stupid right? no no absolutely uh, not no like we, we never once this raid were like we're doing something bullshit that needs to be nerfed or is too broken except for the bug on Smolderon, which I told you about, which was like, you know, every yeah. now and then that just happens. And then, again, the lag thing on Tindril, I do not even... I still don't know how to explain that. I've never seen a boss lag out before due to, like, instance... Uh, it's super weird, but... Um, you know, they... I want to say the tuning of this raid is what they should aim for. I would hope for, like, a little bit more interesting Smolderon. Because, like, I think people are like, oh, well, you didn't want the race to last too long. Bro, if they made Smolderon have to live with everyone alive instead of two people dead, it would have just died five pulls later instead of... You know what I mean? Like, it's not like that would have taken yeah. forever. Uh, like, I think Smolderon just could have been a little tighter. But, like, I don't know. What they did this raid was they looked at both of our guilds directly in the face. And they said, try to fucking kill this shit for the last two bosses. And they know that that isn't going to affect everyone else in the raiding community, and they can just do that. And then they can just see what happens. I think that's okay. It, but, I mean, there's obviously a quality difference. Like, they could do that with two bad bosses, and then the race feels like shit, kind of. I don't know. But, like, you know, as long as they make good quality, I think what they did with tuning was good. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is it is insane they did not nerf seeds this reset. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, I... I... I mean, I was more surprised that uh, are you talking about the fit, like the upcoming he, reset or this no, no, reset? the one that already happened. Oh yeah, I mean, I I was I, I think that was okay, but I'm most like they're nerfing classes next reset, right? And like buffing some useless classes. Surely, and, surely there's class balance or there's raid balance coming too. They just yeah, haven't I, finalized I, I'm, it yet. I, I'm telling you, like if they don't, like they nerf the OP classes, they buff useless classes that are not even in the raid, and they're not nerfing the bosses. Holy moly, yeah. That's some crazy stuff next week. There, there will be uh, boss nerfs on Monday. There, there has to be. Like, I mean, there has to be. I, I think even if there wasn't class nerfs, I still think there would have to be boss nerfs on Monday. <laughs> so, the, I mean, it's just yeah. way too hard. Um, right? <laughs> make, make, make the blazes not uh, turn the spirits instantly, man. Just let make them lose some HP. Yeah, start with Holy more shit. HP on them. I mean, the, the modifier is 300%, right? Everything in that phase does 300% more damage to those adds than it does to you. You can just lower that mm. modifier and it would be fine. Yeah. yeah. God, that's a tilting wipe. Oh. Holy fuck. Talk about tilting yes. fire act wipe, bro. Oh the fucking an ad getting blazed 300 pulls in oh. is a that is a take a break angle like that. I I, <laughs> I think we we yes. we had like three pulls in a row and I just put the 10 minute break. I was like, guys, we actually this. made the recoil <laughs> so that people at least know, yeah, cuz like when when it happened and you didn't even know about it and then suddenly everyone is dying and you're like Oh, what the hell? Look at that. There's in the corner. There's an ad. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, because you, you can fix one ad, but you can't fix an entire yeah. set. You can fix one ad, but you lose a metric fuck ton of boss damage. But, I mean, it's Bro, who cares? You, fi you yeah. fix one ad, and I hear, guys, I need to grip here, rescue here, like run here, joke here. I'm like, guys, that was not... That's the biggest pain ever. It's insane. Dratnos, any thoughts? Yeah. No thoughts for me, no. That's, oh, thank uh, God. Actually, he, he just dropped that. I mean, that's good. Head empty. Head empty. I, I, I think oh, Frank okay. might uh, get the, the, the Monka stab emotes out. Oh, this is, keep going. this is short. This is The, the last time yeah, we did this in Sanctum was six and a half hours, by the way. So oh this, this is... Uh, and then that's also after we talked on the phone, like before that point, too. So yeah, that this this is a uh, oh, this is fine. I mean, I'm surprised that this is it's quite short. I remember when I was talking with Max Solo, we also had like a three and a half hours, so almost four as well. So I'm. Oh yeah, uh, this is quite little for this many people, I guess. I, I, is there any heated uh, question maybe from chat that we maybe forgot? Uh, maybe uh, give them a chance. 
Oh, yeah, we can take a, a question. Take a good yeah, chat question. <laughs> they're all they're all dead. Secret mythic. I already talked about that. Frank sent me uh, 30 minutes ago. He sent ask right now if Head Start is an actual advantage and extend this episode by four hours. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's just hey. fucking let's just get into it. Okay, <laughs> let's, no, let's I will repeat. say this. I will say this, Max. Your fucking tweet was a fucking banger. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, oh, I, dude, I showed the yeah. tweet to everyone, Max, and that tweet, I better took off hot. Yeah, that was an insane tweet. So okay, oh so I usually don't tweet during the race, but there was a that day was pretty rough for me. So I don't know what was going on, but in our facility, I DC'd for my stream and and team speak and everything mid pull eight times in like three hours. So I was, and I don't know if you guys are like this or anyone in chat is like this. I'm a pretty patient person. I think I have a decently strong mental. If I ever lag or DC in game, I'm, I am an absolute demon for the rest of the day. And that's if I DC once I, I, I mentally cannot recover from, <laughs> from, from lagging out or DCing. I'm an absolute turbo bitch when I DC. So that happened to me eight times. I was as bad as you. You could actually watch me do this on stream. I am kicking back with my legs up on a couch, lagged out on stream, and I'm I open up my Twitter, I see a <laughs> bunch of viewers saying that like EU is getting fucked by this nerf timing, which I think all of us can agree is absolutely fucking insane. And then and you even messaged me at the time, Mira, as you're like, yeah, I mean like Yeah, yeah like I, I, oh my god. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so like so I see this and I'm just like, look here, you little fucking idiots. And then and then I like said that shit. I forget exactly what I said in my tweet, but I basically no, sorry. Yeah, okay. I, I was actually... not talking about that tweet, by the way. But yeah. Wait, which tweet no, are you talking there's... about? No, no, uh, there's two we're talking about tweets. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the, the global release, yeah. Oh, and the fucking win say... on time thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. No, no, win, yeah. not win on time, win on date. Even yeah, I win on date. Yeah, yeah. We killed it on the previous date. I feel like everyone's been complaining about global release for a long time, but in reality, you guys get like New Year's first, you get Christmas first, and the other <laughs> side of the topic isn't being discussed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but no, that no, but day, one for... that, yeah, that one day was so, I was so down bad, man. And then I just started tweeting. And then what I didn't know because I have all of Echo muted during races on Twitter. I'd never want to see anything you guys say. It could only tilt me. It could not make me happy, so it's bad. So you guys are all muted. Uh, but apparently, Jinji had tweeted kind of indicating that the nerf timing was bad for you guys, but I didn't know that. So I like looked at my Twitter later, and there was like very negative, nasty responses to me, and I'm like, this is so strange. Like I'm just like responding to a bunch of chatters and I feel like what I said was definitely right. And then I didn't know this, but I like it people thought I was like subtweeting Jinji. Like people thought I was like Jinji tweeted, so I immediately was like wrong. And then and then it came off as like super fucking aggressive. So that uh that was yeah, bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Twitter no, was I a mean, mistake. I I did not Yeah, hello? You did not. Oh yeah. Go ahead. I do not, yeah. You did I, not. Guys. I do not. Well, maybe he's gone. He's, yeah, he's. <laughs> oh, he's, he's just, just gone. He's out. Yeah. I guess right. he's out. Um, yeah. I did see a good question from chat as well. If we just wanna wanna leave Roger. Hello. Oh, I think I'm back. Oh, okay, Hello. Okay, back. Uh, okay, what did now. you not? No, no, I, I, I do not think this was about the Tindal nerf, right? Yeah, Even? yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I do not think, uh, like. The way they did that nerf, I mean, it did not matter at all. Like it was. Uh, uh, yeah. Like so then, said, what the fuck happened? The nerfs. How do I what? open up my? I opened up my Twitch, and a bunch of EU fans are just fucking mad as shit. They're just like, "Oh, here we go again, fucking NA nerf timing." And and then I'm just like, "All right, you guys want to talk about fucking nerf timing, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, let's fucking let's we can get we can talk about nerf timing." Yeah, I don't Girl, know. I, yeah. I, I don't nah. even know how that happened, yeah, because ev everyone that looked at it for longer than five minutes was like, I mean, guys, yeah, we didn't even reach any of those things that were nerfed, so it's probably pretty good that they're nerfed, yeah. Yeah, and uh, also, I mean, on, people on, were saying we asked surface. for the boss to get nerfed. That that was another thing. Oh, Liquid asking for boss, that never happened at all. <laughs> Just making shit up. Yeah. 
I think on the surface it just looks bad because it's like literally when we are going to bed, but that's when you guys are waking up. And same goes for the Blizzard people. I don't know what the solution would be in general. I do think one thing that they could do um, in terms of nerfs is to just give, um, like just standardize that there is like, unless it's a bug that they're fixing, right? Like the small drone thing you said. Uh, that should be hot fixed immediately, of course. But if it is just a nerf on the boss, maybe just give like a couple of hours of head start uh, of uh, uh, like, hey, we're That's gonna nerf this thing. in three hours, you know, so that uh, uh, people can plan around this, you know. I guess uh, I don't know. I mean, like that would be fine. It's just that every time something was nerfed, we were on the boss for longer whether you're going to bed or not we were just on the boss for longer at that point and the nerf wasn't even on something we were currently progressing so i just i didn't understand yeah, yeah. any argument i mean you guys know that too it's just more the people fans fans get riled up in the race that's all you're real yeah. real excited that, that is true all right i picked out a question from chat that also was one that i'd kind of written down earlier as well but i think it'd be interesting to talk about which is how is it now that we're like having this talk where like last race and the race before tensions were obviously a lot like higher between hmm. you guys, right? There was kind of not as much. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Communications and stuff. What what was the process where we got to a uh, better, like more open, friendlier uh, relationship between the guilds and you guys? I oh. think uh, two two main factors. I think one was definitely BlizzCon, like uh, meeting up in person, uh, played a, a big role. And secondly, I think the fact that uh, how this race ended, like uh, Max uh, said as well, like if, uh, you know, let's say in a world where the bosses were easier or whatever, and then you had a kill right after a reset or something like that, I think it would have uh, also not been great. Um, but uh, it, uh, let's say it helped a bit, uh, the, the situation, how how the race overall went, so a bit on the tuning and um, yeah, just overall, I think it was, uh, it would have been hard, I guess, to have it gone as uh, badly as it did last time. Uh, but regardless, I think those are the two main factors, I don't know. Um, so I think there's two things. So number one, BlizzCon. And then I'll show this on stream. I'm not going to share my stream in Discord, but like this GIF um, with the two dogs barking at each other through a fence. But then when the fence is lifted, they they <laughs> they, yeah, no, they, they stop like they're like barking crazy. Right. And then the, the gate's gone. And they're like, oh, what's up? That was basically us at BlizzCon. Like like that's us for years leading up to BlizzCon. But because of the pandemic, you have no way to actually talk and see people. You only hear the worst possible thing from a clip that what they say. You don't watch the good things they say. All you hear is what their fans say in your stream chat every day, which is obnoxious. And then you end up just having this warped opinion or position that you see them in. And if you don't talk normally, especially IRL, it's kind of hard to get past that. Not to mention, there were multiple raids in a row where the ending was not awesome for a lot of different yeah. reasons. And that really affects yeah. it. Like, like, for example... Would our guild's relationship been where it was if the last three, four raids all ended like this one? There's no fucking shot. Because, like, it yeah. ends and, like, you realize, like, literally anything could have happened. And you see that, like, both guilds played insane. And, like, you're doing four years of this, like, neck and neck guild thing. And that that there's respect there. And there's no weird ending. And I think that matters. Um, I also think that... And there's a reason why I did this today. Um, I think having these talks after races really help because it shows the community that it's not all smoke. And it's also interesting, but it's really, really fucking hard for the person who loses to do this talk this close to the race. And this time, and we talked about this at BlizzCon, and I would be pretty much, I would be a pretty huge hypocrite if we won this race and then, you know, expected you guys to show up and do something like this like we talked about and then you not want to do it and then like i i can't be that person right so like i have to kind of suck it up and do this like i fucking hate losing i hate that we lost this race right i there's so many things that go in my mind about how we could have won but i think it's important to do stuff like this 
uh, to maintain that. Uh, and I don't know. I, I, I just think, you know, we've done this for long enough and there's such a deep level of respect for what both of the guilds are able to do. Um, that you, no one else can really relate to this besides our two teams. That was very evident at BlizzCon and the time we spent there and that our facility, our facility and then dinner that night to where you understand that. And, you know, we're all going to look back at this 10, 15 years from now, and this is going to be the coolest thing any of us ever did. Had people pay us for some reason to get together with our friends and kill raid bosses. And this would all be a lot less interesting to you all. And also for us, if the other person didn't exist, the other team didn't exist. Like, this would just be boring as fuck. It would be an absolute stomp in the race. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We respect them. And, uh, yeah, the, the reason why it's better now is because we had an opportunity to see each other in real life for the first time in four years. I think that's probably the biggest factor. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. From, for sure. And, and yeah, I, I do think also what you said, I think in the end, when this race ended, like, even, like, the day we... We killed the boss like i remember i was thinking man no matter what happens like this has been an awesome race and i think that kind of like re respect like you said to the to the other team of like goddamn these are some really tough fucking bosses and we're just battling it out and it's literally a, at, at, at the end it was almost like a, a let's say a, a coin cost who would have won it was like a I don't know. I, I think that trumps a lot of any uh, random yeah. crap uh, that happens during the race, and you're just like, man, it was a good, it was a good race. And you kind of, uh, I mean, obviously, I fully sympathize in regards of like so much effort, and then uh, losing sucks uh, massively. But knowing that you know uh, both teams did the best, and uh, it was uh, a great race. I don't know. To me. Of course, I like we said, we we're losing years of our lives during that day because uh, both teams want to win oh, so yeah. crazily. I'll never, I'll but, never forget uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was uh, uh, that's the main feeling you have, I think, afterwards, right? Like, you, man, what a crazy race. You're not thinking of like how who, who gives yeah. a crap about some random nerf it's shit that chat is fighting about. Like, no one cares about that. As far as the future, though, like, so doing things like this are interesting and good, and they help maintain everything. I will say, though, I struggle to believe that this call happens, even if we're in the same spot we're at right now. If Razageth just happened, if we killed Firak on Wednesday after the reset, I don't think this is happening. I, I mean, like, you can try, but I think that the ending of the race, I think, is really important because there's just... Yeah. Like, like, the whole global release thing sucks. None of us want this, right? But, like, we're always naturally going to have slightly different ideas of how that affects everyone. And when anything like that comes down to a race, which uh, we still luckily have never had the reset kill, that would be fucking crazy. Like, like imagine... I mean, here's a good one. Imagine Tindril's the last boss of this raid. Ha Tindril mm. is certainly oh, no. hard enough yeah. to be an end boss, right? Um, yeah. And you know you could say like this race just imagine fire act doesn't exist or let's imagine fire act is tendril and tendril doesn't exist and then you just kill the boss at the end of our tuesday reset day that is i'm pretty sure the literal worst case scenario for the global release thing so you know like we've, we've kind of been able to dodge the the insanely bad uh way that this could turn out but yeah i mean there's there's scenarios like this in the future where it could be bad you just got to hope that they uh i mean if they make races like i mean they can learn a lot from this race right like yeah, I don't know if you if you make two really 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 fucking hard end bosses and they clearly know how to do that, then it's pretty much never going to be bullshit. So yeah, they just need to get get the public uh, seven bosses and us two, and then everyone is happy. And they need to do that esports cook. I'm telling you, that would be fucking awesome. That shit would that, would be, that shit would get oh, yeah. hundreds of thousands I mean, of viewers be. on Twitch. It would be over the weekend, so people would like look forward to it. You'd see. You'd see us figuring there'd be no testing. You'd see us figure out the bosses in real time. No dungeon journal. Your fucking favorite friends guild can actually compete and try on their own, which people like as much as I don't know how many people would want to pull tendril when we're pulling it. But if you wanted to do a boss like that and see how you would actually fare, it would probably increase your respect for what we're able to do, but also have fun on your own. You'd maybe 
hopefully in a perfect world you'd see a guild that has less resources realistically compete that would be fucking awesome right like there's just so many i they need to do this man i mean it would be really amazing i don't know other people chipping in you can also i don't know seeing other guilds do this without having to compete and do 50 billion splits I'm, not... I'm, re I'm ready for uh, them to start cooking a little bit the raiding scene, yeah? They've, they've yes, not yes. changed anything for way too long. It's time to cook, Blizzard. Like, come on. We're down to <laughs> skip a Fated tier and get this instead of Fated. Oh, yeah, Fated. Oh, yeah. fated. <laughs> I mean, maybe we cook with the deepest set of, like, pans and shit, and we try to make Fated interesting. I have no fucking Ooh. clue how we can do that, but... Uh, or you know what? Here's what I want them to do with Faded. Don't... Okay, there's one bit of optim... Uh, where I am optimistic about Faded. And that is, at the end of Shadowlands, Faded was created by three people. Everyone else is working on Dragonflight. This time, it's replacing a full season. It was not doing that in Shadowlands. I don't know if this is true, but if they have a lot more people working on it, maybe Faded could be a lot better than it was last time. And like just a brief idea of that, for example would be like, okay, don't bring back and rotate between the three raids. Maybe bring back, like, Throne of Thunder or Siege of Orgrimmar yeah. or something and not uh -huh. some bullshit time-walking shit, like literal mythic difficulty uh, of... And maybe maybe a little bit of revamps on some of the old stuff for bosses like that. And I, I at least for me, I would love progressing an old great raid, even as early as, like, Nighthold, uh where that is how you do the end of the expansion. I think people would like that a lot more than Faded because Faded has, like, so many problems. Like, for us in Faded, it's like you have to farm all these raids. Do you know what it is from normal, like, raid guilds? They go in, they have no gear, and they get pretty good and halfway through the Mythic raid, maybe. Oh, yeah, we did this Castle Nathria two years ago. Okay, so we're just going to log in next week and continue our progression, right? Wrong. New raid. Mm. You have, like, oh, fucking three weeks until you get back to the raid you were just progressing. It's ridiculous, so... Like I know. Uh, this whole, I, this whole faded was so bad. By the way, I remember them announcing, "Yo, we will unlock all three raids at the same time," and I was like, "Cool, they will do it probably after like one or two rotations, nope. right? Three months or and something." And then they took like three months, three and a half months. I was like, "I'm in pain." I, I was crazy. Yeah, I don't know. They've definitely got to cook on that. So that's that's the one thing I'm holding out hope for is they can obviously do something a lot more cool with faded now that they've done it before. But I I still think faded existing as a base concept is great because it allows them to experiment and do things for example our current upgrade system which i think is good especially this patch i think it's better this patch than last patch um that is almost entirely based on the experimentation of the upgrade system in faded last expansion right uh i i, I and i think just for that factor alone anytime they get a even if it's like a it's not replacing a full season but like you can get a few months to kind of experiment a little bit i think it's clearly shown that it has a positive outcome on the game so i i hope they do that but i am uh oh for sure not happy that there's not a raid that is i i tweeted i tweeted that and i got the wrong response and it's because i used the word race instead of raid like people it, it caught the like uh it caught the uh, like the no esports Blizzard doesn't oh, the make no the game. No esports uh, faction. On yeah, Blizzard yeah, games? yeah. The uh, like, yeah, the yeah. like Blizzard mm. doesn't make Blizzard only makes the game for the one percent. So like, you just want another race because that's your job, you fucking idiot. And like, I'm just like, okay, replace the word race with raid, and I think it all still applies, right? Like, we should definitely get another raid this expansion. Yeah, yeah I man. also do want to say, like, you could argue that this raid, like the last two bosses, were designed for us. Yet it was the most watched uh, thing, like race ever. So, I mean, clearly, at least the people that are uh, watching found this to be uh, one of the coolest things. So, I don't know. Like the ar that argument, in general, I am always a bit, uh, let's say, flinching when I hear it. Because uh, well, it's also just wrong. Like th there has been a time like, where this game was made for us, and it was Sepulcher, and I think they learned a bit from that. But like yeah. that, like that has just simply not happened since. And you have a very good point. I've heard this sentiment from viewers. The reason why Firak and Tindril were so well watched is be isn't because 
of the whole notion of like, oh, they need to make this game for everyone. What I've heard from a lot of viewers is the reason it was interesting to watch is because the viewer knows they definitely can't do that. They're watching people do things that would otherwise seem impossible. And that adds like a layer of cool to what you're doing. Uh, and so it's like those two thoughts are directly opposing each other. Uh, yeah, I so. mean, it's like watching football, like... yeah? Like, you can play <laughs> football yourselves, but you're not going to be Cristiano Ronaldo or t Tom Brady for you Americans, yeah? Like, oh, no, it, I... it's... Okay, Roger, you're wrong there, far. yeah. I went too I, far. I, I could. Yeah, yeah I he could, could. He yeah. could. He's, yeah. I, I just don't, <laughs> don't want to do it, right? I just, yeah. But I could, right? <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think this yeah. was good. We fucking we will go on for multiple more hours if we don't stop. I think we got through oh, it all. No. Yeah, the Dreadnoughts also left us. He's yeah, like, yes, yeah, I gotta run. Shit yeah. Out. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're losing people fast in this. Yeah, call. they're yeah. fucking, they're yeah. dipping. Turns out not sleep good. is not a uh, is not an illusion. An illusion, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's easy. We we can do this <laughs> talk again when they cook the esport things during Fated, and we're like. Had another small boss race. I, I'm down. Yep, I'm down. Yep. All right. Thanks for mm -hmm. thanks for the call, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Have a beautiful uh, rest of the day. Yep. You guys have a beautiful rest of your night. <laughs> you guys yeah. are gonna yeah. go to bed instantly. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Yep. See yeah. you guys. See ya. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.